tell me you were wrong Swear my mind Erased you the moment we were done All out of me, you're all out of me I'm finally free, it's all good I'll be fine And you keep on breaking hearts with one, two, three I don't
Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chill Sunday edition of Polaris. The stakes were so high yesterday that we had to take it down a notch today. Maybe, you know, there's not a lot of implications on the games that will happen today, but they should be bangers because we've got first and second playing each other, seventh and eighth playing each other. So we've got some banger matchups for you at the very least, even if you've already watched all of the action for the season. And today I am joined by the one and only MP. It's like we summoned you out of nowhere after only Finns got pushed to playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much like Up in August 3 won yesterday, only Finns won yesterday, the Finnish yeah. triumph, and now we have to have me on the desk, obviously. It's amazing to be here. I was watching Tubbo, watching uh, only Finns mm. on, uh, yesterday, and I'm quite excited to say that I'm happy that Tubbo chose the side of only Finns there, and <laughs> he chose the right, right side, obviously. Yeah, we've got we were the, the 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 people watch partying definitely have good taste so far in in the teams that they're supporting. So uh, hopefully that continues through the playoffs, and hopefully we get some uh, new. Te well, actually, I'm not going to say hopefully we get new teams to support. Let's 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 pump the brakes a little bit, but we get some more excitement next series as well because we can start looking towards that. Obviously, two teams now locked in as uh, the uh, as well joining us next time. Four teams moving on to the playoffs. Two teams already locked in as being relegated to Eclipse, but we'll see them play in that in May. So, lots to look forward to, but today we've got to finish off the season with two exciting games as well, and let me introduce you to our casters for those two games while we are going here. Ryan and Pavlos, are you there? 
I am. And I think he is here as well. Right? Yeah. I'm just <laughs> 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 so. <laughs> Yeah. Great. How are you guys doing? Good. <laughs> Great. Like, it's, it's gone back into like COVID casting online where yeah, we're so scared of talking over each other that we're just like, you talk, literally like back in the day, you'd have a Discord chat where you'd put like a one or a, like a dot to say that you wanted to talk after somebody had made a point because of how awkward it is to do online. But yeah, knowing today, like yesterday, there was so much like permutations to work off. Who was getting relegated? Who was making top four? Now that's all been sorted. With dominant series that we maybe weren't expecting the winners to come out that way, it feels like today you're playing for like bragging rights, maybe a bit of seeding for Eclipse potentially for the bottom two teams or the top two teams here. It's probably going to be a bit more of a, a, a longer day with the battle here. But we really expected like NXT to continue that run of form with how they've been doing through the end of this regular season. But yesterday, they kind of got destroyed by a Pino Orchestra that was played to survive at this point. Yeah, it was a great day for the Finns yesterday, right? Uh, both the Pina Orchestra and only Finns winning off their matches. And uh, yeah, I, I know that you mentioned it earlier today, Twiggy, about there was a lot involved in yesterday's matches and there weren't many chances that only Finns could have gotten um, uh, into playoffs with. Um, but literally everything went right for them. And one of the prerequisites for that to happen was uh, a Pina Orchestra winning their match, NXT throwing theirs. Um, and uh, that's exactly what happened in this one. Yeah, I yeah. mean, just about the the most exciting thing possible could have happened at any point. Apino Orchestra gets 2-0 so that they have a chance first off to get into playoffs. NXT obviously have a chance to get knocked out. And then the most exciting thing happened in the second game as well. It was just a roller coaster. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was really close match on the second game. Apino Orchestra obviously dominating for their first game. I was so happy to see that. But only Finns, they couldn't... couldn't quite dominate the way that up in orchestra did obviously sweden saw were a really solid team there's a lot of solid players around there split good map uh sunset really good map as well but overall i'm really happy uh of the performance that happened yesterday obviously here up in orchestra 13 and 4 on split 13 5 on sunset both maps were the same maps that were, were played on the second match as well and uh, it's gotta be honest, I'm really happy to see the Finns succeed even though Apinor Orchestra is not in playoffs. Yeah, things are looking really good in terms of stakes for what we're what we're looking at for the playoffs as well. And before I, uh, well, before we just watch the rest of this one, I just want to ask you guys about today, uh, now that we've kind of toned it down a little bit, obviously, you know, we, we, we've had all of the excitement go past, we've still got a little bit to go, we've got some good games. Uh, but things are going to start to kind of, you know, we've got to we've got to look towards the playoffs in terms of our first game today, and then we've got to look towards two of the teams that are going to be yeah. playing in Eclipse afterwards. So we've definitely got some good stuff to go first and second, seventh and eighth. Who do you guys think are going to be taking these games? Obviously, these are technically two of the closest games that we're going to see uh, mm. now that we have all of the data for the whole season. Can I take you, this? Pavos. What are you looking? For? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just going to go out there and say today is a day where Apex will have their first loss and Hukas will have their first win. So today is a day where Metasport are beating Apex and Formulation are losing to Hukas. It'd be really nice for Metasport. Like, if they can win, they get second seed, which means that they don't at least have to deal with Apex in the first round of playoff games, no matter what. I think it becomes a little bit more tricky. Teams get tied up on, like, four wins, three losses. I think if Metasport lose, for Formulation and Hukas, it feels like it's a bigger tournament for them coming up with Eclipse, right? And I think we spoke about it a bit yesterday of just winning the series is fine. You just don't want to play a map, either your pick or the opponent's, where you just get absolutely dragged on it. You want to feel that the full like map pool that you're willing to play, that you can look competitive against Apex. You're not going to go somewhere like Ascent against Apex and lose 13-3. Because other teams in playoffs will go, Metaspot looked kind of crap on Ascent. Let's take them there. Like They don't want to show any bad maps. It'll be the same for the bottom two teams going into Eclipse. They don't want to show any weak links if they have them. Yeah, for me, these games are the pace setters pretty much for playoffs and Eclipse. If Metasport can actually win a map off of Apex or actually win the series, it obviously shows that Apex can bleed. There has been few games, uh, I think of Sweet and Sour and OnlyFans, who actually took it really close against Apex, which makes sense that Metasport could have a chance today against Apex. Also, Formulation Gaming and Who Cars. Who Cars, they, they're yet to have their first win, so it would be really important for Eclipse 
for them to be formulation gaming today obviously it's months away or month away in may but still it, it sets the space uh, pace in terms of can you win actually against this team can you actually win in polaris which is really important for eclipse in my opinion We'll find out very shortly. Our first game will be Metasport versus Apex, which we will see you two for Pavlos and Ryan. I'll say goodbye to you for now. This time you don't have to pass over a whiteboard to me, so we don't have to do a whole bit as you I, leave. I could if you that. want to. You, I mean, you, you <laughs> could. It's already in my background. Uh, like, it's not on camera okay. right now because it's cut off there. But, uh, I, I'm not sure. There, there it is. This is. Oh, I, there I mean, is. this is just my conspiracy theory that we have going on here. We'll touch on that later. Don't worry about it. You guys, you guys go get set up. I'll say, uh, I'll say, I'll wave goodbye to you for now. Thank you very much, Bye. guys, for talking Bye. to us. <laughs> oh man, oh. but yes, uh, exciting stuff to come. And obviously, yeah, I think the big thing is we were talking to Apex, oh, sorry, we were talking to OnlyFins in the interview yesterday, and they were like, we know we're coming up against Apex first in the playoffs. We know this is the next challenge that we need to face. We're going to beat them. You know, they, they'd already had a, a decent map against them, right? We've seen a couple of oh, yeah. teams get towards overtime with Apex. So it's not like they're infallible. It, it's, you know, maybe they are still completely unbeaten in terms of map win rate. But, but teams have at least been knocking on the door. They've got their foot in. They need to try and get something a little more out of it. But right now, let's focus on how Metasport are going to play against this team because this is the big match. We saw Sweet and Sour play against them last week. They were, at the time, the closest team to Apex in terms of the leaderboards. And they put up a good performance, but it wasn't quite enough. Do you think Metasport can do something similar? Yeah, I mean, only Finns, the fourth seed. Sweet and Sour, currently third seed. They were able to take it two rounds. Metasport, right now, they are second. So I think they can absolutely take a map against Apex. Can they go all the way and actually take the series? That is a tough question to answer and I think we're gonna see that on the server but Apex I think they said on the interview they had some mistakes here and there they were obviously not the oh, not on the best for uh, best form against Sweden and Sour hmm. but I do believe that it's all up to Metisport it's not up to Apex being on on the uh, shake your side it has to be Metisport actually popping off going full on and we have few players later on that we want to highlight here but I think it's gonna be insanely uh, important that heartbeat is really strong. Uh, we've heard a few interviews from him as well, talking about how they can, yeah, they can flex a little bit here and there. They are, well, they said they're qualified right now, so they might not show some new stuff, which is important for me because that might mean that they are more free in their gameplay. It's going to be interesting to see what happens, uh, obviously, in this matchup. Is it gonna be more free play? Are you gonna go with just a bit of random composition for both of these time, uh, teams? But I think Metisport, they have to be absolutely on top of, top of their game. Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, just as I said, OnlyFins know they're gonna be playing against Apex. No matter what happens here, whether Metisport stay in second or they drop down to uh, third position after the loss today, after a loss today, sorry, um, they are still gonna be playing against Sweet and Sour, no matter what. And they have previously lost to Sweet and Sour. They kind of got, you know, blindsided by them at the start of the season so there's still that hurdle that they do need to get past they can definitely i think both teams are capable of winning that game absolutely but you know uh, there's just that mental block obviously to get over to start things off with they've been behind sweet and sour the whole season they've got to do it again uh, as soon as we're finished with this game basically yeah absolutely and i think it's gonna be such an interesting to see especially the map veto which we're gonna go on to later uh, to see what there's gonna be happening but apex i mean we have to talk about this beast <laughs> of a team once again obviously insanely talented players god Jack is one of those Solcas. for me i think it's gonna be insanely uh important to see what Solcas can bring here because mm. he has brought his a game completely all the time he's a, he's a guy who has seen it all pretty much and i actually checked spike.gg this is gonna be his 350th official in terms wow. of that record so there's quite a lot of officials under his belt yeah, that's, that's, that's the real thing that we talk about when we start to talk about Apex, is just the wealth of confidence, the wealth of playtime that these guys have at the highest level. You know, the, that, yeah. that is the difference that they have over every other team, 
apart from just being mechanically gifted, obviously, and there's a reason for that, having played so much, they just have so much time in the server against every kind of grade of team, and that does mean that you're more likely to be winning these games. They just have encountered every situation so many times, uh, and even the less kind of the less experienced members of the team still have that backup from their teammates. They've got such a nice kind of balance going on, I think, and that is what makes Apex so scary to come up against. They're always playing well. It doesn't matter if they're having a bad day or a good day. Generally, they're still just going to be sweeping the floor with you. Yeah, and that's the thing that you have to highlight in terms of being actually at the top level of Valorant. You mm. cannot really have good days and bad days. You have to have that consistent performance throughout your team. You cannot be popping off. Obviously, you have to be popping off, but you cannot be popping off then going down on a, another mm. game like 2 and 13 or something like that. They put up consistent numbers and something that Danny actually said on, on the interview that they're really flexible. That is one of the best things that you can have on a team. They can put Kajak on, on Gecko. He can play Operator on Gecko yeah. as well. And he just pops off. It doesn't matter the agent. Obviously, it might be the thing that Apex is the best team in this league. Maybe not even quotation marks. They are the best team in terms of statistic as, uh, as well. But it's amazing the flexibility that they can bring here. They can watch Masters. Uh, something that Danny said as well, they're really big fan of, fans of Paper Rex, so they bring those style, uh, styles to this Polaris League, which is really refreshing. Yeah, I think you can see that kind of consistency that they have when we look at overall stats between the two duelists from the teams here. Obviously, Kayak does a, a switch over onto an initiator sometimes, as you said. Uh, Sunset, last time we saw them play, obviously they don't play a duelist on there, so Kayak will switch over onto uh, the Gecko sometimes on that one. But I think you can just see, you know, maintaining a 300 ACS over the course of every single game is an incredible achievement. No matter what team you're playing for, no matter what teams you're playing against, being that consistent over the course of six series, over 12, get, 12 maps of Valorant is, uh, you know, uh, that's another level, right? It, it, like, yeah. you can drop 40 in a game and you'll be a scary player, but if you're dropping a 300 ACS in every game, then you're a terrifying player. Absolutely, and the difference is funny. It's 50 ACS difference yeah. between these two players, but Demiurge is actually the second best duelist mm. in this league with 247 0.5 ACS, actually second best player in terms of ACS in this league, if you don't count Solcast with that race. Uh, it's insane the difference between the first uh, first duels or the best player compared to the second best player. 50 ACS, that is huge yeah. number. 50 per round, it's crazy. And don't get, get me wrong, Demiurge is insane. He plays Jet and Race, but he doesn't quite have that flexibility that Kajak has. Obviously, it means that Demiurge is really good with those two agents. He can absolutely pop off. The Operator is really good. I love how he works that race as well. But that is something that we have to talk about. The flexibility is not quite there, which I, I think at this meta, you kind of need it. You you start bringing more, more of that get-go in the team. You might not have those duelists, like you said. Uh, Apex didn't have on Sunset. They copied that uh, composition from Paper Rex. It's going to be interesting to see whether Demiurge is going to show something new today. I, I, it's probably not likely, even though this game doesn't matter in the end that much. Yeah. But I, I would love to see some flexibility from him as well. And speaking of flexibility, I uh, think another reason why this game should be quite interesting, let's take a look at uh, the both teams' map bans here. Generally, both of these teams actually ban the same maps straight away. Uh, Split is usually the first one banned for both teams, no matter who they're playing against. If they get first ban, they'll take Split. If Split's already banned away, they'll ban Ascent or, well, I mean, for Metasport, it's changed a few times. Sunset was the last one that they banned other than uh, Split here, but they have the, a very similar map pool is basically what I'm trying to get at here, which means that we're going to see well-practiced strats from both teams on every map that we see today, whether that's two or three, it should be really interesting to, to see that. We'll take a look at their actual uh, map pools as well, what they have picked, what they've uh, got in terms of win rates. Obviously, Apex has got a 100% win rate on everyone, but they yeah. played Sunset five times, Lotus three times, Icebox three times, Ascent one time, and they really like to stick to these ones, obviously. I mean, look, here's the thing. If you are going to be super well-practiced, you want to stick to your comfortable maps. 
Yeah, absolutely. And looking at that win percentage for Apex in Sunset, I, I think Metispark, they probably don't want to go for Sunset this time around. Mm -hmm. The Icebox might be a good idea to go for. It's not definitely a bad map for Apex, but if that's your best map, you probably want to go with that. I think we might even see Bind. You see that 2-0 right there. They played a new composition with the Deadlock there. Mm -hmm. uh, Deadlock and Omen, it's quite original composition with that. Uh, that idea, usually people have Brimstone maybe alongside with that Deadlock, Sky Race and Viper. But they have Omen, that has been only played I think it was four times mm. throughout uh, this this year. And one of those are Metisport. So it's going to be interesting to see whether they're going to switch up this composition a little bit. Are they actually going to go on Bind or are they going to go stick with the Icebox, which both teams are really good at. It's always interesting to see these map videos because it, it gives the nuance for, for, for this matchup. Yeah, for sure. And I think when you do have the same kind of maps that you don't want to touch, like Split and Ascent for these two teams, I think it opens up the possibility for a lot of counter picking properly. You know, you're not you're not trying yeah. to uh, you know, do something wild and, and, and pick a map that they always ban, because you're both gonna ban the same map. So you've got a you've got you've got about five maps that you can then go, okay. Which one do we want to try and take away? It's split and sunset this time around. As you said, they wouldn't really want to go onto that one, so that's not too surprising. I do reckon, uh, you know, we will still get, uh, ooh. Ooh, we will still Apex. get a scent bind uh, band out later on. Yeah, that's a that's that's an ego pick. I feel like that's very much okay. Yeah, you, you like bind? We'll go bind. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I I thought Metispor is gonna go for bind, but it's gonna be Apex. I I think Metispor is probably fine with this uh, yeah. these first two maps. Icebox is really good for them bind yeah. is the second best best map for them i i think it's in terms of statistic ascent not a surprising ban i think it was gonna come either way from yeah. either one of these teams it has been apex sperma ban at the start of the season breeze banned lotus is gonna be our last map i think that mm. is a really good map for apex it's a quite question mark map for metisport in my opinion uh, they they yeah. can absolutely do well there but I don't know. I think the game against Sweden Sour was rough, but they dominated who cars on week 5, 13, won there. So I think yeah. Metisport, they have a good angle, depending on are they going to switch up compositions again. They have played two games, two different compositions on that map. That could be something surprising for Apex. Apex might go and copy Paper Rex once more, <laughs> might, might go something else there. I think the agents that is going to be really interesting here. Are they gonna go with the same compositions? Are they gonna play with that Viper, that controller style that a lot of teams have adapted? Would they go for the mirror composition? Because I think the latest compositions that both of these teams have played on Lotus are mirror compositions. Mm. So it's gonna be really, really interesting. But obviously we have that bind first, which I, I think yeah. for me is gonna be really interesting because Apex has not shown anything on bind. Yeah, that's my thing, right? This very much feels like a kind of reverse, uh, almost, you know, Apex would want to play these maps the other way around, you know, start on Lotus, go to Ascent, and then finish on Binding Case, because this feels most like, like, the most likely order in which we would go to a 2-1, I feel like, is, is these three maps in this order, because while they have a similar map pool, I do think that some of their maps favor uh, each team slightly. Obviously, we don't know really how Ascent play on Bind, but... Yeah. Oh, Apex play on mine, sorry, but um, yeah, we do know that Metasport have been very good on it. They brought out an interesting comp that worked incredibly well for them, so I'm excited to see that. That will be very, very interesting. As you say, the uh, agent select is going to be really, really important for how this one works out. I want to see if Apex are going to bring out something a little interesting to uh, match Metasport's energy. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I think it's going to be something that we saw in Masters. It's either going to be that Gecko on Gajak, or it's either going to be that Yoru on Gajak. Uh, I'm not quite sure which one is it going to be, but I think it's either one of these compositions. It's going to be the Gecko, Brimstone, Sky, Viper and Raze. Uh, obviously, Solga is probably going to go for the Raze, or it's going to be the Yoru, Raze, Viper, Omen and Sky. Maybe even Brimstone uh, coming in terms of, uh, yeah. in, in, uh, from Omen or yeah replacing omen right there but it's gonna be really interesting to see what the composition is gonna be for the side of metisport we already talked about this a little bit they have played two different compositions here the latest one was the deadlock omen ray sky and viper which is really interesting the deadlock 
for me, I don't think it's the best sentinel right there because it opens up a lot of these lurks. You can just walk through, sneak through those traps, which I think is going to be really strong for Apex. They're really, really good lurkers. They know how to play the map. Mm. And I think Metisport, they, has to, they have to be on their feet. But even back when they didn't play this deadlock comp, they didn't have a sentinel on their roster, which I think is definitely not a good idea when you go against Apex. I, I think you yeah. have to have that cypher, cypher, you have to have that Killjoy maybe. Killjoy not so prominent on, on Bind, so I think Cypher in terms of dodging or trying to dodge that race there or try to cancel out those fast pushes on the side could be insanely good. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, the thing is, when, last time we saw, obviously, last time we saw Metasport on this one, they were playing against a Pino Orchestri, and they did not have a Sentinel uh, when they were playing uh, that that against Metasport, and the amount of flanks that Halfbeat got, and just 3Ks, 2Ks, 4Ks all over the place yeah. to win rounds was insane. And I, I, I would assume if you're going to run a comp like that, and you're going to try and flank all the time you're going to be aware that it's possible that the other team could do it to you so i would hope that they don't fall for it uh, as much as a pino orchestra did to them but yeah i like here's the thing you know when we head into a map one like this which is just filled with unknowns it is completely impossible to be like okay what are apex gonna do here because they banned it out on the first week it was their second ban week one and then they floated it for the rest of it but obviously they've yeah. never got to a map three so we just don't know what to expect yeah, and uh, I think something that Danny, uh, Danny highlighted on one of those interviews as well is Apex really, really likes to, or they create a lot of chaos where yeah. they actually thrive. Obviously, insanely good, highly mechanical players in that team. So when you have that chaos, it, it, it is quite literally controlled chaos, I would say, in terms of Apex. Mm. Yeah, it, it looks like it's a mess, but they are always on top of that. Gotcha getting those first kills. If there needs to be trades coming in, they usually trade it really well. The gaps are really close in terms of those players because they know what to expect. They know they have the experience, especially Solkas. He's played for so, so long. He already knows how, how to be that uh, trader there. He knows how to entry and have that trader close to him, which is really important for Apex. When we come to bind, uh, which is kind of unknown, especially their side of Metisport. I think, how do they control that chaos? It, that is a question mark for me. They they cannot let Apex run over them. And I'm not actually quite sure, but was it Metisport who started defensive side? I, I'm i not quite sure on check. that, but it's going to be interesting. Yeah, they. The, I actually got a word for producer quite quickly <laughs> that they start on defensive side, which I think it's going to be really, really good for Metisport but it might go out of hand if Apex actually starts controlling the game. I think Metisport, yeah. they have to start lurking on those defensive sides. Actually getting good pushes. Batroom, DeLong as well. Find that uh, control of the map. You cannot stay on site if you're playing against Apex, especially if there's Kekko or Yoru. Yeah, no, I'm just taking a look now. Oh, by the way, just a quick update. Uh, apologies for the delay, everyone. We're just having some yeah. trouble getting the uh, players ready. I think there was a crash, so just uh, you know, technical difficulties as we wait for the game here. But looking at things, I don't think there's really a pattern as to why Apex, you know, kind of uh, go longer games, right? Obviously, most of their games have been very short. They've dominated the play. Some of them have gone towards overtime. Uh, the first time that happened, it was, or sorry, when they played Sweet and Sour, they were on attack. When they played Only Fins and it happened, they were on defense So, uh, for the first half. But it does look as if always the first half, they're kind of dominating more like streaks of rounds. And then the second half, they start to slow down. So I wonder if that's kind of something that maybe, maybe if uh, Metasport are moving on to their stronger side second, they can take advantage of that. Yeah, it's even a question if Metasport can actually play that second side too much. <laughs> if Apex takes that control, it might be a quick second side. It might be like a three rounder. But obviously Metasport, I think they are definitely one of the stronger teams. Yeah. And like we talked about a little bit earlier, only thing Sweden Sour, being able to take uh, Apex really close on those maps, only things bringing that OT in Sunset Suite and Sour 13, 11 on Lotus. I think there is a definitely, definitely a cap where Metisport can exploit that uh, vulnerability in Apex's roster. Maybe they have been able to find some some cracks in that in that really well oiled machine. I, I sure 
wouldn't be able to find those i know but they are they are so insanely talented so smart mm. on that side so i think metisport could be able to handle this this bind yeah. i mean in terms of going to icebox i think that's something we want to look at as well yeah metisport has had quite a good success there obviously winning most of the polaris games only team that they have lost in icebox was only fins and they won against nxt formulation gaming who cars and up in orchestra few of those were really close matches that kind of happen here against Apex or mm. those those mistakes that cause those matches to be be really close cannot happen. I think the match is, is gonna be really close if Metisport were to win, but I'm not quite sure. But I think we have the agent select here. We Indeed. see the gecko. Let's go. Yeah, we've still got that gecko going on there for Kayak. Uh, wants to lean into that double initiator once again with Mulsi on the sky. And they got double control at two, so no sentinel for them. They're going to have to be very, very careful about Metasport's play with the flanks here. Obviously, I'm sure they're aware of it. They're the kind of team that are going to be doing extensive VOD reviews if they're going to be going into a map where they don't have any experience against a team that does have a 100% win rate on it. So I'm sure they're aware that Halfbeat is going to attempt to go for flanks maybe half beat won't maybe maybe going okay look they, they know what we're gonna do let's you know chill with that for a little bit but yeah i think both teams really just trying to lean into what they are best at here yeah absolutely and i would love to see some uh, maybe trap plays from apex in terms mm. of maybe heartbeat uh someone else going dreamers maybe going for those flanks and uh, apex just being 200 iq they are trapping that flank maybe showing aggression on the other side of the map first and finding those flanks because like you said heartbeat was going for a lot of flanks against abina orchestra he even said that in their interview so i think apex what they want to control is definitely that flank but i think they will absolutely do some pushes as well really aggressive heavy pushes on that defensive side which may not even allow for the flanks well, there's only so much umming and ahhing we can do on the desk. It's not going to influence the game whatsoever, so let's get right into that game and find out how it's going to start. Ryan, Pavlos, take it away. That we will. This first matchup is going to be a total test of strength, a potential playoffs matchup, which I think many questions in our heads right now is how deep into their playbook are they willing to go? And are they going to be showing us any of their spicy pages? That's what we're going to be looking at. But of course, Ryan, I, I want to hear your thoughts as what we need to keep an eye on. We're not being, we, we will be seeing the deadlock from Vong. So that's something that you know, we've all got eyes on for sure. Yeah, you had the highest ACS on this team when they were playing uh, up against the Pino Orchestra. He had some really nice setups, especially on the defense. It was his better side. For Apex, the fact that they've chosen to come here when they haven't shown this map at all before playoffs is surprising to me. But Apex, there's a lot of maps that they haven't shown, but here they're like, yeah, have a look at our comp. We might see you in playoffs. We're not afraid of showing anything. And at the start of the season, many would have thought Metasport to be the best possible contender for Apex, though it had to be the last game of the season for these two teams to have to face up against each other. Apex barely avoid this five-player, the four-player stack up from this right left-hand side as they are eyeing this A site. Actually, they've not got any utility. They haven't got the sonic sensors set up at all on the defense. It's actually the Gravnet and a ghost that they've picked up instead as Vong. And this is something that Apex needs to be careful of, just to keep an eye out of where these sonic sensors can be. So it's going to be a bit of a slow push, but Hype's seen at least one. Might not expect four behind him. Yeah, you can hear the footsteps though, because Metasport are being very loud about this, but look how quickly Avova has adapted. He's gone all the way around, and if nobody's looking in his direction, he could have quite a lot of impact still. Metasport only just enter lamps, Mosey loses his life, Avova looks to push through, but the barrier mesh is going to make it difficult to move in there. It's going to take a lot of time. Metasport make it all work by getting three kills out of nowhere. The leader getting so much done, and the spike being on the other side of the site, Avova cannot have an eye on it. Therefore, Metasport get off first, the first round of this map. What a round for Metasport. Everything just got in according to plan. Four people pushing behind. Apex spots them. So they're like, oh, we need to like flip the spawns. We're going to plant on backside of A. And Metasport just actually put the wall in behind, take Avova away, and are happy to fight for that space. Like It seems that that was the whole plan of just having people full contact walk up and sort of force Apex into a rough plan. Like I said, Apex have not shown this map at all, and whilst they have been incredibly dominant, this might be a little bit of a, a teething period with playing a new comp like this. 
Yeah, that's very fair. Of course. They'll be uh, testing things out here on by, trying to expand their map pool, at least before playoffs, and see how it all fares up against a team like Metasport. But it all seems to be straightforward for the uh, for the Green Vikings. As only two remain for Apex, and they've already chunked down in health. Hype is the only survivor. Bulldog has been found. So some further damage would have been possible, but that paranoia does eliminate any of the luck that Hype could have. Metasport, great start to the game. That's a 2-0 start. One of the first few times as well that we see Metasport put the Sonic sensors on different sides of the map as well. Like all throughout the series on their defense against the Peanut, they would play like three players on A, and then the Viper and another on B, and then the two Sonic sensors there. So it's like they've got more bodies on one side, and then all of the Viper and Deadlock utility on the other. So Metasport, I think the big question is, how much of a playbook can you build here realistically with a, I'll be honest, kind of gimmicky agent with Deadlock? A lot of really good utility in the hands, but let down a little bit by Sonic sensors and how good they are in comparison to tricks. Yeah. That's a big difference. You've got to kind of hope that your opponents are making noise when they're going through them. So you, you've got to put them in, str in strategical places where you're sort of forced to make noise, such as the drop outside of uh, Hookah. Maybe with the crunch and lamps, which is where you can see already those sonic sensors dropping for Vong here. Means that you don't really need to fight and control for hookah all that much. The problem is, like, the setup, so. the default that we're seeing now from Metasport, they used against a peanut. Apex must have expected, like, they picked this map. This should be something that they expect. So what's the, the fact that Metasport were? have cleared out so far in A means that uh, Apex have got... Uh, you know, a difficult time making it into this B site. Metasport have got the call, but they've been late to rotate. Half of it may be in trouble. Stunned up by the Trailblazer. It's actually Apex to come out on top. And uh, Vong, as soon as he entered the fight, he didn't know he entered, loses his life. So it's a very quick start for Apex as soon as they get by on the board. Yeah, just brute force was the answer, really. Disrespect the utility. You've got the better weapons because it is Metasport's bonus. So the fact that the plants go down and you only lose one player, really nice for Apex. Not too much economical damage has been done. They have the Thrash as well. It's just come online. And nothing quite yet ready for Metaspot when it comes to ultimates. So obviously we've been seeing this composition that Apex is running more and more in the, in the realm of VCT. What are they trying to achieve with this? I think for like... Bind especially, like MP mentioned it on the desk, like the amount of Cypher that you see, it's the map that you typically don't need to run a Sentinel on, that you can run double Initiator. So that's what makes Deadlock a really interesting on, pick on this map too, because you're not reliant on having a Killjoy Cypher there instead. For Apex, it's just hmm. information, right? Sky is still one of the best agents to be running on this map, despite the nerfs. And Gecko, the impact of the utility to clear stuff out, to go for safe plants, and even the Frash, which is used now, the way they can clear out some sites like this, Vong needs to be careful. Yeah, it's the first ultimate to be played out this round, okay. this game. And it's uh, given Soulcast access into lamps. Having to respect Damir just presence. As Vong is the first one to find presence into this matchup. A double kill could have been a triple given how low he's made hype. The Soulcast trying to turn things around with his teammate Kayak, who's already dropped to the ground. So he keeps him alone. A one-man army spike is far away, though. And a Metasport number of it. Good turnaround and great play by Vong to put Metasport off the rip on top in this round. Seemed ready to be dealing with the onslaught of utility coming onto A. Really good response as well. I think as the Thrash was coming through through lamps, there was a molly thrown in. Might have even been a snake bite, and it was broken instantly. Like, the ultimate couldn't get, obviously, a detainment, but it couldn't get any information either because it only just got all the way through lamps, which was empty. So Vong was in a really happy position to keep contesting that. Now he has that ultimate annihilation. One of the impressive things from him was just some of the lineups that he had. Being able to catch, like, Apex trying to put the plant down seems to be the way to go. Yeah, it's one of those ultimates where if applied perfectly, you can instantly put your team in a numbers advantage. And, um... Yeah, of course, it's not a consistent source of that, but any chance you get... Yeah. have the uh, superiority in numbers, you'll take it. It's also just delaying the plant. Such a big thing on this map, like Brimstone Mollies, Snake Bites, Mosh now too. 
barrier wall is just going to stop people like if apex want to push through this they either need to wait it out the 35 seconds duration like a sage wall or they need to break so it long. what do you think like sage used to be super meta on this map and it's the same sort of thing well the fact that apex are stacked together they're able to break the barrier mesh fairly Gets quickly the dog as well oh there you go Annihilation thrown out. And it's Not sure if forward. it did catch anybody. Instead, it's Vong that starts shooting from two different directions. It's a tough cookie to crumble, given that there's so many players of Apex onto the side. But it's board time for Heartbeat to come all the way behind. That's a triple kill. And Metasport keep on giving on this defense. You've got a sort of question as well for Metaspot. Like, we're seeing some really cooked up stuff on Deadlock. Like, building on the playbook. That's the main thing for me with this map is just... Is it more than just a gimmick or has it got legs? Mm. Especially up against a team like Apex that, you know, Danito, before he was the head coach of Apex, used to work on like third party stuff like Augment, right? Those whole like, anti strat in software kind of things. So they're very well privy to all of the tools that teams can use to anti strat opponents, see where they are on a heat map, where they throw utility. So really, it's a test of like Apex, like, how do you combat Metasport's comp? Because if Metasport hand you your first ever map loss of the group stages this year with a comp that maybe other teams should recognize a bit more. It certainly would put a lot of attention onto Vong and to Deadlock on this map. Especially when you've got teams like Vitality that have also tried it a little bit in EMEA as well. That's very true. That's very true. And let's be fair, Apex have only been tested a, a big go going to overtime. They haven't even lost a single map, so... That's something that they will have to go through if they want to be able to overcome moments like this. Because they will come across moments yeah. like this. It's, it's a given, right? It's a matter of being contested enough in this region to go in as your strongest self over an ascension. One thing that I think, if the desk is listening, what is the biggest like deficit that Apex have been down on on a map? Because it might be three rounds that we have here. I don't feel like Apex have been like 12-7 down or anything like that. It's always felt like the series that they've had close ones with have always been close. Yeah. Yeah, it could well be a three round effort. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see if the analysts can look into this for later on. But for now, Apex are on the back foot. It's not really expected of them to find much. Maybe get some damage here and there, get a pick or two and uh, create some uh, economical troubles for their opposing side. Get the spike plant for an extra extra all point. Wingman gets that done. Kayak loses his life, so instantly that's two extra old orbs in the bucket. Trailblazer right off the height. Dealt with. That close distance position from Hype could be troubling, though, as the paint of Demiurge puts Solkas to sleep. Shall I stop also, to kill? Nolzy's nearby. Mm, not the best weapon for it, though. And Spollen will collect the three kills by the end. Clean up duty for him. And Metasport, they've just increased that lead with Apex to four rounds. It's the lower buy for Apex, so they're happy to give this one up, especially after a timeout. Now is when we should see what adjustments Donito wants to bring in. And so far, Solkas, one and five. Did want to shout him out and also Voltaic as well. Like him being able to like put a lot more emphasis into aim training. Like going to like aim coaches effectively to improve even at the top level. Sort of shows the kind of player that Soulcast has always been. Like not sitting back at all. He's just been very progressive in how he wants to keep improving. Like seeing him back on a duelist is nice. Not really worked too well here, but Kayak Skeko, at least a positive close to a second thrash. So far in seven rounds. That's true. I mean, you look at other teams like Vitality, putting the less the, the less experienced player on the duelist role, and then the likes of Runner and putting Safe, one of the most experienced duelists, on, uh, on an alternative role. Kind of see the opposite here. Trying to put comfort on uh, the champ of VCT MEA on that raise. You can see Metasport have gone for a little bit of a journey here. They've cleared out this left-hand side, and for that reason, Metasport put three defenders in this B site. They're not going to... Ex like, Apex shouldn't expect half B to be here with how consistently that Sonic Sense has been in that position. The Paranoia, though, might give away his position if he throws it out as early as he's looking. Ooh, that from the shadow is going to give away it. his respawn position. They, surely they could have heard that he spawned right back in the same spot. The smoke comes out and Heartbeat barely gets away. Repositioning with a TP. Demiurge 
Throws down a showstopper. It's a good moment to do so. Shoulcast is dead. Thrash and retaliation from Apex. Not able to find a thing. But it's Apex finding kills right after that. Vong might be a little bit too late to the party. Yes, his Dream Ass is with them. But already Apex getting all those kills are double the amount of players alive than their opponents do right now. They're going to expect to flank all the way around. The Trailblazer goes all the way to CT to defend the spawn and sees nothing. So they should get a good inclination that this is a flank. Vong and Dreamers need to account for two kills each. Now Thrash. It's going on the box. Oh, it's gone. Oh. I don't think he even meant to pick up Vong there, but... I guess that's how it works in this one. Dreamass gets a freebie by the end of it, but this round is over. It's going to Apex. Uh, and uh, with that, Metasport will be losing the great lead that they have built. And we have received a word, everybody. Uh, thank you to Twiggy for looking into this as well. But the greatest lead that uh, Apex ha have ever succumbed to, right, the biggest deficit they've had, was against only Finns, and it was a 4-1 score. So the fact that Metasport were 5-1 against Apex, that's the greatest deficit Apex has ever been this season yet. Which I would guess is more of an accolade for Apex, that it's really only been three rounds difference up until today. But Apex played that really nicely. It felt like Metaspot got pulled into fighting whilst Apex was still in the chokes. Instead of waiting for them to come out a bit, use that utility. Metaspot getting a bit ahead of themselves trying to fight whilst Apex were not really dedicating at all. Like remember, like on Bind, they could just go for the TP as well on the attacking side. Demiurge now the operator, trying to peek past it. The flash is a great one and he gets Whoa! the collapse onto both of them. He'll take that. <laughs> He'll take that. The moment you get an operator in the game and you come off with one shot and two kills, best possible start to the round, especially after losing one. Can put you right back into a tempo spot. It's a lovely setup though as well. They get smoked off. Spolin's instantly ready to flash and let this operator peek. Oh, the spike will be going down here. Apex on a deficit. What they do have going for them is a showstopper and seekers. The Vipers trade kills. And Apex are called to action to find an early pick here. And Soulcast does just that. EMEA champ pops off. But how much more can you give three players grouped together hand in hand? Oh, no. Oh, but that flash is good. And Heartbeat's reposition puts Soulcast on a rough spot. Mosey smoked out. We'll have to use his own flash to try and deal with this, but three different angles. Oh, one anti-flash, a paranoia, and with Spolin being on the spike to use all, Mosey's able to interrupt oh, it, no. but is it good enough? Has he bought enough time? No. He's gone to the other side of the <laughs> world, so but away. the fact that the spike is being diffused halfway already, there is no way to win this one. It's a good effort by uh, Halfbeat there, by Mosey there, but it was Halfbeat to get the diffuse and Metasport get the win. You could tell that there was a voice in Mosey's head that said, quick, go for the teleporter. And he's like, wait, why did I just do that? It almost felt like it was part of the play. Everything else from Mosey was so good. How much time he waited, going straight for the player on the defuse. Maybe he thought he'd like bought enough time or just wanted to get out of dodge. Accidentally jumped for the TP there. But man, what a series. Apex just narrowly losing out again. And Solkaz had the showstopper and he was on such an aggressive angle yeah. and got fully flashed. But the good thing for Apex is that they've still got money, right? They can still buy into this one because if it crippled their economy again, they'd be in big trouble. Metasport would have a tremendous lead this half. But fear not. It's going to be three ultimates apiece. And heavy le left side lenience. But, but despite the fact that the spike is eyeing its way towards this A site. Or not. Yeah. Bit nervous about it, naturally. Oh, and especially with the Seekers getting so much information. Halfbeat looking again to play off this sensor that's in Hookah. Oh! Not quite it. Not quite it. Good idea, though. But Soulcast is able to get a free pick. Spolin spots out a barrel, but gets traded instantly. Metasport on the back foot. But Apex haven't entered the site yet, which allows Vong to reposition an elbow. Moonman going down for the plant means that they can all play off-site. It's just a mosh, actually, for post-point utilities. Demiurge actually gets a Vova. Super vital pick from uh, Demiurge. But Kayak reeks Vong's position. And it's back to a 2v3. 
Now Metasport need to recover from and the two-sided Garden Peak with Mosey as a guarantee. Every single position that Apex could be in, they are in. And Demiurge's back down. is revealed. His satchel too. And everything is just buying time for Apex right now. Gap closed just a little bit as Apex find a bigger grasp on this attacking side. Very back and forth again. Sorry. Apex, theory. it feels like Metaspot are just fighting so aggressively into Hooker. Maybe just trying to get onto Sawcast before that Showstopper can come in. But like in all these occasions that we've seen Apex fight from Hooker, it's like Metaspot aren't waiting for that trip to be activated. It's like on the draw. Yeah. They're trying to preemptively shut it down there, which, you know, if you have a Cypher, you put like the crazy trip that goes like down and across. Mostly so you don't have to bother with Hooker, you don't need to play in there. So I feel like having Halfbeat play in amongst the Sonic Sensor, it's interesting. I guess they just don't want to be like, we're not going to play for this space. But it just hasn't worked so far for Metaspot. And it's their turn to uh, go in for an eco. Give an opportunity for Apex to net up a few more rounds on this attack. At least uh, half, uh, half to, to half. Uh, will be the score at half time for Metasport if they do end up losing the rest of the three rounds. They've got past the barrier all at least. They have. Seems to be no issue for Apex to break through that thus far. These early picks are just uh, amounting to Apex's success here. There's only one left at Spolin. Well, there's two left, I'm trolling. There's Demiurge on the other end as well. But it seems he's walking right into Evova's den. There you go. A flawless one for Apex on Metasports Eco. Fantastic stuff from Apex. Good calling, I think, from Mozzie so far this half, too. It's been a bit more challenging, but this is probably the hardest map to IGL on. You have no mid to try and bully for certain sides of the map. It's either full dedication or faking, trying to hit mm. the site that Metasport have less players on. So there's a lot of timing becomes really important, mid-round calls, and Mozzie, first real experience of IGL in. Bottom fragging for his team, but some of the calls that have come in for Apex, the adjustments they've made, have been stellar. Whether that's come from him or the players around him to make some calls. Fake CP. Will it bring any alarms for Apex? And no omen is placed on that uh, B extremity. There'd be no reason to TP for Metasport. It's not offer any information. That's true. <laughs> Bit of mind games, I guess. Should I stop her out? But it doesn't find anything. Soulcast is able to sidestep it. And we're back to even Steven. Now it's a question of like Metasport. You have a very passive setup, I think, with the deadlock. Oh, they heard the orb being taken up and they heard the guiding light being thrown out as well. Demiurge loses okay. his life in his attempt to pick up the orb. And <laughs> I don't think he expected a bullet to be finding his way that quickly. Trailblazer oh, doesn't find him, but the thrash will. And Apex get themselves on top I here. It does miss. No annihilation for you. It's still going to be a four versus three favoring the Apex side. Viper Spit being thrown in as a guarantee as well, as Avova has just called out to his team, two approaching from long, and Vong getting a pick out in lamps. They do even out the score. Mozzie spotted. Viper's pit still existent, so you've Great got peak. to know that Viper's nearby there as well. Avova assisting. And it's still favoring the Apex side. Access to the site. Can Dreamer save his teammate's life? Just for a little bit, perhaps. But Avova is going to be the anti hero, getting three kills, and Apex closing it up even further. You gotta be kicking yourself a little bit. Metaspot, what were you? 5 1 up? But now it's looking to potentially be a 6 all half. Time out's actually going to be used. A fairly late one for Metasport, really. This is their first time out. But everything is... It's really come down to the wire. Some of the rounds that Metasport have lost. But now Apex have such a good read on how they want to adjust this. Pretty much straight after that timeout from Donito, everything's looked a little bit more planned out from Apex. Of just, oh yeah, this is how we should deal with it. And then for Apex, first time that they've played this map, in an official at least, there are bound to be little things of like, Danny being... Guys, we go over this every single day when we scrim it. Can we, like, take extremity control? Can we make sure that we pl play in these positions in post plans? And everybody goes, oh, yeah, sorry. You know, just officials. Sometimes we forget that stuff. And especially in an official, it doesn't really have too much weight to it. This seeding. But ultimately, Apex 
chose to show this map. It'd be a nightmare for them to show a bind that just looks bad when you have teams like Metasport that could use that against you. And mm. also with teams like, what, Sweet and Sour and OnlyFins watching in the wings too. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Wanting to practice some maps and officials, but also not showing what you've got. I respect it. It's just one of those things that could like massively backfire. But I guess for Apex, again, nothing's gone from... wrong. That's true. That's true. But we never know how deep in the trap oh, books they're going. How many spicy pages of that book we'll be seeing. And it's probably one of the more meta comps at the moment that Apex are playing, so it's not as if like they're showing off deadlock stuff where you look at these lineups easily anti-strat. I swear, like, every comp that we see, when a team makes an adjustment, it's like, oh, they're playing what Sentinels play. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. But it's I the mean, same it's here for Apex. Working, right? Yeah, I mean, I imagine Apex might have had some experience scrimming some of those Madrid teams too whilst they were here. Maybe Metaspot as well. And they're not the most complicated comps to execute either. No, they're very versatile. I think, like, Gecko, you can kind of get a little bit stuck on defense, but Sky is amazing playing on B on defense because the TP flashing for it, flashing down long. Well, there's an attack coming in onto this A site right now, a double-sided approach, which Hype has no problem dealing with it at all. Uh, Dreamas tries to fend off and try and bring up some uh, Viper magic Hype uh, did br bring out right after at the start. But Metasport again for the past, I believe, four rounds, they've really been struggling to find these first answers. Sproland's in trouble, and Molzy takes him out of his misery, and we are equal at halftime. Just as we were like, wow, this is the most damage a team has done to Apex, they're like, well, we're just going to go even at half anyway. But I think the adjustment that came in from Apex, it's a simple one. Like, the thing with, like, Metasport's comp on defense is you have to sort of sit back. You can't really proactively take map control. You're just hoping to fall into these deadlock traps. So Apex is like, all right, we're going to slow things down. Because Metaspot don't really have much way to get information outside of a Sky who doesn't have these recharging flashes. So Apex just burn a load of time, make it so Metaspot really aren't sure what site to stack, and then just execute on them when that utility is like pretty low and run out for Metaspot. So hopefully this attacking side can be a lot stronger. Vong was still performing well on the attack side against Apina, mm. so maybe there's stuff that the Deadlock can do here that can help. But it's everybody else I want to see more out of. Especially Demiurge, he's been shut down a lot outside of a couple of nice kills. That's true. Although we could have said the same thing for Sokars at the start of this game, but he's found his groove. A lot of information gathered here by Vong. Lurking Judy works out. They need to collect the spike and get the hell out of there. Uh, this, I think he spotted three or four players. So, for that reason, Hype will respect the uh, presence of Metasport onto this A site. And we're going to have a full 5v5 pistol post plant. We've got that barrier mesh that's blocking the way, though, for this flank again. And against the pistol, it's so strong because it's so tanky. <laughs> I think I've heard Demiurge get up on heaven here, so he is wary of it. But Demiurge slowly but surely inching forwards. Vong on showers duty, but the main push from Apex is in short. Smoke. Dreamers peeks out of it, and so does Heartbeat. Everybody want to take the fight right outside of the smokes, and it's worked well for the Vikings. Just two versus three. Apex on the back foot, but and they've also got the defuse to take care of. Harpy looking to peek. Sokas got his teammates back covered. Uh, Eventually getting two kills. It's getting a little bit uncomfortable. Dumas has got all of his health, but he's not in the right position. Wow. Sokas is accurate with his ghost, though, and won't let any pesky Viking past him. Joke it. I'm uh, just in the nick of time. But I have to feel like Medispot when they were fighting outside of lamps. Neither player was really hitting their shots from Apex. Was it Harpy? I can't remember who it was that was just playing in lamps and just missing all of those shots. Had to reload. If they had a couple more guns in the barrel, that could easily be a round win for Metasport and their second pistol. Yeah, I think there's a there's a lot of there's a bit of pride involved in this uh, series as well. I think for a few people, hype for one. He's played in Polaris before, right? In Alliance, in the first ever iteration of this league, and his best score in groups was, uh, I believe, five wins, one loss. Or six wins, one loss, I, f I forget. And um, he definitely wants to beat that by being undefeated so far. So cast early gets out. And, and Hype is there to assist with Demiurge looking to push by the punish. 
So Apex are having a near perfect second round here. Yeah, Solkas has definitely warmed up this series. Gets taken out by Vong eventually. Nice shot from him as well from distance. But low HP anyway. It's just about finding this opening. Skyflash is going to go in towards showers to see if anybody's lurking up, but it means that Apex can just watch two towards shot like this. Yeah, just find different angles, work between one side of the box and then the other. And the fact that you've got two players, you've got the a potential uh, double elevation push and uh, hold as well. But there you go. Quick 2-0 start, just like Metasport did have on their defense. It's a matter of what happens from here. So Gas is one away from having a showstopper already. Nice multi kills. What? Nice. Was like... he one and five? Yeah, at one point, yeah. As soon as I said about like him getting aim training, the aim training seemed to kick in. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot on the line for him as well. He's an e EMEA champ. Being an EMEA champ and then working his way up from challenges is a completely change of atmosphere for him. So he's got a lot to prove here that he belongs right back amongst the greats of the region. And there's the showstopper, there's the kill. Heartbeat's in trouble, and Sokaz is taking this game personally. Vong? That's a double. They still have a lot of time to work with, so if they want to reset and try and go B, they can do. And look at this, like, Hype is rotating all the way around, expecting and almost calling for it. It's risky for these two players to separate and stack on a site, but it really is the case of whether Metasport clear it or not. Moz is going to have to find a good angle with this because with the Outlaw, things don't get easy on these close distances. You need to have a, have a guarantee line of sight of where your opponents will come through of. But Metasport have already gotten through the choke and they found their way to the back of the site. This is not looking great the for Moz. lamps. Uh, they are going to be finding the flank of Moz because he's not going to be checking Johnson's his backside down. anytime soon, is he? Dream Ice is going to go with Trigger Discipline. Oh, not really. Vong will <laughs> put Molsey out of his misery with a bullet to the back. And Hype, at least he's got a rifle to work with. But let, me, let me remind you, this uh, shouldn't be this close, given how good of a start Apex had to this round. As the nades. Oh, these lineups are just too good. It's such an annoying bit of utility to deal with. Trimas is just being a nuisance. And Vong is good to hold the line. Criticize my deadlock and attack, he says. Do it. I dare you. Well, like, look there for a second of just where that sonic sensor was when he planted. Like, that's one of the things that we've even seen Cyphers try to do a bit more on attack of, like, once you plant the spike, putting trips and his sensors in places against a good retake. Like, just making sure that, like, you can't see Soulcast just satchel out to try and take the fight because they're going to get stunned by this util. So there's still, like, a lot of good stuff for Metasport. With the deadlock, the problem is, is you have to get the spike planted first to get the most out of it. Well, with the performance Vong had the previous round, Annihilation is up and ready. We haven't really seen that be impactful so far. A couple of cute ideas. But it's just... All of deadlock's utility is just annoying. Like, it's potentially tilting for Apex, but so far so good, they've been dealing with it nicely. For this round, they're on an eco if they lose, and it'd be even scores again for Metasport. Not many times the teams have been down against Apex and managed to make it on as even as well. That is true. No team has won a map against Apex. This season. But at least they've stopped the 13 O's from happening. We had a couple of early 13 O's at the start of the season, but they seem to be stopping. But Monzi and Avova will be up for grabs. Paranoia and Guiding Light, but Demiurge somehow still gets a kill. Early pickup. Kayak, the beast from the east, keeps giving. But how much more can you give? Avova's sticking around, of course he will. TP coming out, but I think just in time, because Metasport do rotate towards left. the safe site, but take the slow route. I would, did Avova like hear the TP noise? Like, is it easy yeah. to hear over the actual bind teleporter sound? Because I think we were on his POV and it didn't really sound like you could hear it all that well. So it would make no. sense why they've rotated across. Mm. Fair. I think he realized it was a fake TP anyway, but Metasport didn't stick around. They rotated either way, which is what caused the confusion. Still, it's Apex with the numbers here. 
But they've got the pressure of having to oh, so defuse cast. the spike. The timing of that smoke being disrupted was perfect for Soulcast. Takes full advantage of it, but they need to keep it going. They actually move up very aggressively here. Avova on the spike. Soulcast keeps getting shots with his operator. The wingman is there to assist with a defusal on Apex Seam to have a perfect choke hold over this defense. What a response for Apex. Chaotic fight. Apex seem to still like commit to the game plan that they had. And like seeing Soulcast operate it, it's not really been that common. You have to remember that when Soulcast was a duelist, it was pretty much Ray's exclusive. We never really saw him play like Jet and stuff, Liquid or Fish123. That was kind of like Ardis's job or Yampi's job. So like Soulcast bringing out the operator and looking good on it, that is kind of a new look to be honest. This is one of the hardest maps to op on. That's why we see so much raise over yeah. Jet. And it's he's refreshing. just making it look easy. He is. He's fairly lucky with the moments as well, but he connects the shots, even on the most chaotic of moments, and that's what makes a good fragger. Avova is in trouble here. Draws out the of the, his gun because he knew he didn't have time to react to, to throw down that paranoia. Showstopper gets him either way, though. So Apex off of the disadvantage here. Can this be maintained by Metasport? They look to aggress forwards. And uh, it's Metasport to pick it up instead. Soulcast. It's the op. Impact time and time again with the Operator. But they're on the back foot with half the amount of players alive. And with a spike heading towards this ace site and a lot of ground covered over towards Spawn. Hyper's is able to trade, but Soulcast takes a swing on Vong, but cannot close off the deal. Metasport keep a leash on Apex and want to keep him close. Strange, it feels like Metasport weren't really ever ready to go for the execute. But I do like the little set play of trying to take B long. Demiurge with the showstopper. There was also a grab net as well that went into, like, Garden. They know that Avova, if he had TP'd across, he'd have to TP back. So that's an easy clear. And I respect that Apex tried to re-aggress with the flash, but they just didn't clear where Vong was. He was on such a deep angle, ready and waiting for it. Still has the Annihilation ultimate, but to be honest, it really seems, like, situational. Maybe they need to get the plant again before it really gets used. Well, it's a smaller buy from the Apex side this time around. An opportunity for Metasport to square things up again. There's no denial that Apex are really getting challenged this match. There are moments that you can say, yeah, they're superior, they're playing better. But Metasport are really fighting for this. And look, they've got nothing to fight for apart from bragging rights and to show that Apex can bleed and their mental fortitude going into playoffs. Yeah, for Apex... We've seen teams go close against them to some OT games, for example, but I feel this is the mm. most, like, intelligence-tested they've been. Like, really le deciphering their way out. And for Metasport, it is about composure. You have the full buy. You're going to use this Annihilation. Not actually hit onto a contact yet. And misses that corner, and it's a double oh glance God. over towards Evolver. He's not playing and for the plane. He gets two. And there are guns to work with. With the Viper Spit dropping, Demi tries to find a shot through the Viper Spit and is successful with it, though. But Soulcast is on the clutch. With access to the spike. And Demiurge locked in his bag. He has no idea. No, 13 seconds, though, so he's going to have to get to the spike. Dreamass does drop. It is heard, but it does not matter as it's quicker to the trigger. And it's Metasport to find themselves back at equilibrium. Yeah, Solkas hopefully isn't too frustrated with just losing that clutch in the end because at the end of the day, you had a low buy, you had an eco. And for Metasport, like I said just beforehand, like it's all about composure. You have the full buy here against the eco. You need to be clearing corners better. It seemed that the overfocus went on to the annihilation to get people back sight. And it was just a poor clearance of where Evolver was behind that box. Literally a double take to realize that he was there. Nice dizzy spot. Gets full um gets full info outside of lamps, but also you you get it back to a safe spot to retrieve it. Yeah, Spolin's played in this position a couple of times, I think, against it. Demi Edge might have done the same because it's just if you play on that angle, you're not gonna get hit by the flash. And obviously if the defenders push out of sand, you're gonna spot them first. 
Still Apex. I've got three players to this B side defense, and this is off. This this is them playing off of no information really. No one's pushed up. No guiding light expanded. Actually, false. Well, Smolzy has used one of his guiding lights. Guard and grab net again. I think they heard it being used, so they knew to back out. Flash available for Kayak though. Showstopper on Soulcast as well. Kayak can't duplicate his success. But Halfbeat, the leader of Metasport, looking to lead from the from the front. As he's got the first kill for his team, this one. Still. Garnered access. Apex have got two approaches to move in from. Bow spawn and elbow. But they're patient. Yeah, Sonic senses either side too. Showstopper's Showstopper. gonna try and come through. Oh, never would have expected Halfbit to be that close, but it's still traded out. Is it good enough for Vova? That's lightning fast. Wait, we weren't watching where Vova's POV. Never mind, it's still gonna be Apex coming out on top on that one. These skirmishes, whenever they do come prevalent, it's Apex that seems to be getting up on top of them. For sure, and like Metaspot, they had good like sight control after the post ban. The wall goes in on Elbow, they have a sonic sensor there and also for CT. But it's another position where Metaspot are pushing past their own utility. Like Deadlock and all that kind of stuff, you want to be sitting back playing post plant, especially on Bind. You typically play for stuff like Brim Mollies and Snake Bites just to buy time on the defuse. But Metaspot just getting a little bit over aggressive, mm -hmm. trying to preemptively shut sh uh, Soulcast down with his ultimate, I guess. It's something you have to be scared of, right? That showstopper and the implications of it getting quite far forwards onto the site and who it can pick off and the the, the control you give up with uh, allowing them to blast pack into site. It's, it's a scary prospect, so I don't blame them for it. But yeah, it could have been it could have been their demise that round. I guess it's also for planting on B on bind. It's one of the hardest maps. To Statistically, it's one of the hardest sites to retake on. If you get that plant down, you usually win. So, Metasport trying to like push ahead of that kind of nullifies how strong it is to uproot some of these attacking players once that spike has gone down, once they have crossfires and post plant set up. So, during this timeout, Ryan, I've been looking at this mini map and I've seen a few pings, a couple towards uh, over to this uh, uh, hookah side, one in long, and only just now towards showers. We might be seeing a bit of a fake approach here from Metasport as uh, maybe two players are looking to sell a potential fight onto B. Also to get the orbs too. Got a couple of players at very low Viper's Pit, Showstopper. Very, very close for Demiurge and Dreamass. It's a good placement of smoke here from uh, Avova to deter any movement into showers. Over there. V Vova's got enough information to work with that he's just going to back out. And that's the potentially the fake that we were talking about. But Apex aren't really spending a third player towards this B site. Instead, it's Kayak to collect the pick. And Vong to be no oh. longer prevalent. Soulcast doubles up. And instantly the round is over for Metasport. And Apex are looking to get closer and closer to getting themselves that map number one victory in this series. Dream Ass is low. Avova knows of it. But no risks uh, really needed for this one. All they have to do is fall back, protect the spike, and it's up to Dream Us to bring up a miracle. Revolver giving so much respect over into that corner. But Metaspot may be feeling like they should have been given even more respect than that. In both occasions, Vong's just walking up long, Kayak's just happy to fight him and face out in the open. And then suddenly Metaspot wants to make a quick move into shot, well, there's two players already holding it down, pushing all the way down to face you. Apex not really thrown off by this comp at all and sort of know that with it just being one initiator, no cipher, anything like that, it's very hard for Metasport to take space. And whilst Grab has been a good tool to work with, it's also very loud. So Apex know it's coming when it hits. Soulcast with first blood, why does that not surprise me? Damage looking to go aggressive off the back of it. There's two places at the back of the site with Heartbeat. Using from the shadows to gain info in heaven. Doesn't really retrieve much because it's within a smoke still. Does drop back. Metasport. Don't have the weapons on this one. Apex should be able to clean up, but somehow Harfi has found access to the site, eliminating hype as well. And with Kayak and Sorkas entering the site, Metasport's hopes and dreams of this round are all over. 
crushed. You know exactly where Demiurge is too, but with Stinger, you need to be a little bit careful. Yeah, you don't want to really give him a chance. You Keep should. the distance away from him as well, because that Stinger can only find impact in close proximity. End of this one, Apex one away from collecting Bind into their bag. As the Showstopper now, that was the other reason to maybe give him a wide berth, because if he does get one kill with a Stinger, suddenly Showstopper's online. And 1v3 can very easily become a 1 versus 1. But yeah, this defense has been easy for Apex. First look at it, newest comp. Solcast on more duelist duties over Kayak this time. And the comp seems to be working. Like, the whole team as well is playing incredibly well off of each other. And obviously Solcast is the one getting all the kills, but the team play from Apex has been the most surprising. And wouldn't you agree, Ryan, that maybe Metasport are losing out on facilities to take up this attack? Pretty much, yeah. Showstopper and the Trailblazer is going to be good, but it's whether that gets killed. The trade is important for Molzy. And Kayak's still fighting for this bait, despite being grabbed. Crossfire. Avova's got it all covered. No one shall pass again. He's been excellent holding off this long side together with Kayak. Whether that's back on site, whether that's up close and personal, Metasport haven't had an answer for it. And again, running out of juice for this one. Run out of fuel. Swollen is all that is left. Guiding light in arms. Up against the four from the shadows can be expended. It's the final round. What would you be saving or not from? I wouldn't be surprised if he also thought saw a thrash coming out. Nice guiding try. light. Both players Defender look away. Wins. And that's the round and the game picked up by Apex. 13 to 9. And give us a reason why Bind was picked up in the first place. For sure. It's another map that is looking dominant for Apex. Despite Metasport leading the line for the majority of that. As soon as we got to the second half. All Apex. I think there's still a lot of promise with all of the stuff from with Deadlock, but it really felt that Apex knew that with that Deadlock, you have less uh, initiate utility to work with, less map control to take, and that seems to be how Apex really played around the map, and they played it perfectly. Good signs that Metasport can be competitive up against a team like Apex, right? I think they were lucky to have Apex at the end of their league um, because, you know, not already having locked their spot into playoffs, they don't have the pressure of performing <laughs> up against a Goliath that is Apex. So thankfully for them, that is the case. But, you know, they need to be careful if they face up against them playoffs later on. It's still the first map. More action to come. Stay tuned for that.
Welcome on back to Polaris, everybody. We thought for a second there Metasport had something going. It did look good for a bit. In fact, they did push Apex 2, as uh, Pavos mentioned there, their biggest deficit of four rounds. Uh, but it never really looked quite out of hand. Obviously, that first, that first time out from Apex was definitely a, a moment to take a breather and really think about what was going on. It's an interesting comp. I'm not surprised that they had a little bit of time to uh, adapt to it, but they got there in the end. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, Apex bringing this uh, Sentinel composition, replacing that Brimstone with Omen gives a lot of uh, variety, especially on that defensive side. You can play that Omen on the B side, where Sky is usually played, gives a lot of control with that Paranoia on that long side, which we saw quite a lot. But like you said, the deficit, it was real. It looked like Metasport actually had a control in this game and Apex was in yeah. trouble. But after the timeout, Apex just cleared their head, cleared their game and they read whatever Metasport was doing here. I think there was a lot of gaps in, in the sense of Metasport not getting those trades in the end, especially on the second half, which Apex was punishing a lot. And I think that's where, where Apex were able to find those entries, find the picks, and in the end, Solgas actually with seven entries, only one first death, which is really impressive, especially when he started two and seven. In I think it was round nine when it started, Solgas was two and seven, and in the end, popping off 29 and 15, yep. as you see on the screen. Insane performance from this race. Yeah, and I think it really just goes to show how important every single player on the Apex side is, because for a large part of that first half, Kayak was the kind of driving force of Apex, keeping them in the game, giving them some time to uh, think about their think about their strategy, keeping their economy alive by just being able to get a lot of kills quickly. I mean, half his kills were within the first five rounds there, and then he just kind of took a backseat when they started being able to deal with the Metasport plays there. So it's just very all-round good play from Apex. As per usual, it's not even a particularly worrying scoreline. 13-9 isn't remotely the worst they've de dealt with. And now they're heading on to Icebox, which I'm sure they'll be very happy to do after Bind there, because I think probably for the first five rounds they were probably a little bit like, ah, this isn't going as well as I'd hoped. 
Uh, but I mean, they've they've lost what uh, four rounds so far on Icebox over the three times they played it this season. Yeah. So, <laughs> damn, that is actually a crucial yeah. st- statistic. And I think uh, overall, Apex is really happy that they at least secure that third map, Lotus, because they're really strong there. Because if something were to go Metasport way, I, I think it was Bind or Icebox. Now they got the Bind out of the way, so they're probably really, really happy. Icebox is really strong for Apex as well. But the Bind wasn't awful for Metasport. It was actually really good. Like I said, they need to take that control really in the beginning, and that ex- that's exactly what they did. I loved how they started this map really well, just pushing with the four players, taking control. They were having a lot of these lurks as well. And I think Metisport, they, they showed really, really good uh, synergy with the team, really good strategies, even though they said that they're not going to show anything new here. But I think they came up with with something that we have not seen too much uh, yeah. on the opposition of Apex. Yeah, I think for sure, you know, Metasport just felt quite comfortable on that map, whether or not they were trying, uh, you know, strats that they would use otherwise or not. They just looked more comfortable to begin with at the very least. And then it was just kind of Apex's mechanics that carried them through the rest of that game. I think, you know, Metasport have made a really good choice in kind of trying out that comp relatively early in the season. I mean, as early as, you know, they're not changing it in the last week or whatever, but they've tried it out and they're going to keep running that kind of thing. And it it works for them, right? Because now they're heading into the playoffs with a pretty decent bind going that they know can work a little bit at the very least against Apex will definitely work, I would assume, against Sweet and Sour unless it's getting banned out. And it's slightly out there, which is something that we've seen work in Polaris. You know, if you're not changing your comp constantly, but you have something that's a little bit kind of out of left field, generally teams find it hard to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. And it's hard to read, especially at the start of the round. But I think we have some replays here. The round one, it was already beautiful, like we said a little bit. Uh, the flooding on A was really good. Look at this lurk position. Four players from Metisport pushing yeah. B. There's only one player. That's Dreamers holding down that A side. And right here, Hype spots that flank. The reaction from Apex is really good. They know that there's a lot of players coming from the from the flank and they instantly go for that backside. I think what was so impressive to me uh, seeing this one from Metasport though is while Avova goes for that flank, Vong has already put down that trap behind. He can't help his team whatsoever. There's nothing uh, that Avova can do. So he's just stuck down in A short while Metasport clears away the site, makes sure they're going there. And this is where I think Apex really started to realize, obviously. It's a shame that it happened in the first round for Metasport, that Apex really kind of got shown that that Sentinel is going to do a lot of work for them. But it was a really nice start to things, you know, it really just went, okay, Apex, we know your game, we know what you're going to try and do here, we're going to try some interesting trap plays, even if they don't work, we have better utility than you on this map, we've been trying out this comp for a little while, and we can use it against you, so it was basically just a warning shot to Apex there. Yeah, and especially the deadlock wall and pistol round, it's something that you don't want to see when you're flanking, mm-hmm. you're like, ah. Oh. Avova, I can only imagine what he was thinking at that moment. He knew that this plant was backside. He had to get there quickly to recover that round, but he couldn't because the deadlock wall, and that's how Metisport were able to get the edge. They were able to get that 5-1 lead, but in the end, it wasn't quite, quite enough. But something that we wanted to kind of highlight is how these teams played in this map. It was round 5 from Heartbeat that we have a replay from. I think we... Uh, actually, we just got in. We, we don't have round 5, but we can explain this. There was a lot of lurks coming in. Round 5 yeah. Heartbeat were able to lurk instantly. Before Apex even got the plant down, he was behind them. And I think it was a 3-piece that Heartbeat were able to get just from coming from flank, getting those uh, 3 kills, secured them that 5 and 1 lead was insanely good and that happened for both of the sides i think apex did that really well controlling that flank position and that was a struggle for metisport to actually counter yeah i think so you know i think uh while metisport had a good comp to deal with kind of flanks i think they just kind of took that for granted and went okay you know we've got the sentinel flanks aren't really going to happen as often but apex are a smart team they made it work and obviously in terms of their kind of uh, their, their smartness going into this one you can see just how disciplined the players of overseas uh that you know the sentinel is over towards b long 
backs up all the way. Kayak is able to get that first kill, but they have not released any presence here on a shot. They spray them down, and I think a big problem that is shown somewhat there for Metasport is their inability to get trades, I think, this game. You know, that was one of their biggest things, is that Apex was getting 2Ks, 3Ks so often, and not allowing Metasport to grab back any kind of value from those engagements. Yeah, and I, I think this round was beautiful, especially seeing that Metasport weren't able to trade that Kaya kill instantly, and Apex actually conditioned Metasport to hold mm. that A short where they have been pushing a lot with two players with three players on that flank so Metisport were trying to do like a trap play okay let's show something on B long so we can have that flank push again but this time there wasn't a flank there was three players holding down down that A short and Metisport were crushed instantly with three players and that conditioning is something that sets Apex apart from our other teams yeah you can make some set plays but can you actually play these rounds three rounds four rounds to show something and then trap that on another round but we have the map veto for icebox already nothing new here nothing new no. the double controller for the side of apex i love this the yoru i mean what else do you ex expect from kayak yeah, exactly. Uh, we're going right back to a map that both teams are comfortable on here. You know, obviously this is Metasport's pick, but Apex picked kind of their pick straight away anyway. So it's kind of just a flipped uh, way round of looking at it in Apex to get to uh, get to take the side that they want to start on on this one attacking side and. Yeah, no, seeing uh, the harbor there once again. I do like this one from both teams. I, I like both of these comps. They work very nicely. I'm interested to see how they're going to play up against each other because last time it was very much Apex trying to adapt very quickly to uh, Metasport. This time it should just be both teams going at it full throttle. So hopefully we'll see a bit of that. I'll take it away. Oh, well, I'll let Ryan and Pavlos take it away just now. Yeah. Yeah, it's full pedal to the metal on this one where Apex are looking to close it out on a 2-0 and continue with their full flawless streak uh, into Polaris regular season so far. But Metasport wants to do the exact opposite, right? Upset them, build up their morale going into playoffs and know that they've got a chance against the region's possibly greatest. Yeah, especially on Icebox where we've never seen Apex, they've played three times, never dropped a map on, uh, a round on defense. No. Not one. Like, literally, they've played three times and they haven't lost because their attack is so good. They've literally 13-0 teams. They got formulation gaming earlier on, and then the rest was like 13-2, 13-3. So it's just <laughs> dominant. Yeah, Ryan, we said they'll try. We said that Metaspot will try, but we didn't say that it would be easy. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I almost admire the balls for Metaspot to be like, yeah, we'll go there. Like, what could possibly go wrong? Because they have made playoffs, and really they're still, yeah. like, in a good position to be the second seed going into it. But at least now it's like, okay, let's actually test ourselves against this comp. And with Apex running at Euro before, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep it the same. But Metaspot have been very dedicated to playing this age-old comp on Icebox that has been around for so long. And for Metaspot, they're on a free format win streak. Only losing yeah. to early fins right at the start of the stage. It's a, it's a glorified scrim. It's a, it's an official practice match as it doesn't really mean anything apart from Metasport's second and third place, which again, they'll be playing against the same team. Maybe it'll give them an advantage in veto either way. But Apex, uh, they want to continue having a full map winning record for this regular season. The previous Apex team couldn't do it throughout the entire, uh, th throughout their entire season. Maybe Apex, this iteration of Apex can. It's Icebox. Uh, Here. Our second map of this day, and Apex are on the attack. Well, Metasport taking on defense right up the rip. As long as the only one that's playing up has the Sage Wall, which is similar to the Deadlock, it's the very good against the pistol because of how much damage it needs to take. Instead of using it straight on B main like a lot of teams would do, just holding on to it, here's no noise. Actually, this is a full walk up from Apex onto the A site. Beat. We'll be finding first the contacts, and Apex are starting to move in together in unison. Actually, no one left behind. Spollen spotted on the higher level, but Hype is able to find a different angle to that fight and put him to the ground. Apex early advantage with the spike going down. Some damage at least done. Dream Ass with this harbor wall, just checking if anybody's crossed. But so far, everybody from Apex is tucked in. I've been seeing a couple of outlines off the back of this cove, but it's going to provide some shelter. 
And the instant that Demiurge is able to come closer to this fight, that's the moment where Metasport look to enter, but it's also the moment where Soulcast will put a gun, plenty of them down on the ground as Apex do win the pistol of this map. Apex still with a lot of the other comps on various maps. Sunset, for example, Apex have moved away from a lot of the Euro stuff they were doing early, but okay. really outside the first couple of weeks, we haven't seen Apex play this map in quite some time. I mean, many teams aren't going to pick at it, really. It's only made a spot in this current situation that it's maybe worth a try. Because if they do badly, if they get 13 freed, welcome to the club. There's like four other teams from Polaris that have been in that situation, right? You're not really giving up anything or showing how bad you are. And Vong trying to get the orb. Oh, just playing the bird. Snake bite, shock dart, combo. And Demiage is going to try and fight this a little bit more too. It's good that Apex have got little pieces like that available to them. Enzo, the previous IGL of this roster, recently died to a fight like that. <laughs> Still, Apex turn their attention towards this left-hand side, B, where Hearthbeat is the solo defender. There. Being a captain of the team doesn't give you any extra perks of holding bigger weapons and having greater capabilities, unfortunately. Well, he's a strong shooter, and he's got a smart brain as well. He knows that there's Molzy possibly to the other side of this cove. Molzy was waiting the <laughs> whole time, yeah. <laughs> the cove is going to drop, though, but the Viper Wall is going to at least protect him. What's interesting is that Apex had three players on right on, on pistols. No, they had two. Never mind. I'm capping. And it's a, a rifle that Kayak had. The Molzy picks it up. How much damage can Metasport find here? Hype will have to drop. So the rifles still remain in the hands of Apex. Importantly, crucially. Everything that Metasport's doing is one at a time too, so doing any more economical damage is going to be tricky, other than maybe keeping Apex close to the site. They really think the Demiurge might go for like a late defuse, and it might be the plan. Yeah, at least make sure you're not giving a kill over to your opponents. Actually goes for the chase of overturns around just in time. Not quite sure if the footsteps of Demiurge were audible, but yep, yeah, a quick 2-0 in the bag for Apex. A couple of these attacking sides have been incredible from Apex. So winning a bonus isn't beyond them by any stretch. But Mendesport right. have been at least improving on this map, beating the same teams that Apex have. But I, Apex will be doing it in a very different style and in a very different way. With uh, different results as well in the grand scheme of things. But there's a pretty good bonus as well. Only a sheriff, the rest of them are rifles. So, uh, like you said, as history tends to repeat itself with Apex, a great chance for this bonus. Plan is fairly similar though for Metaspot, having Demiurge try to push up and play a little bit closer on A-Main. Recon Dart was used, but the Eldron is still handy for Spolen. It's just a case of when. Timing is so important on this map. And Apex, just one player over towards A. This Execute coming in on B yet again. The Owl Drone spots hype, I think, just in the final moment of its existence. It's been pinged as well. So therefore, you see Demiurge looking to push past and try and picking up the hype just in time, I think, has been able to find himself to the other side of the wall, so not a problem. Meanwhile, his team is pushing towards this A, this B site. Hype does eventually get the kill up on the Demiurge, but it's... Uh, Halfbeat to find shots through smokes here to deter Apex a little longer. Apex haven't quite been able to get the spike down yet, but I don't think that was the whole point. I think they tried to lure Metasport into this B site and rotate to the A site as fast as possible. Well, Metasport seemed to have a really good idea on how they want to shut down these B plants. Like, making sure that that cove and that plant can't just come in safely. They want to be as disruptive as possible. And whilst this and is a Spolen. lot of space giving up for Spolen, well, with him going down, like Hype has actually pushed up, got all of the space, but Metasport must have known this and they're happy to play the retake. Yeah, they, they were smart enough to know that someone would have been stuck uh, behind from Apex earlier on. But the fact that Soulcast is carrying the momentum on from the previous map doesn't give Metasport many chances. It's still a 2v3, and Soulcast is barely alive given the amount of health he's got on him. Good, well played snake bite to the feet will do it, but there's no way you're going to be throwing a snake bite where he's currently located. Spolin, as soon as he enters the fray, he is knocked out and half beat all to himself for yet another time. 
flick of the hand. Yeah, just way too many angles to account for and way too many different points of elevation. And like we alluded to earlier, Ryan, <laughs> it wasn't a really a difficult bonus for Apex to pick up. Yeah, they had the weapon disadvantage, player disadvantage, yet still made it work on A. Why? Because they're just so good at playing off of each other. It's a great position for Morsey to be playing in on top of 410. Aggressive position for a harbor to be spotted. But played in the same position in that final fight, and it was Soulcast that actually sprayed for the smoke and got the kill. Because they have that communication down that as soon as Morsey fires contact, Soulcast knows when and where to spray. Also, Hype peeking to get some information doesn't overextend to get punished. Backs up, plays with his team. Hype first blood. Yeah, we don't really expect much from Metasport this round. I don't know, are there any positives, Ryan, from the previous match that we can get for Metasport? Show us that they can contest with Apex and uh, have a good chance to make the finals for this one? Their defense was good on bind, but it felt like it was just their general game plan. Here, however, Apex, happy to have teams pick it up against them. Every time we've seen Apex play this map, it's been the choice of the other squad. So Apex just choose to attack, and they've been farming teams, literally, to have dominant scorelines, even though it wasn't necessarily their choice. Well, Kayak seems to know what he's doing with his gun. And as we alluded to, this is going to be a quick early beginning for Apex. Was it the defense or the attack he said that Apex haven't dropped a single round on Is their yet? defense? Mostly because wow. these attacks have been, you know, 10-2, 12-0 halves, literally. Right. So they haven't really given a chance to anyone to get any defense round. Yeah. I mean, I think we've only seen in total five rounds from them. Something crazy. Oh, Seven <laughs> rounds. Oh my god. Seven rounds across three series. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, this is not looking great. This is not looking great for Metasport at all, especially with the early lead that Apex have accumulated. Don't don't blame the timeout at all. They need yeah. to start thinking about this one a little bit harder. Well, here's another good one. We've seen uh, Apex play 40 rounds on attack. 40 rounds, they've won 36. Across three series, wow. they've dropped four wow. rounds total. That's a start. <laughs> That's a start and a half. Doesn't help Metasport. Not in the slightest. <laughs> the only good thing, I suppose, is like the attacking side for Metasport has been a stronger one. Defense has been okay, just like better than average, both for Polaris, but also like across VCT. But yeah, their attack is where I think they get the majority of damage done. Played a lot more of it as well, five times in comparison to Apex's three. And only lost in that first week. Four wins in a row for Metasport. Pretty much on their Four. main map pick, I think, too. It's crazy. Oh, dear me. Yeah, it's hard when your best map is also the best teams in the league's best map. It's never make, giving you any favors here. It's always going to have a hard time. But it's also a, a map where, you know, you would hope that Metasport can be contest uh, contesting Apex in. So far, it hasn't been the case. A lot of expenditures this a slight take. We're looking at a 5 versus 5 retake. This time, Metasport have guns. What can they do? That's the question. Just some chip damage. Shock darts, nade bite lineups to just see if they can actually stop this plan going down, and they can't. Demiurge well, tries to go for the flank. He hasn't spotted Dream Master crucially. Yeah. And that's where Dream Master is able to find impact onto Hype. Vong finds the timing onto Kayak, but there's still Soulcus behind and Dream Master knows of that position. Evova swings, but Dream Master keeps on giving. There's nothing Apex can do on this one because they're down in players and their Soulcus can bring out magic. He's got the Hunter's Fury available now, so it's an extra guarantee for the final part of this round. But Mulzi on close proximity is getting the job done also. Metasport got given hope to be snatched away from it. It's like taking candy away from his child. Not this way. Not like this. Soulcast triples up and Apex flawless so far on their attack in Icebox. Is it going to be an eco again for Metaspot? It's looking it's like it. It's got to be. Full loss bonus and they just can't put anything together. Ultimate's not quite online either and Apex, the one thing that they've been good at is rotating these ultimates out. Every single one of them, including the Euro Ultimate, can be really good for these executes. And a Hunter's Fury and a Lockdown, pretty much good to go. 
and a dimensional drift just one little orb away. Oh. So Apex are just farming these up nicely, rotating them out as they come through. Uh, to be fair, I really like how Metasport approached the previous round. But it was just um, Soulcast and Mosey just picking up the pieces. It's really not too much that Metasport has been able to do to just stop, no. like to stall this plant at all. They try and have a player flank, turret spots him. Players just turn around from Apex to deal with him. Everything Do you think it's all... Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's just like now, like, Mendes are trying to push up, but it seems that Apex are very aware that this could be a play. Hmm. Possible. Oh, no. Oh. Cloudburst. Giving Demiurge the Vandal. Loses half his health, though. Apex are going to move into this A site. The, the problem is, is, is that one Vandal good enough? There's a Bulldog on Dream Ass. But there's also a lockdown as a guarantee here from Hype. We are giving Metasport the benefit of a doubt here, because if they do get another kill, it's, po it's possible. Especially the, if that kill is hype. Kayak is keeping a close angle to this. Kayak's going as well. Fully flashed out and Vong what? clicks on his head. Instantly. And that's an extra Vandal for Metasport. Avova swings past as well. Apex might be overcooking this because they've just thrown it down in lockdown. But already their players are dead. Spike planted. Hunter's Yuri to break down the Killjoy ult. Down to the meat grinder they shall go. Where Hype and Mosey are waiting. And both of them successful with their first kills but cannot get a second. Apex will have to drop this attacking round as they got a little bit too greedy. A good start at least for Metasport. Apex losing that one player early. It seemed that the adjustment was nice. They didn't try to overfight in Garage on B. They just reset, went over towards A. And yeah, maybe a question of like Kayak, you're in a player disadvantage. Makes sense to try and go and equal up the numbers, but with it being I've an eco, the same thing. Yeah, like it's just both these players trying to break even, but you've planted the spike. You have a lockdown to buy a bit more time. You, hold you know how Apex longer, have got insane fine. aimers? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think that's also a bad thing for them? The fact that they're able to diff players in this league uh, when it comes to playing up against better teams that won't have the practice practice on the macro calls? I don't think it's that. I think it's just we've not really seen that many times that Apex has been like thrifted, for example. Mm. That they just don't tend to fall because their protocols as a team are just really solid. It's one of the few times that... Maybe with how dominant it's been, maybe it's the fact that you're already top seed, you don't need to worry about it. That yeah. some of the discipline just wavered for a second. Well, the Viper Spit drops. Arthur has been spotted. <laughs> he's keep on being Straight spotted. They're, they're pinging him. Oh, they still haven't killed him, though. Here, they need here. to cross a little bit deeper. At least they take half points of health away from him. Spike down. And again, Solka's got the Hunter Fury. And Vova is on the flank. And he's playing oh the trigger God. discipline play where he could potentially pick up three kills. But no, he's waited a little bit too long. But the fact that Demiurge misses a shot would be their demise. But Spolin is there as the guarantee. Lockdown drop in Kayak. There's no way you expect him to be this deep. But again, a bit too deep. On the spike they go. Hunter's Fury. Now to try and delay it. Half beats off of the spike. Hype looking to close up the gap to defend his teammate from throwing that Hunter's Fury onwards. But Demiurge hasn't taken any damage and he's on the spike already hype can get a kill here down. but they've got to be very close with these spray down stymiage what can you do soul cast at the long distance is better on his rifle and for that reason apex won't be giving up a second round here unwavering wasn't it for apex under so much pressure they didn't even really have control of the site but just so much like post plant utility to stall the defuse the hunter's fury coming out as well but half beat he had his poison cloud up he had the viper's pit he has to be the one to try and push out to catch these players from Apex that are holding the line. So all of that utility drops makes it incredibly difficult for Spolin, I think, to stick to the defuse. Maybe a round that Apex should have lost. Looked a bit more chaotic, but it adjusted nicely. And another pretty awful buy for Metaspot outside of the operator. Metaspot are going aggressive this time around. Seems that Avova is anticipating it. <laughs> Not this time. Oh, oh half half beat. Beat Gets caught. Demiurge able to trade, but Avova's good for two. Massive stuff by yeah, the villain. <laughs> he just wants to take over the world. He's just finding a fight wherever he goes, whether he wants it or not. At least now he's put to rest. Spike planted. Yeah, two versus three as well, so it's definitely doable. Apex have a rough idea on where these defenders are going to come from. 
they're actually playing more towards defender spawn. Look at where Molsey is. Yeah, they've been given so much space and time that they're very deep into the enemy trenches. And Metasport know that they've given up this space and time and they have no interest in challenging it. Oh, that's a head! On target. Which Poland gets there quicker. But yeah, they've run out of time. Therefore, no more resource in this round. Sparland is trying to go for a pick here. One enemy remaining. But does lose his life at the end of that one. So Apex, keep on growing on this attack. I like the proactivity from Metasport, but Avova just had all the answers. Yeah, strange with the buy as well. Like you were a player buy up an operator, a couple of rifles. Was that sort of a half buy that you'd full buy now? I don't think so. It's going to be awkward in some cases. But it makes you think that, like, if Spolin saved, like Demiurge was, instead of going to peek for more fights, maybe Halfbeat has a rifle there. Small minor things that isn't going to really do too much damage in this series, but it's definitely things for playoffs that you don't want to be caught doing. Especially with the money no. for Apex Enough starting to really climb up. Well, half beats on B site defense duty. But he's got the weak weakest gun of them all. Good for spraying. With all the smokes that Apex have got to their disposal. <laughs> I actually moved up so close. Heartbeat at this point knows. He's given the call for his team to rotate. Oh, he's stuck right in the corner as well. It's a lovely molly from Havova to clear him out. And the spear is going to try and stall the plant at least, but that's all he can really do because Kayak's in such an aggressive position in Kitchen. Yeah, the Hunter's Fury doesn't bear any goods, but Demiurge and Dreamass try to keep things equal. Aldrone, a little bit too late, allows Kayak Timer to get to the back line. And Dreamass now can't, can't do a thing. If he wants to move aggressively, he's got the fear of someone's going to be using his back line. And if he moves forwards, well, there's a Viper Spit waiting for him. These situations are so tricky for Metaspot as well because like, you could argue saving these guns, but when it's a two versus three, it's doable. It's worth going for, for sure. And it's like damage that could be done from Metaspot, but winning around off the back of it, that's tricky. Really tough. And the longer the spike is ticking, the less chance there is. One enemy remaining. Finding some extra damage, getting closer to the lockdown. But the round goes to Apex, nevertheless. Toxin screen down. Might be another not dropping a map, but round even on this defense for Apex because they haven't really been asked to do much defending. Best scoreline that Metaspot can hope for is an 8 4 half now, but considering the money is yet again pretty dire, could easily be Apex up to 9. Remember, like, ult rotations are good. Fundamentally, this is like one of the stronger things for Apex. Like, Metaspot have been good. It's been a common, like, pick and choice for them, but it's also the most popular map that we've seen across Polaris. A lot of the teams like to play this map. Uh. Well, the first pick does go to hide this one. And, um, thank thankfully for him, his team is only five rounds away from uh, better bettering the score that uh, he had last time around. He was in this league in the regular season, though he did have an unfortunate fall in playoffs after dominating group stage. He, uh, <laughs> the Alliance was the first team to drop. I'm sure that case will be completely different this time around. Apex is on a different level this season. Everything's just going so well. The only round that Apex have dropped was just a bit of a blip. The anti-eco. I mean, Metaspot... Oh, this is a bit of a blip. Yeah, they're able to get some damage, <laughs> but it's, it's the same as before. Like, Apex lose a couple yeah. of players, but they still just win the round dominantly. There's always some, like, security for them to rely on. There's, like, three stages that Metaspot need to go through to even get in onto the site. Never mind Diffuse. And with big ults still being available, you've got to give credit to Apex here. They, the juggling of the ultimates and having big impact uh, moments throughout every single part of the game 
is, is the reason why they're able to just get round after round and get such incredible leads and not really allow their opponents to gain any grasp of this map. Obviously, their game plans have been flawless also, but backing it up with all of the other home keeping, housekeeping. Vaughn goes aggressive, works off, backs out in time, and damage there with the Operator missing the first shot, but it's for good reason. It was the clone. How do Apex react Ooh. to this? Kayak stuck in place. Instead of moving backwards, looks to move in forwards. Spot on his low could be an easy pickup. He can hear commotion and from above, but the rest of Apex look to push over to this B site instead. Yeah, Pandemonium. This Harbour War should be enough down. for Halfbeat to know that this is the rotation coming in, so it's going to try and take a peek. Sees nobody, but he's going to hear all yeah. of these steps full running. A bit late to catch the cross. Who's next? And Vogo's already crossed fully into sight. The Euro ultimate used after he TP's on site, so really nice utility from Kayak to just cut the distance and use this ultimate to get information and again play from a really aggressive spot towards Fight defender planted. spawn. He's got no one to play off, off of, but Metasport are so afraid of him. Hearthbeat. Good reason he was in that position. He used the recon to clear him and he TP'd out. With the earlier resurrection, Metasport have got the numbers. And Hearthbeat kicking and screaming this round. But Apex have just squared things up. It only required one kill. And with Sokas having the upper ground, it just makes it just that more difficult for Hearthbeat. Viper versus Viper on the clutch. And snake bites on the spike make it hard for Hearthbeat to breathe. But he still gets it done, nevertheless. And I think he barely has enough time to get yeah, the does. defuse on as well. Metasport. There's one round remaining after this in this half, but at least they get a second one before that pressure gets to them as well. The similar sort of thing Last to the round. other round that Apex have lost, just maybe overstepping. Like it was a nice idea, I suppose, for Kayak to try and TP, be in a really aggressive position. Metaspot uses utility to clear him, he TPs out. Doesn't realize that Halfbeat goes on a really nice flank to get a couple. So just like when Apex sort of spread out too much, some gaps start to form and Metaspot are a competent enough team right to exploit there. them. But it's still minimal damage done. Most damage that we've seen from a, a defending side against Apex's attack is free. Metaspot are hoping for that with this final round. Great peek by Demiurge. Gets out with his life. Vong, aggressive. We saw yeah. him being influential in this position again, so I wouldn't be surprised if they check it. But Sokas, not going to agree past this angle, but Demiurge is there to stop him. That's one way to close off this half on a good note. And hope that a 93 curse can come to fruition, but still, the round needs to be closed out. But nice. Demiurge is on the up, and no one shall cross him when he's got that big gun in his hands. Metasport get a third Switching by the sides. end of this half. Yeah, Metasport, credit where it's due. They were dedicating to that kind of default throughout the whole of their defense, just playing up aggressively on A, trying to get Demiurge and Vong into positions where they can take aim duels. Not being afraid of the fact that players on Apex, specifically Soulcast, is 16 and 7. Continuing the crazy stuff that he was doing on Raze. Pretty much multi-kills every single round other than the last. But here is the real important one. Apex on their defense haven't dropped a round at all. They've only played seven rounds on their defense. Might not be much more to add with this scoreline. It's fair to say their pistols have been stellar. See if they can win this defensive one and make it two. What a rising. What Metasport can do? That's the question. Apex, can they keep their flawless streak of rounds on defense in Icebox? And by winning this map also, it would be a flawless streak of maps in the regular season. What's right the plan? How perfect can they be? What's the plan for Apex to actually stall out this plant 2 on B? The alarm bot's giving information that there's people there. Kayak's also walked up all the way on A main, so he's going to be the first contact if anything changes. Maybe they're not planning to stall. Yeah, just aim. Just fight them. That's exactly what they're doing. Evova is able to find the first one, but the fact that Vong and Demiurge are able to find cover towards underneath of the middle pillar still works out for them. Metasport were able to shoot back at the start, but Kayak and Soulcast come in with the shock darts. No way, not like this. They're just toying with Metasport right now, and it's just not fair. It's two different weight classes, and Apex know it. 
That kill, that, sh that shot from Kayak at the beginning of that fight too was so good. Sheriff headshot from distance. Move in and just from the little bits of chip damage that Apex were doing, I think the shock dart gets two kills, but it also brings Dream Ass down to like three HP. Whether that was all done off the one shock dart, I'm not too sure. Was it a lineup for the spike placement? Or was it just like, you know, a quick right click up against one wall and boom, double kill? Yeah, I think it was just in that general position. Like the one problem <laughs> with the Sage Plant is that you do kind of bottleneck yourself a little. And Apex almost used that well against Metaspot. Well, that's got to hurt for Metasport. Maybe they just want to end their misery by losing the rest of these rounds. Christ, of course that's they a won't. way to put it. That is a way to put it. But, you know, you want to be able to get into playoffs with the, with the thought that you can make it as far as you can. Given that Apex are on this high ground of a level. It's uh, it's hard to imagine that they can win the league, but at least make the finals, make their chances better uh, for the second season. Maybe, and by the time they improve in that iteration of the league, they might have enough points to make it into play-ins. Or if they beat Apex later on this season, they just want to make their chances that greater. Yeah, I mean, it's such an important thing to get right. Feels like... So much stuff to really keep an eye on for Apex, and this is looking like a really solid Antigua for them to work with. Yeah, I don't know if that was the case for the viewers, but my uh, screen froze, left. and Metasport are no longer on the server. But um, yeah, that's the that's the round, eleven to three, and two more only required uh, for this Norwegian org. Still yet, what's that now? Nine rounds. Nine wins out of nine rounds on this defense. Just winning against this bonus would be nice, but that's even been hard to come by on the defending side for Metasport, never mind on the attack. Really is a testament to, like, to begin with, Apex were just looking very, like, individually focused. Sure, you still have that with Soulcast being 20 and 8, but the way that this team is bonding and bouncing off of each other when they're playing in the server on a big map like Icebox. Like, if you're not thinking that these are Ascension favorites, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, uh, I think the only question in everybody's mind is whether Apex were challenged enough, right? If the rest of the teams are up to snuff. Because I believe last year there were teams like Le Petit Buffon with star players um, that did a pretty good job early season. Focus was generally consistent throughout the year and got pretty strong towards the end as well. Caused troubles to the Apex side. But uh, this this time, in, I don't think we've had a team that uh, challenged Apex to the limit. Yeah. Hard Five position for Kaya to clear. Not only does Vaughn get the trade, but Solcast gets the trade off for that too, and a little bit more. Just everything, every little fight that Solcast takes yeah. seems to be winning or at least gaining an advantage. Look, when Solcast gets a I, kill, wait, it can't be one kill. You know he's going to get another one. <laughs> it's always going to be in forms of twos. He's watched right past hype. Hmm. 30 seconds left. There he is. Poison's off. But I think he wants to try and win this He's round. He's trying to find a better information fight. than others. So stay still, please, oh, just for a second. The angle. <laughs> please, oh, no. hype, stay still. <laughs> oh no! Hype is oh, playing no. with him and he doesn't even know it. Oh no! Oh, Happy is going to be. So He's throwing his keyboard out the window. That is an alt F4 oh. moment if I've ever seen one. And of course, it's going to be hype with the final kill of that round. That's that's just bollocks, Next isn't it? Point. That's just. I, I saw Balor <laughs> oh, no. say that yesterday on the America's broadcast. I'm bringing it into fashion here. That is just a bollocks round for Apex <laughs> and for hype, especially. Insult to injury is the best way to describe that. Sorkas is having a wonderful series today. Uh, he was topping the charts when he was on the raise the previous map. He's topping the charts charts again on the Sova. It's like he's doing Kayak's job for him. It's always nice when you're like initiating a frag out just as much as you do as the duelist. Yeah. This is crazy. This might be like no defensive rounds lost. 12 and 3. Well, 
Apex have figured out a lot of movement for on the Metasport side. I think they are notified of two or three players. With an early pick in mid as well. Apex are looking sort of to close this out. And even if it comes to a difficult point, Sokas has Hunter Shuri. And I know Apex want to close this here out right here, right now, because this would allow them to have a flawless streak of defense on this map since the start of the season. And a flawless streak of matches and maps won. Haven't dropped a single one. Isn't that an incredible regular season? No other team has done it so far in the history of Polaris. Polaris, a full regular season without dropping a singular map. And this iteration of Apex is looking to do just that. Vong wants to be a little bit more menacing. Wants to be a little bit more challenging. Spolin and Vong, very low. One shot to the Hunter's Fury is what still will do it for is. them. Yeah, it's still not over, is it? With the Hunter's with the Resurrection bringing an extra player back in. Oh my god, the shot that hits Vong for quite a lot and he's forced to play aggressively, but it gets us points. Oh. They might be losing their first defense round here. Of Icebox, unless a Vova can villain his way out of this. No! Metasports say no! They're the only team in Polaris who have taken a round off of the defense of Icebox uh, and, and of the Apex side. The but how much more broken. can they do than that? Yeah. <laughs> the streak has been broken, but there's another streak that hasn't been broken. And the only way that Metasport break that streak is by winning this map. Yes. Yeah. Apex are inconsolable. They're going to time out now. Hype is just broken down into tears. But it, it's such a good point as well because like Apex obviously have so much to prove after just bottling Ascension last year. But they've done well to pick up a team where no player is the same as last year. So they've also got something to prove to get themselves back into tier one. It's such a hungry team that yeah. isn't really taking any prisoners. They want to make sure that they get it back and that they're not leaving anything up to chance. That's a stacked roster. Everybody knew it. There's high expectations. And they can't keep their eyes off the prize for a minute, for a second. But no one's keeping on their feet. That's the difficult part. You don't know how bad you are unless you lose. And they haven't lost a single map so far. This Metasport can bring out some miracle comeback. But there's no pressure on them right now. You can sense it. Seamlessly cruising through the A site and taking down anyone that crosses their path. No, this is the round that they flawless, of course. <laughs> Absolute free fall from Apex. Even just getting a bit of information where Molzy is. Money is like decent on some of the players that fall by might be nice. So saving this gun, that'd be big. Molzy could buy up a teammate. Revolver and Hype can get their guns up. It just might be Kayak and Soulcast that are running a little bit on fumes. But with the round advantage, they can just like buy next after this one. They have enough build up to work with. And honestly, Try some of the eco rounds that they have on defense, because Lord knows they haven't needed any. No. no that's very true. Quadra for the in-game leader of Metasport. It's, he, I mean, his name is Hearthbeat, but he truly is the heartbeat of this team. It feels like when Hearthbeat is online, the rest of the team can perform. And he's not only good with these calls, he's been very good with a lot of these 1vx's moments. Let's look past what Hype did to him uh, <laughs> a couple of rounds ago. Um, but yeah, you've got to really... We've grown to love Hearthbeat, I think, this season. Yeah, I mean, he's having a really good map here. I think there's a lot of players for Metasport that we've seen a lot of, like, Vong and Dreamass in Tier 1, or at least in, like, Tier 1.5. Vong played the substitute players for big teams when they needed them. Obviously, Focus last year would have a lot that he wants to get up against Apex. But it's the lesser known players, I suppose, that have come in and made this a real squad to do well in Polaris at least, but there's still so much to do. Yeah. But this might be the round for Apex. If they're able to get a hold of this one. It's only Molzy with a rifle left. No. Metasport seem to have this uh, under lock and key. But Molzy. Look at him approach. There's a teammate on an upper ground as well. Could assist in the endeavor. Okay. It's just looking a little bit too tough. Good lineups from the Metasport side. Good smokes, good coverage. And yeah, only one player loses their life this round. As it's a 12 to 5 score with Metasport still having seven rounds to go. Yep, seven chances. And I think like this is a good chance for like Kayak to be like, okay, I'm like struggling to make those like individual moments happen, which have been consistent, I think, on Icebox up until this series. Like Kayak is 
kind of had a quiet day, but granted he's been on initiated for the first map. But here on the Yoru on the Duelist, not just, like, he has some of the best stats in tier 2, just full stop. And these maps in particular haven't necessarily been building it up, they're just bringing down the average. But it is a good chance to be like, for Kayak to be like, hmm, what am I, like, getting wrong here? How do I need to play? How do I play? If I'm being shut down, how can I still be supportive of my team, right? Because you still have so much good utility for a Euro to work with. That is very true. Well, let's be fair, I feel like Kayak hasn't had many opportunities. Doing all the damage themselves. Here. Yeah. All the round is already over before he gets a chance to have impact. He's been great at gaining information though, and that's exactly what he's done this round. Yeah. Vice was so enabled from Metasport, the A side taken. Fans gonna come in and look at this free player flank that was gonna go around behind him in A main, but it actually is just Soulcast holding it. Everybody else is just going in for a normal retake. Guess off the reckoning too, actually. Yeah, Soulcast is taking a sweet time. I wonder when he'll try to move in there. Spolin is looking in his direction. He does have a lot of noise uh, heading towards Soulcast's location, so that's why he was able to read it out. Dreamass looking behind as Kayak, uh, as his opponent is distracted, moves in right on time. Soulcast being a menace on this back line. And Avova looking to assist as well to solidify the deal. That's it. Apex will have a completely flawless run in this first stage of the regular season of 2024 Polaris. And what a run this has been. It's been fantastic. It's not only been able to consistently win your map picks, but also maps like Icebox that get consistently picked against you. It could almost just double up as your best map that you just don't even need to choose. So Apex showing new maps, old maps, same comps, different comps, doesn't matter. It's all as dominant as ever then. They're going into seed one for playoffs with a stellar record that every team, not only in Polaris, but across tier two Europe should be afraid of. Yeah, they really should. Everybody's gonna have an eye out on Apex. Everybody's gonna be having their eyes on them in playoffs and how they've been playing. Uh, they're easily one of the favorites for Ascension already. But of course, we'll have to throw it a break before we get into the interviews of one of the Apex players, but also a second match for Formulation Gaming of Hukas following up right after that. See you in a bit.
Welcome on back to Polaris. It's a scoreline we've seen many, many times before. We'll see it once again. Metasport still managed to do a good job there against Apex. Obviously the best performance we've seen against them on Icebox, but they're still just the undisputed monarchs of this league. Uh, not dropping a map whatsoever. They'll keep that up for the full regular season. Just the playoffs left to do it from. And yeah, I, I mean, there's not much else to say at this point. We've said it seven weeks in a row. They just look infallible. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like there's no one in this league that could beat them. Like Pablo said multiple times, I think this team's definitely the favorite for Ascension. At least, I think, at least I, I think most of Polaris people agree that Apex is definitely one of the better teams when mm. it comes to Ascension. Obviously, they're not quite there yet. They still need to go through playoffs. But with these performances, I think it's fair to say that Apex they look really strong when we think about playoffs and when we think about Ascension because there's not a single team that we're able to take a map from them. That's, yeah. that's insane to me. Yeah, uh, we, we were just kind of we, we were kind of joking about this over the course of the whole season that you know oh it's never happened before you know there's never been a team that have won Polaris or with won the regular season of Polaris without losing a map. Well, they've done it. They've finally <laughs> done it. They've, they've gone ahead and done that. And look, here's the thing: we were told before uh, we got started today that that Kayak was feeling a little under the weather, having some trouble with uh, allergies uh, right now, and uh, so we, we were just kind of like, oh, what's going to happen? And Kayak, yeah, no, he's not had the insane performance today that he has a lot of the time. But that's just Apex. They are able to cover for each other when that kind of stuff happens and they still look just as good. Yeah, I mean, when you have five talented players, mechanically, mechanically talented players on that mm. team, it doesn't matter if your star player doesn't pop off because then you yeah. have Solkas who comes online, I think it was 29 on the first and was it 22 on that with the Solva. Insane performance individually, but as a team, that's the most yeah. important part for Apex. They stuck so well together as a team, the cohesion is there, the synergy. Yeah, they overcooked a little bit right there, <laughs> we're gonna see a few clips later on but i think apex does overall the synergy in this team the talent that they have individually is insane hype being able to lurk around on that a side while rest of the team is working that b magic there is just something that you cannot replace in this team yeah, well, we'll get to talk to Solkas right now uh, as we move into playoffs. Obviously, welcome, Solkas. How are you feeling? Oh, pretty good. Uh, yeah. Especially after those two games. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty damn good. Yeah, just, just okay. You know, at this point, it's probably getting boring, isn't it? It's just like, ah, oh, you know, we won the game. I'm feeling all right. Good. Another day in office. Our default. All right. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about stuff. Obviously, not 
not, nothing insane happening there, but uh, what was the thought behind that uh, bind pick? Obviously, you probably knew already that Metasport like bind, they were going to take you there at some point in the series. Did you just want to get some reps in against that deadlock comp? Yeah, I think it was mainly just that we, we've kind of been playing the same map too many times, and we kind of wanted to just mix up a bit and get some practice on official uh, on different maps. And usually when you play official games, you're going to get more, it's going to be more clear like what the mistakes are. Um, so we thought uh, that's what we should do, and we kind of, you know, just went for it. That, that sounds good to me. I think Pavlos even said it's like a glorified scream right here. But uh, <laughs> I mean, obviously you had have like hundreds of officials under your belt. You already know it all pretty much. You've seen it all here. Was this just another day in the office, or did you have to prepare something else here because you wanted to keep that clean score of not losing a map, not losing a match? Or, yeah, was it just another day in the office? Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously for us this match, like, wasn't as important as it would be, like, compared to, like, uh, let's say for other teams, because we'd still be top, but we still wanted to just make sure it's, like, uh, we're doing the same for every match, you know, preparing and, like, do what we need to do and just focus and uh, try and just, like, keep our mistakes for minimum, even though that game uh, had a few overheats, you know, I had a frag movie coming up, I got to pay the bill somehow and overpeat and we <laughs> lost. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I think uh, yeah we're still prepared how we usually do it. Uh, this is paid off. Fair, fair. I think you could make a frag movie out of those two maps fairly <laughs> easy because you dropped so many kills, so many insane multi kills right there as well. Well, let's look back to the season, this regular season. I mean, do you think everything kind of went as it should have, or do you think there were some mistakes, some mishaps that shouldn't have happened? And if so, what were like the surprises that you you kind of want to highlight there? Um, I think yeah, there were definitely some games where we kind of yeah, like I think they were a bit too close than what we thought, and comparing like our results in scrims and stuff, and like to what we showed in like some officials, are a bit like. Uh, they weren't like the cleanest games, especially there was like a sunset, remember went overtime. But uh, I think it's good that at least we see some mistakes now that we can fix for when, uh, you know, it starts to get more and more like competitive towards like the the end of the, the year. So I think it's good to iron out some things and um, I'm glad that we can actually see mistakes that we can fix on. Great. Well, you know, I, uh, we're, we're looking forward to playoffs now. Obviously, you guys are going to be facing only Finns first. They're the only map, uh, they're the only team that have taken you to overtime on a map. So, obviously, I, I, I'm sure you're confident enough as it is, but I've got to get some kind of something out of you here. You know, uh, how, how are we feeling about the chances in playoffs? I don't know. It's like, it's just... Uh... Wake up, get out of bed, play game, go back yeah. to bed, you know, another type of yeah, type it's beat thing. So. <laughs> Every day blends into the next one at this point, yeah. yeah. No, well, uh, yeah, day. not much you can say. Congratulations once again on the flawless regular season. Uh, good luck looking towards the playoffs. You guys look absolutely brilliant. I'm sure you will accomplish all the things you hope to. Uh, so well done. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Congrats. Yeah, I mean, well, there you go. Solcas dropping a, a 357 okay. ACS there, just had to <laughs> bring that up at the end of that one. Over 200 damage per round, a 40% headshot percentage, 70% cast. What can you say? Uh, look, Apex is Apex. <laughs> I mean, I think Solgas did the talking with the way he, yeah. uh, he just destroyed Metisport in that. The server. Valorant speaks for itself. Absolutely. And the fact that Solgas, yeah, he has had, had his struggles but you know, sometimes you have to fall down to get back up and that's yep. exactly what he wants to do. He wants to get back to that tier one and I'm sure he's hungry. He's mm. really hungry. He showed that on the server today and I'm going to be honest, we keep saying it, Apex, they look really, really good. Um, yeah. We said that last year, but this year, we did, I think it's different. Yeah, this the, they weren't quite as dominant last year, and that's saying something. Uh, <laughs> you know, this was uh, another level this season so far. They still got playoffs to go. Let's not sit here and oh, don't don't you know? Let's let's not let's not count our chickens before they've hatched. At this point, we will take a look back at that uh, series there. I think we have a few rounds to highlight. It's not rounds where we were like, oh my god, this is amazing analytical play. It's more just you know, these are some fun things that happened in the game. We're just taking a look back at what we enjoyed there this time around and. 
Look, Apex playing really well. This was uh, round three here, and they just had a, uh, a nice time of it. I liked the way that they were able to adapt to this one. Obviously, they're on that lower economy. They've got half armor. They haven't got as many rifles as they'd want on this one. This is good adaptive play. They leave a Vova on the site. It doesn't quite work out, but they still have the whole of A to themselves here. Yeah, Avova maybe a little bit too eager there to push on that timing, doesn't quite find it, maybe could have waited a little bit longer for someone to make contact on that A side, but still perfect rotation, Solcast once again taking a double there, securing the round completely for the side of Apex, and like you said, this, this was a bonus round, they didn't have full rifles, I think there was a, a three Vandals, one Bulldog, but still a bonus round that sets the tone for the rest of this attacking half for Apex, and in the end, I mean, at this part, they got three rounds, but it's not quite enough when you go against Apex. Beautiful rotation, beautiful read on the map, and that's exactly what we saw multiple times from them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we can uh, look, look, I, I want to take a look at another round, but it's not, it's yeah. not for, once again, really just not for anything other than my own enjoyment. I just want to watch it again. Uh, th this was I mean, this was fun. I'm, I'm sure Halfbeat probably doesn't want me to uh, bring this one up, but here's round 15. Uh, 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 at the very least, you know, about a 30 second clip from round 15 here. Hype has no idea what's going on. Hype is clueless. There's nothing going on here. Oh, what's that? Oh, is that we can a just... head? Yeah, is that a head? That's something. There's something up there. There's something moving around up there. Oh. But unfortunately, Halfbeat is like a dinosaur from Jurassic Park and can't see anything unless it moves and it's uh, like take the he, shot he, take the shot yeah <laughs> every time he stands still something goes wrong and then <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> but, sorry that about was... that sorry about that heartbeat I, I, i'm sorry i just had to watch it again you know we only got to see it one time and i think i i, I think ryan and pavos were so starstruck or struck by it that they didn't really you know they they were very much just i, I just wanted to analyze that really as, as closely yeah. as i could but yeah i mean another great game from apex nothing more you can say at this point yeah, absolutely. And even though Metisport, they showed some really good stuff, especially on Bind, I think it was really solid from the start. Mm. In the end, it's not quite enough against Apex. If we went to Lotus, I think Apex would have been able to take that as well. Really solid map for them, but 13-9, 13-6. I mean, it's yep. the most that anyone has taken from Apex in terms of uh, they <laughs> had a really good lead, 5-1 to one lead, that's four rounds. It doesn't sound much, but against Apex, it's a lot. Then you take six rounds in Icebox, where other teams have taken maximum two rounds. So, yeah, it's decent, decent, uh, decent yeah. stuff from Metisport, who are second... is that it's just going to be so difficult. We've already established for Apex our head and shoulders above the rest of the league at this point. You know, we don't want to mention it too often because that would make people, you know, bored and, and not want to watch Apex games. We want people to watch Apex. We want people to watch all the games, obviously. But yeah, that does seem the way things are going to go. Hopefully for playoffs, we're going to have a little bit of time for teams to kind of formulate some strategies. You've seen Apex play all of these maps. Now we've even forced to bind out of them. Well, they did themselves, but hopefully now teams can really get a good idea of what they want. So three teams trying to be Apex essentially in the playoffs is basically what we're going to see. Either way, we have another game for you today. Formulation Gaming versus Who Cars. We'll be right back with that one after a short break.
Welcome on back to Polaris. We have just finished off all but one of the games in the regular season. Now it is time for Formulation Gaming versus Who Cars, the two teams right at the bottom of the leaderboard currently. Who Cars yet to win a game. Formulation Gaming on a two and four scoreline here, and just yesterday got confirmed as being the second team being pushed down to the Eclipse Promo Relegation Tournament. So this, I mean, while it is, you know, a, a meaningless game technically, it is an interesting game. It is the two teams that probably have the most chance of having a, a very interesting series against each other. Oh yeah, absolutely. And even though it's not important in terms of placement in this league anymore, or who cares, it's really important to win this. It, it would yeah. be their only win in this season. They're down 0 and 6. So I think technically it's more important for them than Formulation Gaming, but in the end, obviously, both of these teams want to win this before they go to Eclipse. We talked about this a little bit before we started, that this sets the sp uh, pace for playoffs, that first game, and this for Eclipse, looking uh, at the other teams coming in and whether Formulation Gaming can, can come back, whether Who Cars can come back. Yeah, I mean, look, let's look at it this way. Who Cars have been a good team. They've got so many games, you know, th there are stats to back all of this up that, that are able to get close. We'll, we'll bring that back up again later, but, you know, they've understandably struggled to find form, really, since they were confirmed, like, three weeks ago to be one of the relegated teams. Uh, so, you know, what can you actually say about their performance since they, uh, you know, they lost those ones? They started off really nicely, I think. They had some good form. They were up against difficult opponents to begin with. You can't blame them uh, for having a, a, a kind of bad streak to get things going. It just, you know, caught them up, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And there are some struggles for who cars, especially, I think, converting those five versus four situations, I think it was 63% that they have been able to do, which is not really good when you have a one player lead. And that's not even counting for the trade that comes in. That's without the three uh, second delay trade. So you actually have that five versus four lead. That's something that they need to work on. It's kind of late in the season to start working on that, but when we go to Eclipse, obviously that's something that Who Cars wants to look into. They want to maybe get more entries and convert from that. But I think this team, they definitely have a lot of talent. They have yeah. good players. They have players that have been here for all of the time. Mostly. Lethal, obviously a new one coming in. I think I was even here for the first a match that they played, Lethal was absolutely popping off, obviously showing good signs already, but they haven't been quite able to get those wins under their belt, which is quite sad to see, and I hope who cars they, they could get this one under their belt. Yeah, I think the thing kind of going through my mind here is that yes, who cars, you know, they haven't played incredibly well. But it would be a shame to lose them. They are seasoned players of Polaris and they do have talent. And look, let's take a look at the amount of rounds that they, or oh, sorry, the amount of maps where they have lost that they have been within three rounds or less. That's a 10 13 scoreline or better for them. Getting to overtime or getting to 11 13. They have had so many. Seven, Seven. out of 12. That's over 50% of the maps that they've lost. They've got to 10 rounds. Yeah, so when we talk about 0-6, who cars, you look, ah, they're not even close to these teams here. But when we look more deeply into these maps, they have actually been quite even. They haven't lost them so so badly. Seven out of those 12 rounds that they have, or 12 maps that they have lost was three round deficits, which is really, really sad. They just need something to push them over that edge. Mm -hmm. That hurdle, that it's pain in the back uh, and I, I would love to see who cars fix that for Eclipse maybe even for this match mm. I think it's gonna be close uh, close maps here as well but it, it's something that you have to look for not only that 0-6 but how close these matches have been yeah and um, well we can look at their opponent now formulation gaming se uh, seventh in the league I almost said second in the league second from <laughs> the bottom in the league yeah. uh, and again a team that has had good form in bursts but just overall not quite shown uh, the the consistent form that you would need to, to stay up in the uh, in the league I do think everybody has landed in the places that they deserve to land in uh, I think that, yeah. that is the thing here Th there have to be two teams that get put in the bottom two and and it is just the way things worked out the formulation gaming and who cars were the two that ended up here 
And yeah, this is a good team. It's just that they've just struggled to find consistency. They've struggled to be able to convert some of the rounds that other teams would be able to. Yeah, and Formulation Gaming, once again, we talk about veterans in this league. There's Jaff, there's Riyadh, mm -hmm. these players, Fardon even, has, has played in this league before. So you have people who know how to play here. It needs something to get them over that line. Obviously, there is really great opposition against them, like we've seen. Mm -hmm. Apex, Metisport, a lot of these teams, but you just... You just have to find something to fix this. Obviously, a great, great uh, five stack of players, but not quite being able to find that form for this season. Yeah, and I mean, I think this is partly to do with just the fact that the bar has been raised so much. We've got an even further improved Apex coming back to uh, Polaris here. We've got some new additions that are looking absolutely insane. There are there are new players joining in from the Beacons, and there will be new players joining, uh, well, or joining the uh, Eclipse tournament from uh, Premier as well that will likely look really good. These are going to be puggy teams that will come in and will just show individual talent, and it's difficult to beat those teams a lot of the time. Absolutely, and it's so strange for Formulation Gaming as well. They've had good victory, victories against Apina Orchestra and Metisport, but they couldn't quite win against NXT, well, yeah. which I, I would count uh, not as good team as Metisport. So it's it's kind of strange. Maybe you lose against different play styles here and there. I think there's one stat that we we maybe want to highlight that might be might give edge for who cars here on this matchup. Yeah. Yes, uh, I mean, there's no other way of putting it. Jaff has oh. played against Who Cars four times and never won. In fact, that might actually be the biggest text other than a title we've seen <laughs> on the Polaris stream so far. That is, that is really, yeah, we, we've uh, we've we've gone all out with that one because, yeah, that's a that's an interesting step. That is an interesting stat. For, uh, I think it was three times with H2O and once with Coalesce. Yes, I think yeah. Riyadh and Fardo was in a few of those rosters, so. There are some rivalries here, definitely that 4 or 0 and 4 for Jaff. I think that's something that uh, is uh, on Jaff, the back of his mind. Oh, uh, but that's not his only rivalry. That's not his only rivalry <laughs> yep, that nope. he has not lost with. Um, the 50-50 as well. Jaff has not won a single <laughs> coin flip in the map, Vito. Not a single one. He always picks tail oh, and he man. always loses. Uh, I mean, look. I. I, I me okay look i don't know if you believe in like karmic justice or anything like this but what has jaff done to deserve this <laughs> yeah i actually don't know i i think he posted some few weird british breakfast so i, I think for me uh, that, maybe. Yeah. that is something british that, cuisine. yeah that mm. that is definitely something that you could have done for the coin flip uh, yeah. it, it wasn't quite pleasant to watch, at least for me. Maybe for you, I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm not really a full English person. Either way, yeah. uh, <laughs> we'll move on from Jaff. We'll go to some other players. We've got a head-to-head -to, -head to look at between the Sentinels yeah. of these two teams, Semba and Sunshine here. And similar stuff going on between these two. I think both of them play... There are some Sentinels in this league that are very aggressive, are able to get a lot of clutches and stuff like this. This is more uh, this is more like a I don't know. These two take that kind of back seat, maybe not back seat role, but they're more kind of uh, helping the team rather than trying to take a, a, a front seat kind of going for kills and stuff like this. There are kind of two schools to that playstyle. Yeah, and I absolutely love how both of these players are able to flex. Like you see, Sunshine playing Omen seven times here, but. He plays uh, Killjoy on Icebox, yeah, Cypher on Breeze, yeah. Omen otherwise, Sember, who plays Cypher most of the time. He flexes to Viper on Lotus and Bind, and mm -hmm. then goes for Harbor in Icebox. So a lot of flexibility, which brings a lot of more, maybe, yeah, a lot of more flexibility on the team as well. You can go for different compositions. You don't have to play that Sentinel role all of the time. And it's actually a weird kind of dynamic on, on the side of full cars there as well. Sunshine, who plays Killjoy on Icebox, aside from Breeze and Omen otherwise, when he plays Omen, there's like a Nille on Sentinel, they kind of switch around, Sunshine going going for Sentinel Lethal, he played on, on Lotus, I think, at one point as well, so there are a lot of Sentinel players in this roster that can flex to that role. I think Sunshine is one of the most uh, prominent on that. Obviously, Nille, one of the best, but we have a map veto on our hands. And this one, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be interesting. 
Yeah, I think immediately first map is going to be Icebox. Who cars love Icebox? FMG always float Icebox. So I do think that will be the first map here. I'm assuming we're going to get a split ban from yeah. Formulation to start off with. Uh, we'll head to Icebox first, and then I'm going to go with Ascent for the second map here. And then, you know, from there, probably a float of... I'd go for Lotus for the side Lotus, of yeah. That's what uh, I'm oh, thinking, Lotus, maybe. Yeah, I, I think Ice, Icebox, like, who cars? But Lotus, I, I think that might be a good angle for FMG. Mm. I'm not going to lie. But you said Ascent, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jaff said it in an interview, like... Ascent is one of their better maps, uh, or yep. at least Chaff's better ma maps. Every team has run this map multiple times. They know exactly what can happen yep. on Ascent, different composition. But what Chaff said is that they usually make the right decision in this map, which is why they're really, really good here. I could see that Lotus being the last pick. I think FMG is really good yeah. on that. I, I really hope that they don't ban it because I think that gives them maybe an edge on that last map. And yeah, yeah that is Lotus. It's going to be interesting, though. Uh, both yeah. of these teams are, are good on Lotus, even though Hookars are down 0 and 4 there. But they are not I think, like a punching bag there, if you look at yeah, the first At first the very weeks. least. To me, this looks like a three-mapper series. Uh, Hookars are definitely a good team on Icebox, and Formulation like to float that map. It's not one they ban, but it's not one they yeah. pick either. So I wouldn't be surprised if Hookars take the first map here, and then who knows what will happen on Lotus. Obviously, Ascent, you've got to rate Formulation Gaming. It's basically just the other way around. Uh, you know, Hookars don't pick it, but they don't ban it either. So I think everyone's relatively comfortable with this. It's just that it's, it's all going to be about just who turns up on the day, really. And that, yeah. that's all it has been a lot of the time this this season pretty much i mean the, the one thing that who cars has in ascent that they haven't played this since week one they played against only Finns once mm. they lost 12 and 14 really quite even match up there could they switch something up i mean ascent is something that you why you usually play that default composition of jet ko sova omen, omen killjoy maybe switch something up here and there if you want to have a different duelist we have seen different compositions in masters as well but i'd see who cars not wanting to switch that and we are most likely gonna see something of a um, some some kind of mirror composition maybe go for cypher on the side of formulation gaming but the icebox i think it's gonna be really interesting for us obviously that double controller composition that we saw from apex is gonna come in handy for formulation gaming side you have that harbor you have that viper a lot of control yep. on that side but who cares they might counter with that they have that floating chance of that yeah. same composition they have switched it up recently but could they go back there maybe Possibly. I mean, here's the thing, right? I do think that that comp that you're talking about, obviously, the one with the harbor and the viper, is generally a better comp. Uh, we've yeah. seen Hukars get beaten by it a couple times. The last time out on Icebox, they got beaten 13-9 by NXT running that comp, and Hukars were running the default comp with the Killjoy and the Sage, the double the double Sentinel there. And, and while that is still a good comp, it works well if you give sight control to the double controller. It, it, the round's basically over. It's it's so yeah. difficult to get anything done with that. The, the main thing that Sage provides is the ability to get on site, not to hold site. Uh, and 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 the harbor is completely different. You know, you're playing two different play styles. You're playing for two different win conditions. And I do think that the win condition for the harbor happens a little more often. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I I think for especially for that B side, if you have Viper and Harbor both up, you have so much control of that side. Just rotate those walls. Something that I would love to see is a Gecko here from from the side of full cars. Okay. You switch something up. I don't think we have seen Gecko in this league quite yet. I might be wrong, uh, oh. but that could be something that we we saw. I think it was in Masters. So that could be something that switches up. I I love that DC. It's, it gives a lot of. Uh, chances for aggressive pushes, a lot of chances for early information, and easier to plant. You can leave that yep. sage out uh, of, uh, if you have that gecko composition, but do you want to switch for the last week? I'm not quite sure for the side yeah, of the Yeah, I'm doing a quick check. Nobody has played anything but default or harbor. I think those yeah. are the two icebox comps that we've seen in this league. I uh, don't know if anybody is going to switch that one up. Uh, yeah, no, that is the only <laughs> two we've seen so far. <laughs> just taking just a quick glance at all of the iceboxes we've played. It's been yeah. relatively simple. You know, like, this is the thing right now is, is icebox is very set in its ways. It was very groundbreaking when we had that harbor come out uh, in, in terms of that comp, and it's worked. You know, it's, it's a yeah. good one. 
I mean, obviously the gecko composition was really prominent in Masters. Uh, I think it was picked five times yeah. or seven times actually. But do, have you had the time to adapt to uh, that composition into this? Not quite sure. We actually oh! do see the gecko. Oh! Let's go. Oh my I'm god! So, you I'm so I'm so happy. I'm so. There we happy go. Okay. This. Well, hey, hey, we've we've broken new ground here. And look, the the main thing, the main question was, okay, are they gonna run? the harbor if they're gonna run the harbor are they gonna run a yoru or a reina we've changed it completely we've got a gecko going through we've got double initiator back it's back to the old days we found out we're like do you remember when like 2021 Fnatic started running a breach and everyone was like <laughs> yeah. what it, we're, we're back we, we're so back baby i i hated the bridge composition <laughs> I, like, I really didn't how like does, it either how does this even work in this map but it somehow yeah. it somehow did when it was back in the meta, but I, I really cool. love this Gecko pick. It might switch something up from that uh, really basic setup that Hukars was running, that really basic composition. They don't mm. want to go back to the harbor, but they want to bring something up. I love the Yoru pick for Formulation Gaming. They yep. played that against only Finns. They lost 8 and 13, but I think that's something that you can absolutely develop more better and better and actually find those mistakes like Solka said. It's really important to run them on official so you can actually find the mistakes that you're doing in the server and not on practice. Well, it's great to see Hukar's changing up their strategy a little bit in their final week now that they're set in stone. Let's see if it works out for them as we head to our game with Orion and Pavlos. It's pretty much nothing to lose for both of these sides. They look to uh, switch things up here on Icebox. We already saw one Icebox, and that was... Um basically a uh i don't know how do you describe it it's a lion versus a mouse <laughs> really that, that's what the previous icebox matchup looked like but for this one we might be seeing something completely different who cars bring something uh that we haven't seen from them in regards of comps and formulation gaming they need to redeem themselves because this season was far from expectations yeah both teams changed up their comps fairly recently Formulation Gaming, bringing in the Yoru, lost to Limpe and only Thins the other day, and Limpe said in the post-game interview that it was like playing up against a ranked Yoru. It didn't really provide much for Formulation to work with. And for Hukars, yeah, going towards like the flavor of the month for Gecko, but neither team really running uh, a yeah. Sage. You've got the Harbor on the side of Formulation Gaming. Mm. It's going to be really hard for Hukars to get the plan down consistently, I think. Very quickly, Ryan, is Hukar's going to get their first win of this series, yes or no? Their first win of this regular season, yes or no? No. Well, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see later on today if that will be the case. But Hukar start things off strong and the pistol's looking to prove Ryan wrong out from the bat. But no, it's a four these versus two. Hukar's getting themselves their spike plant with the two formulation players remaining were the ones that were on lurk duty over on B. But look at Hukar's. They've just stacked up against it. They've heard the commotion and they want to fight it face on. Somehow Riyad gets the pick. And if he would have got on another one, I would have said this is doable for formulation. But not anymore. They are dancing and prancing in front of them, but it's Hukar's with first blood. Yeah, good fights together as well. Sort of know that there's going to be a flank in, so three of the four players go back to check A main, fight it together. And maybe there's a chance that because there's no fighting for relegation at this point, like you're just flat out relegated. This game doesn't really effectively mean too much other than maybe seeding going into Eclipse. It's hard to gauge at this point. But it might just mean that there's little pressure for both sides to work with, so yeah. they don't have to worry about how these games are going to go. Therefore, like, who cares might have a chance when there's like, little pressure on them. Or free to true. express. It's a chance for them to practice in an official scenario. <laughs> and for both of these teams to kind of redeem themselves, it's been not what yeah. they wanted. But, but it's fair what the desk alluded to. They have had the weakest performances out of every single yeah. one of the teams, and there's no doubt about it. They didn't lose by luck. It was a simple performance that brought them to where they are currently. The better buy from Hukar seem to be doing better work over to this A site, even though Formulation are keeping them on their toes a little bit. Spike in the open. With a minute to spare and the toxins regenerated, those sides will try and close up this gap right now. You got the harbor playing from Jen as well. It's just put up the wall, and the brute force of the guns is just enough to get in. But yeah. I feel like that could be a bit par for the course for the rest of this attacking side, where the wingman goes to plant, it's broken, and who cares awkwardly have to try and get onto the site to replant it again. But you don't have that protection, and that really should be the thing that formulation doubles down on to make sure that they punish. 
Right. So, Ryan, given these comp changes, you know, what, what is what is great about the Gecko for this map in particular? I think just having something else to try and plant, that you can get another gun mm. protecting the wingman as they're going. I think the flash combined with, like, KO flashes can be really good. Flash mm -hmm. clearing sights is solid. But it's just similar to, like, with the deadlock combined argument, you're just losing out on so much other stuff. Right. And I think a lot like, of teams, especially on Icebox, just need to stop trying to reinvent the wheel. I think the mm. Sage comp that we saw from, well, Metasport is solid. You can make some adjustments, put in the Euro like Apex did. But otherwise, mm -hmm. you just don't want to be going a little bit too crazy with it, I don't think. Yeah, especially on a stage where you're not quite winning off of uh, protocols. Kind of for firepower. I guess maybe they're trying to catch their opponents off guard, but this is a decent bonus by Hukar's. Decent guns around Vandal Phantom. Sight control respected by formulation. A lurk is in the making, but Mishu's looking to spurt it out. I think I've seen both of the players. Recon gonna help him more than the next wing. Riyad going for a wide swing. He's going all the way in spawn. Goodbye, Mishu. Really good play by Riyad. And there's three players remaining here for the Hukar side. Uh, Janet really try and save the day. Nilla. Good reaction there. Yeah. And adaptation on the crosshair. Needs to push up to make a play because they're in a the player disadvantage. But now Formulation are just pushing this one at a time. At least now it's traded by FMG. And Simba putting Lethal to bed leaves David all to himself. Not much health to spare. Although his Sheriff can do quite a bit as Riyad himself is one bullet away from death. Same could be said if, to Simba if the head <laughs> ear is found. No. A lot of damage done by Hukar's that one. But it's Formulation to put their first route on the board. Yeah, plant was good. Bonus was solid. Hukar sort of pulled in to try and fight for flank. You see it being pinged on the minimap right now. Just how much Jap was trying to get in behind them to cause chaos. And, you know, we just saw Icebox. We saw, like, how Apex were playing together, taking fights together. And it was a case of, like, Mishu and I think Sunshine both trying to go for that peak, but not really getting it together. And it allows Jap to get a nice 2k. So they're able to sort of build up the money. It's just something like both these teams, it's just isolating the mistakes as much as possible and not getting caught out because it's these mistakes that have put them in this relegation dogfight to begin with. That's very fair. And it's also unfortunate for both of these teams for this to be their final match. Right? Because either of them winning against each other could, have been could potentially yeah. have their chances. But that's not the case. They are already in the relegation zone with David first blood. But Puggy nice reacting quite quickly after that. They're trying to sneak by Shogged out the wingman, but they're still getting the plants down. Right now it's just the Euro to clear the site, see if there's anything else to worry about. Not much post plant utility to work with. Shogged out for Mishu, the mollies, and Anasorms actually does so much to use, never mind. Yeah, there is. Formulation though have been able to find the first frag, but they've been scared away from the spike defusal as the bullets are starting to rain upon that direction. Still equally traded, but it's uncomfortable for Semba because he's low. 20 points of health, the bot being thrown out in front of him. No Sunshine time. knowing where his opponent is, there really isn't time because I don't think it was even defused halfway. So Semba, yes, does collect the kill. He's the only player standing by the end of this round, but the round goes to who cars. And that's a three and one then lead. Yeah, Eco gonna be needed for formulation. The round that they had against the bonus, it was only one player surviving. And just, yeah, not enough, I think, to stop who cares for going for these plants. In fact, you're giving David a lot of freedom and a lot of respect to just go for aggressive peaks and find an early catch on formulation that weren't expecting fights. It's so hard to get right, too. It's all about, like, being able to, like, push up, be aggressive. We saw, like, Metasport in the last series playing a lot on pipes on this way. defense, like pushing up aggressively, kind of like Formulation they're doing here. With a Gecko flashing in, the Recon getting all of that information, naturally it's gonna scare Formulation away from these aggressive positions on A. Yeah, it's also causing for reposition on the other players holding out onto the B site. Jaff was a little bit more aggressive early on, but now he's uh, dropped back towards mid, sort of expecting a potential rotate after the Recon catch. But the Blade here is pretty dangerous. Got to look out for them. Semba, the only Vandal on the side of Formulation, and it's pretty far forward posted up. Here. 
hard position for Ria to pick it up if we do see Senbone going down. We saw similar plays to this in the last time we saw Formulation play on this map against OnlyFins. Hmm. Aggressive holds, taking all that space. But Hukaz made a good call to revert over towards B, where it's just Jack with a classic. Yeah. Good pick for Semba, though, to start. The fact the that Dab is low, in his confidence. Wingman puts the spike down, but Planted. Lethal putting, pushing a little bit further makes the endeavor just a little bit more comfortable for the FMG side. Yeah, David can push this too because he doesn't have a gun, it's just a blade storm. So right now he's holding on 24 HP on an aggressive angle, it's gonna be hard to clear. And he's not Ooh. able to get the two kills together. Any body shot oh, would take no. him out. And it's Puggy with the classic. I was about to make a line about David being a, a well and truly known duelist within the Polaris scene and the Northern European Valorant scene. But I guess Lethal has got his teammates back and won't let this round go to waste. Uh, yes, three players drop, but it's who cars that extend their lead, and this attack is looking quite brutal so far. Yeah, I mean, this could be a very good map for Hukas. It's not necessarily been the best run of form. Like, I think four losses, one win, and that only win was against Sweet and Sour, which, you know, playoff team, all things considered. And a different comp might throw Formulation off. But Formulation, one of the reasons I think why they've ended up down relegated to Eclipse is because of just the map pool as a whole. Like, their ascent is phenomenal. One of the best in the league. But having the rest of the map pool to match it has been a big challenge. And Icebox has been one of those maps of formulation have been taken to a lot. And it still hasn't necessarily gone their way. Yeah, they've struggled quite a lot, haven't they? Yeah, losses to Onlyfins, Metasport, Apex, they got 13 0 Pretty much since then, Formulation Gaming have been panicking to get their maps in order. I guess after making their way through quali through the qualies, they sort of built up some sort of confidence, but by losing so heavily oh, yeah. against some of these other teams, it must have really hurt them mentally. Thrash, making sure that the entire site is clear, and it's found out a lot of information here, which allows David to move further forward. Thinks better of it. Spike goes down, and 5v5 on this retake. No, like, resistance at all for formulation. No, and the Hunter's Fury. Good read to actually watch for this flank that's going to come in from Sunshine. The Hunter's Fury is just going to try and clear this up, get onto this, set the tempo, oh. make Kukas start to panic. Are they just going to stick it, really? A few stuff away. But it seems the Mosh Pit did stop them from going all the way around. The push through yellow has been pretty influential, but Lethal's holding down the fort. Jaff off the spike. Spotting out each other, dealing nice with the back fight. liner, but a lethal is able to swing out on time, well coordinated, and for that reason, Hukas comes out on top. Yeah, great, like, setup. Awkward crossfire to do with Sunshine going for that late, late lurk. But they manage to get into a position where Jav can't necessarily win the one versus two. Timeout called fairly early on. Formulation only just picking up the round against the bonus, and everything else has been very much Hukas on top. Seemingly uncontested. You're letting this team do so much, and when you have opted for less protection, no harbor, no sage for the walls to plant, and you have more shock darts, nano swarms, the mosh, echo utility, you're giving Hukas everything that they need to set up nicely for a post plan. Yeah, that is fair. At least for Riyadh, he's performing a little bit better individually. Hmm. But it. Like, simple things of just putting a Nana Swarm on the common, like, default positions, right? Just the typical things that we've seen from, like, VCT against playing a Gecko of just... They like to plant in this position, we're going to Nana Swarm, make sure that that Wingman goes down early. Because it is incredibly awkward, we've already seen it. Hukas don't get the Wingman to plant the spike. How difficult it actually is for the rest of Hukas to go and plant it themselves. It's such a good window to do your damage for formulation. But right now, they're just giving the plant up for free, it feels. Yeah, it really is. They're not really contesting it. And I think that's where the weakness of Hukaz's setup lies. It's uh, amongst it. It's, it's the setup, really. But it's not challenged. And therefore, Formulation are struggling about it. Let's see if there's any adaptation after this timeout. Let's see if that was uh, something that was discussed. The only thing but I might not be seeing this round, though. Yeah, Marshall only is the main gun. Jaff having a Viper's Pit is nice, but you really wouldn't want to see it used in this round. I mean, that was the one thing that Metaspot was able to do against Apex a little bit. Some nice thrifties. 
would do wonders for Formulation's confidence if they can get one here. I mean, it wouldn't be the first one of the day. I mean, we saw one from uh, the previous matchup conflicted against uh, Apex, actually, so... I mean, Apex had their own ego win as well, so there was some redemption. But for now, Formulation seem to be pretty comfortable on this A site, given that they've got three defenders. It's the best case scenario for them, that Hukas are walking into this area. But Dava's first shot makes it a little bit more difficult. Riyad thinks better of his initial position. And David's far aggressive movement, together with Nilo's spam through smokes, is able to find some fairly big damage. Somehow Puggy gets a shock dart kill, but I think that's all it, there is to this round. Puggy's alone, and with a martial shark, can only find damage to Mishu's body, but not enough for the kill. Hukars have uh, extended their lead quite a lot, but this is the moment we've been waiting for after the attack timeout. This is what Formulation Gaming were discussing about moments ago. Yeah, and one thing to say about like what Hukars are doing well is just when they can build up a bit of momentum and set the pace, specifically when they can get David to actually push in onto the A site, it looks near on and unstoppable. Like, if we see Hukars playing at a faster tempo, it's the best that they've looked pretty much all stage. And that might be the difference between them performing pretty decently in scrims, for example, and in officials. It's just, they haven't got that luxury of playing fast. You have to be a bit more deliberate against these slower VCT teams. Well, Varden's out. Good Hunter Story by Mishu. And somehow Nilla gets a pick on mid. Riyad was ultra-aggressive in his movement. I like the Hukars here. Five versus three, just cutting noise. Formulation are forced to make a play, even up the numbers, and it might lead to most likely Formulation overextending and getting punished. This is really not what Formulation would have liked. Right off the tack timeout, into a buy round, and losing your two players off the rip, and uh, lose the round thereafter, forcing them into potentially Recon another eco two. round. Semba is in trouble, that's for sure. He's able to find one before he drops, but that leaves Jaffel to himself. Poor man can't catch a break. Can't win a coin toss. Can't win against two cars. Is history repeating itself today for him? Shot. Toxins going up. Could just be all confidence, really. Could. Will this build up his confidence, though? Will he single-handedly try and take down who cars? Because I'm pretty sure he's not Toxins happy with the statistic up. of every single time playing up against his team, losing. He wants remaining. that to change. And he might have a chance. It was already a 1v4. Doesn't Down to one on jail, one. I don't think. Now he does. Because the snake bite was coming from that direction. So the snake bite in retaliation will give him some extra time, but it's a little bit too deep. No ring down the swing is coming his way! Time. And I believe he does have the defuse. Yeah, he has plenty of time. Jaff does not want to be a statistic. He wants to be the big boss to take Hukas down. So important for him as well. The IGL being able to maybe bring this team back from the brink on this defense. Show that there's life, and we have seen Hukas of dominant sides, Thanks. dominant moments, but have been able to not capitalize on it. Having teams like Apina Orchestery come back against Hukas on Sunset. Even Hukas, I think, in the first week Thanks. that they had, ooh, that's a question, would have been the human tripwise, I think. I like, had the lead in those moments, but just let map slip. Doesn't matter how you start a map, it's how you finish it. Formulation, that might be just a second win to bring them back. That's very true. And to be fair, this is the first time I've seen them get in the first pick. Does that lead them to success? Maybe. Farden's been able to get away and he's got an ultimate that if it comes to a retake will be really influential. Guys maybe wanted to get the Aldron out early if they can from Puggy. Oh, yeah. Recon, that's been used to being cleared, but the Frash, Riyad has to back out, doesn't have the TP on hand, but is at least able to break it. Can be used again. He should get caught on his cross from the Toxic Stream. Nidalee is the only one to be able to find a pick, but that Recon was perfect. Spots two, picks one, and formulation with double the amount of players alive on the server currently. Lockdown used by Sunshine, but there's one from Varden to do the exact same, same thing later. There Nilla's we go. Finding so much damage for his team. 
stalling out the plan a bit more, but this is a lot of space coming up for formulation. Like you said, they have the lockdown, but because Adam's 5 HP, they're just giving so much space to know exactly where this last oh. player in Nile is going to be. For a second there, I thought Nile could do it all to it by himself, but no. Uh, he's not uh, as lightning fast as I thought. And uh, that will be another round in the books here for formulation. And that will be the second in a row, I believe. Only thing I think to point out for formulation is that Jaff's had this fight his pet a few rounds now. Like, it's one of those ones that you typically might use towards A just instantly. But I guess formulation of a plan to, if they're put under B pressure, it could Viper's Pit to shut it down. But the problem is, is that Viper's Pit is such a big ultimate. You want to be getting it as often as you can. You don't want to be holding on to it for the perfect situation, because those don't often show up. Weird money as well for Hukar's. Mostly a buy. Other than a bulldog and a sheriff for sunshine. The Viper's Pit, if they can get a plan down and onto site. Which now is starting to find some resistance on this defense. Well, I think it's safe to say that the Hukar's momentum has been stopped. Brakes have been pressed. Bumpy road ahead. It's a matter of closing up the gap, I think, for formulation. Make them feel that they can take it on attack. But let's be fair, I think it's, set to, it's two map affair for formulation. Awesome. Looks very doable. On ascent, should be the case. I'm sure they don't want to risk it on Lotus, do they? Not at all. This being a map that both teams, whilst they haven't been winning on, have been playing a lot. Info it should be everything. Well, the take comes through. Finally, the Viper's Pit seen from Nilla. For the lockdown straight out from Farden. Looking to deny that space from formulation. The flank two. Pushing all these players back with a lockdown and then pincering them on the other side. It's a big play for formulation, but can it pay off? That's the question. It's Riyad with the first pick causing trouble. He's got the assistance of Puggy as well on the back line, and they keep on finding their shots. The front line is finding a little bit more difficulty with Mishu's presence as he keeps them a little bit busy. Triple to his name by the end. The only player to get kills for who cards that round, but it was a great coordination play by Formulation. He put them on the border yet again. Yeah, that time has been everything for Formulation since. And also just that Jaff 1 versus 3 has pretty much broken the back, the mental yeah. of who cars who have been on fire dumbstring so far on this map. If we had live viewers of this match, they'd be shouting MVP, MVP. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Fury is used early whilst these players are going to try and fight for B main and Puggy off the snake bite combo as well is able to get an instant kill with one charge. The rest though, no damage done to Hukar's, but losing Mishu, losing that recon and Aldron and trying to fight for B main now, it's going to be tricky. Jaff with a Viper's Pit, hard to move him. He's been holding on to this play. He really wants to use this ultimate. Bro, watching the first five rounds in contrast to the second four, the, 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 the fourth last rounds in isolation, we're looking at two completely different games. Formulation have come alive. Jaff now looking to respond to this B hit and throwing down a snake bite together with a poison cloud to deter any sort of easy plant. But the wingman go, goes deep and nothing will be able to stop it. The Nano Swarm not quite in position, therefore spike plant successful for Hukas. Why is he not pinning? They've got a reckoning at least for a retake, but these players are so far away. Again, going for this flank, trying to clear in behind them. The Formulation have given up so much space here. They really have. And I think Jaff is scared to kind of move forwards, reckoning through. Nilla looking to aggress forwards. No one is looking that direction yet. They've heard him though. So it's going to be traded and with the power of numbers and the supremacy from the main hit of that B site, this formulation going to continue with their winning streak of rounds. Perfect circle as well with a high tide. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Don't see that every day. <laughs> that is smooth. That is eye candy right there. It's tricky to even call like with the retake too because we only saw like one side of it. Like that B main flank. And formulation, like, it feels that they are giving themselves a bit more room to play with and then going for a lot of these like set retakes, set plays around ultimates. Which is working. Like, it's a good chance to make sure that some of these strategies come out. But I do feel that, like, if Fukas are aware of just how much map control that they could potentially take here, it might be able to be punished a little bit more than it is. 
Maybe so. Kukaz looks to switch up their tempo a little bit. Go a little bit faster. And so far, it's worked. Semba is no more. Riyadh's in trouble. Good flash for him to put David in a difficult spot, but punished by Nille as his teammate couldn't quite finish up the pieces himself. So two-player advantage for Hukas. This change in pace has worked out so far, but can it be enough to close out this round? End up the half on a high note. Seems like they can. Formulation forced out into the open here. And Hukas, they're in ready for it. Wingman planting the spike. And it's oh a ball God. versus two. Looking really bad for Formulation. And Hukas... At least we'll be closing out the high on a high note because the four consecutive round streak by formulation started to get a little bit scary. Yeah, and formulation just started over peaking there, I think, a little bit. Whilst the, the fix, I suppose, from the timeout has been good for formulation, just the last round, eking back into bad habits. But hopefully, you win the pistol here on this attack. A bit more freedom to make this Euro work, which has been a lot better from Rio than it has been previously. But winning this pistol, bringing this even. It just feels like it's all just that mental confidence. If you can get stuff rolling, being able to carry it along, but then you maybe lose a round you shouldn't do, suddenly the other team is on a streak of three or four rounds. Like, it has to be a mental reset for both sides to make this a cleaner half than the first. And something tells me that we might be getting that, Ryan. I'm slowly getting to it. Both teams warming up on the server. It took Apex a while to warm up on this, the series. But they did get there eventually, and by the end, they were just steamrolling their oh, opponents. So, let's see what happens on this one. David, not, got, not quite getting caught or doing any catching out either. Lost to Dizzy, though. But, trying to get him out of that hmm. position. He's going back in. He is. Stuck in place, though, and no dash available to get out of there quickly. Good reveal, but Mishu can't capitalize on it. Tries to throw a Hail Mary oh shot up, but not going to connect this time. Almost got Semburn. He was frantically trying to scalp away if he could. But all of Hukas have rotated over here. There's no, like, flank. Now there's going to be a mid-check to see if anybody's rotated past. Mid-check from both sides, actually. Yeah. But Hukas have just missed the timing, so now they really have no idea if Formulation Gaming have cut noise. They're waiting on A, going to execute in a second, or whether they've actually rotated over to B. Well, they've got no way of gathering that info either. Recon only just gotten by Puggy. Thrown towards the A site. Hasn't spotted anyone, though. Yeah, but so it's is pulled to his team the to back? It's a fake. He defenders. Puggy's pulling everybody into this A site. He's done great work of it. And there will only be one defender to this B site as uh, Formulation approach. Yeah, full contact from Formulation as well to try and push up. And Habakov actually just to create a little bit more space and plant out in a different spot. Spike planted. Mishu's recon broken instantly. So no chance to shoot across the smoke. It's lethal to find the first kill of this round. Only now getting the first kill? Crazy. The rest of the nine players are still alive though. Two stuck in, on site and it's Jaff to be first caught off. Do you expect Semba to be here as well? No, you don't. Wingman on the defusal. Having an extra player on clutches like that is going to be a rough one. Recon out. But it's Ria to save the day for Formulation, winning off the, another here. pistol round this game. Definitely the way they needed to close up this gap. Yeah, the only full health player having to take some of those fights and wins them nicely. But also the lurk that came in from Puggy, the recon from distance. It takes so much attention away from where Semburn's playing from. Because post plan positions for Formulation Gaming looked a little bit awkward. And Puggy, who had sold that fake over towards A so well, just off of a recon dart and picking up the orb. Able to push mid and catch those players on the flank. Not seeing any like bad fristies and stuff thus far, but who cares? Might want to change that with how aggro they're going on A main. No, what? Oh, okay. Snake bite shock that combo again. But it was a snake bite to find the closing shot. Makes sense. Who cares? Want to be farming up some of these ultimates. I don't even think it was them fighting for the orb necessarily. It was just them trying to close the distance and have multiple <laughs> people stacked up there. Could be. Could be. But the B site is open. That's important for formulation to square things up here. Good chance for formulation to sort of learn how who cares want to hold this site now with the new comp. Like, who's going to be playing where? Last round they walked up, this time they ran. See what they do on the potential bonus. It does force Hukas to clear out every single part of this area, so it does make a time to be of essence here. 
Good reaction timing for Sunshine playing Aim Labs, a mini game of his own. But Jaff is having uh, his own little gunfight. Collecting every single kills apart from one so far. And Les David falls right nice here, ace. right now. That's the ace by Jaff. He's taking matters into his own hands to take down two cars. I think it's so hard for teams to have uh, a competent IGL that is also like the vibes merchant, right? That that Zels this role, the glue guy to make sure that everything can function. If it's looking bad, that they can just keep everybody's morale up. Doing that as an IGL is tough because you're playing both good cop and bad cop. And I think Jaff is one of those players that is able to do that really well. Like calling for his team has been consistently good, considering being maybe outgunned. But also, he's able to just mechanically win fights and keep everybody's hopes alive. Stay down. David's heard the rear TP. And he's able to answer back. Farden is there to deliver a blow of his own. So, still staying equal as Jaffa trying to keep Hukar's players busy to the defense of this B site, but he's alone. Surely they should realize that it's all a rouge. In obfuscation, the main fight is this A site, and the fact that Nilla was able to peek so far past that corner, he's realized what the play looks like. So, Hukas are going to respect it. They know they've got the numbers. They're going to play for a numbers advantage retake. None of one's going to stop it from being a default plan. So, a little bit of damage done, at least to keep Fadum safe. Even the Al uh, Recon Dart is going to ping him, forced him to back up, but the spike is planted. Good positions for Formulation to maybe make something out of this bonus. I mean, there's pressure on Hukas to get onto the defuse, but Wingman is on it already. And Hukas can afford to take trades all day. Wingman stopped, but Mishu cannot be stopped as he's looking right where he should be. And uh, Hukas won't allow Formulation to win their bonus, not at all. Right back in the lead. Losing a player early, I kind of like that Jaff was heading over towards B main again to see sort of how who, who cars are going to be holding. Is that Viper going to be playing over there? Is it going to be the Gecko? Finds both. Just a good way to sort of make calls and really work out what's going to make who cars tick on this defense. Because so far it's been the attacking side that's been better for formulation out of the two. The defensive side of who cars has been one of their struggling elements. So this is the best chance for formulation to take back the lead and to take their grenade. enemy's choice of map. Must have planned for formulation. Mid pressure. We haven't quite seen this yet from them. First attempt. Looking to move into Kitchen. Sunshine's holding it, and there's utility of his zone there to help him out. Utility to Formulation wanted to try and clear out with some of the Nano Swarm shock down lineups. But hasn't hit neither the turret nor the alarm bot. It's forced out a Nano Swarm. It means that Jeff's like mid lurk is going to be put under some pressure, and Sunshine's even going to push through Tube to clear it out properly. Not only that, but the Aldrin did cause the Hookah's players to react to this A site hit. For a moment there, Mishu was spent as an extra player to this A site, but he double set guesses himself, nice. which causes David to be all by himself to the defense of this A site. He's been able to back out due to the dash being available to him, but the toxic screen being enabled that doesn't allow for the cross for formulation. Riyad, though, will force his way through. 25 seconds, they've got to act quickly yeah. because the B site has been taken up by Farden here. That's done. Only just. Sunshine's gone and cleared it back as well. Held on to uh -oh. mid, so yeah. the extremities of the thing that's been lost. But 15 Last seconds, and Lethal's here with his util. This is not enough time. It really isn't enough time, but he gets it down in time. But the fact that we didn't have any other players around him couldn't react to the defenders on his case. And Hukas extend their lead even further. Marvelously done from Sunshine, especially. Under so much pressure made, all of that utility he could hear used from formulation to try and clear out his own stuff. But he's just pushing through Tube. Not overextending, having an inclination that Jeff was there the whole time. Just to break the turret and back up. Wins an important fight, keeps that control. And formulation, you could already see that they're trying to manipulate the map. They'd fired and lurk all the way up on B. But it's hard to, like, be clinical off the back of that for formulation because everybody's so spread out. 
great reclays from Hukaz overall. And now Nile is fighting for this space yet again with the help of the Gecko. Similar to the bonus. The Viper's Pit is even available. So if we do get the spike down, it does complicate the matter. Recon from distance as well, which was nice from CT. Nile gets one, but he loses the help of the Gecko, but he's stalling a great amount. It is still only two players here from Hukaz. Nobody else has rotated. No. Formulation sort of hoping that more occasions have come through. But Nilla won't allow Mishu's life to be... Poison Cloud used to cover up the rotation, I think, in mid. Some of the Senburn's going to go far. Actually, this is going to go on top of where the turret is, I think. Yeah, just being able to sneak past all of this util. The turret, just, just in front of the wall, is going to stop David with the operator from rotating left. away. They're in a great position with a great gun. Sunshine might have the ultimate timing, timing here. And he does indeed. Spike Semba down. has dropped. Could have been a potential for a second. Standing. Jaff is on the wrap of the wrap. But couldn't quite find the back line in time. <laughs> Nilla <laughs> has got David's back covered. And uh, Hukar seemed to be doing pretty comfortably on this defense. Doesn't feel comfortable watching the rounds, though. It's just no. like headless chickens running around trying to get the rotations. But there is potential there to formulation of overcooking things just a little. So the timeout here is a good one. Just like we have the right ideas. We're getting the right manipulation. We're pushing uh, hookahs in places that we want. But we're trying to do too many cheeky things at the same time. That we're not quite sure how we want to position ourselves. And we just end up rotating, trying to push through, lurk with, through different spots. I think there's a little bit of overheating happening with some of these mid-round calls. They're good, but just keeping it simple is going to find so much more success, I think. Yeah, and you've got to consider that their mentor shouldn't be doing all too well, right? Both of them, you know... Uh, I mean, every every player has got to has got to have some sort of ego, right? And to be amongst the two teams that will be forced to be going to Eclipse, the Promorello of Polaris, it doesn't... It doesn't sound right right because i remember we started off the season we saw who cars we got some old players of this region playing again yeah okay a little bit of a different composition but you're like these guys have been through it they some of them have made playoffs before should be decent formulation gaming they were the first to win the qualies uh they also look pretty good they want to roll they beat other teams that have competed in this league such as apina orchestra but they haven't been able to close it out. They haven't been able to find any comfort during this regular season. And, and as this is the final match of the season, they've uh, they've got they've got a chance to prove themselves. But you know they can't be too happy about the situation. Formulation helping to up the tempo as well. Nothing coy about this. The Euro Ultimate is going to try and push in and execute. The rest of the team is a little bit laboured behind. And Mishu, because of this hard wall, hasn't been cleared, and he actually is able to get two. That is tremendous work by Mishu. He does eventually get traded out, and the fact that Puggy is keep on shooting, Nilla drops in from the skies and does hero's work. Semba gets pre fired through the smoke, Nilla doubles up, and uh, in a moment's notice, Hukas are able to respond in kind. I like the adjustment that Formulation Gaming made, but it's just a small mistake with their own harbor wall. Not deep enough that it allows a little bit of a pocket for Mishu to play over. To be able to see the tip of the top of the harbor wall to see people on 410 and clear them. It's hard. It's stuff when you look back on the VOD review of this one for Formulation, it's like, ah, oh, crap. We left a little bit of a gap here that Ukaz fully realized and fully exploited their best of their abilities. Nilla's having a wonderful game though. You've got to give him props for what he's been able to do. Thinking on his feet, finding off angles and off moments to deal with formulation, get some simple frags. And even ones that aren't, are just straightforward as well. Doing some solid anchoring work over to this B site. Also a formulation gaming team have had to make the roster move mid-season. Farden coming in, the assistant coach in place of NK. Very true. Hasn't really adjusted too much for the roles and with these ultimates now for formulation. It's still a fake. It's again formulation 
absolutely cooking with their ideas, but it's such a heavy dedication of Ultimate, it's pulled all surviving Hukas players. Down one broken towards his B site should indicate to Hukas that the fight is on the other side of the map. Semba, though, is cooking a lurk. A shark, a shark in the depths of Icebox. I, I Mishu... think Mishu did spot him eventually, didn't give the call. Does Mishu know where his opponent's going to come from? Eventually does pick up Semba, but the damage has already been done. Formulation have planted, and I've got way more players alive than Hukas do. They're not going to let go of this map just yet. Yeah, I think either they're going to be just heavy saving, but looking at the money, they've got a lot to work with. Could be a better choice to try and actually flank around to attack a spawn and just keep damage on these guys, the operator especially. Huggy 600 credits, Farden 750, Riyadh 350. Any extra kills that they can get is good. And that's why Formulation literally are not peeking out of garage. Move in after I strike. Can someone buy me, please? Appreciate it. All right, this is turning out to be quite the interesting game. Formulation giving us an extra fight. They were late to respond in the first half. It seems they are late to respond on the second half as well. But they created a bit of a buffer. They got themselves the first couple of rounds due to the pistol and the follow-up. But the buy rounds, they've only just been able to find their first one. Pretty much two closely matched ultimates on both of these sides. I think if Hukars win it, this is their game to, for the taking. Five just bit used instantly for Hukas over towards A. Mishu as well, just spraying wow. through. <laughs> well, if it's going to be that easy, if it's just going to be a shooting gallery, why not end Formulation Gaming's misery right here, right now? They've been given an inch, so a mile can be taken away from them as well. Riyadh. They know exactly where he is. And all Mishu has to do is wait. Wait for his teammates to close in on this location. And Riyadh knows the whole map is closing in on him. I got the spike. Becoming smaller by the second. He's a rat in a cage. But rats can be quite nuisances. So he's going to give it a go. That's the first. But not many bullets left in the chamber for him to do any other work. If he picks off Mishu, he's opened up one of the sides he could go through, but no, that will not be the case. Mishu opened up this round and he will close it out as, as well. One round remaining and Hukas could be getting themselves at the first map of this series. Yeah, map choice consistently across the league and only picking it up once outside of this one. Just a small change in a comp seems to have made a big difference and just a good start on this map too. Just picking up the pistol, just being able to... Build up a deficit. Formulation have been playing catch up ever since. Here. It's a matter of closing it out. Because I think what Hukas has struggled with, with since the start of the season is closing out maps. They've had plenty of moments where they could have won matches off the front, but couldn't quite have the mental capacity to close it all out. So let's see if history will repeat itself here in this map as well the last match of the series of the of the tournament of the league of the regular season still playoffs right after this it's mishu to start off things off strong again this time around lockdown does and off one this detention does put formulation on top here so there's a flank of sunshine that's just been notified of again a lot of big ultimates though out of formulation gaming sunshine Gonna get pinged by the recon, but in a safe position, he's not gonna get sprayed. And naturally, Hukar's using the frash on around like this. Not willing to back out. They're going for this still. They are. They're gonna give it a good old college try. Seems like they do have the economical facilities to do that. <laughs> Puggy. Nice little move. Nice little maneuver. Hukar's still on pole, though. Still ahead in rounds. Formulation just playing catch up and trying to close in on Nilla's position. Get more damage done, the better still. It's Formulation that have to make this tough climb back to overtime. Or just hoping that they, even though they've been dominant on Ascent when we get there, first of all, they'll probably be attacking because it was their choice. 
Ukar's getting to pick the side. But also, if they lose a map like this, I imagine that's just going to kill morale. Being relegated with this team that's been consistently losing, Ukar's almost just been the butt of the joke for the stage. And they're yeah. the ones that are outplaying you, frankly. It's crazy, isn't it, how different the performances of Formulation Gaming have been. They've beaten teams like Metasport. I think they got a 13-1 on Ascent with them. Uh, and then lose to uh, some of the worst performers of the league as well at the same time. It's not over. Right, three more rounds to it and uh, two more maps after that as well if uh, Ascent finds a different fate. Can't count them out. But it's, um, it's a team plagued with inconsistency this season. And it's something we are seeing here as well. Formulation heading towards this right-hand side. It might be the right call given there's only one defender. Yeah, Sunshine mid control has been consistently theirs. Been hard to take it for Formulation, and especially with how much they want to manipulate the map. Important area of the map to just not have control over. The devil Damn, with the would upper. Love a pick. Yeah, he's been quiet too. Ooh, finds damage, but not quite the kill. Was through the wall, and Jaff shuts his life down. And it's a four versus five. Formulation want to keep it going. Flank coming in, at least for Sunshine. And Fadden goes for that fight alone. Didn't really have support, but luckily wins it. And who cares again saving from the look straight out? I think that spray could have gone either way. It looked a little bit rough around the edges, but the picture was the same. So double digits for formulation, actually. This is turning out to be really close, because getting two rounds consecutively is much more fathomable. Oh, for sure. Than uh, anything else. Because they keep buying up this Operator 2 on this defense, it means that the big stack of money that Hukar's had to work with is slowly starting to run out. The 12 10 here, Hukar's lose the next round, 12 11, and then they're pretty much on an eco. So they need to be saving some money here or there, either by not getting the Operator or even like half armor, trying to save in situations like this. It's a great chance for Jaff to just. Rally the troops and be like, just two more rounds. Two more rounds. And I think it's if we get to overtime, formulation are just going to steal it from Hukas at that point. Out. Can Hukas close out this match? It's just map number one. All they need is one round. Formulation, two in a row for overtime. It's that simple. Nothing more complicated than that. And ultimates won't be available this round either. Yeah, that's and the main thing. Unless a lot of kills will be collected. That's what keeps it super simple is you're not really playing for ultimates or playing for ops to get them online. It's just getting multi-kills to maybe pull this back. David Forst used the dash early because the recon dart pings him. Just to keep sneaking mid, out. Pays dividends. Fun and Riyad both get a pick, but David does madness towards the other end of this B-site execute. That puts the spike on the ground, forcing Formulation Gaming to get themselves out of this position because they pincered themselves. And it's going all the way around, but that's a really important alarm bot. Notifying the Formulation side, but this is buying time for Nilla to reposition as well. They're actually peeking out the window too. Watching under, so they sort of know where this player that activated the alarm bot is, but the problem is it's just buying so much time. Nearly has been it's such a nuisance. And they've let David to do his own thing. He could be anywhere right now. He could be in their own spawn and they don't know it. So they're taking a lot of time to clear it. By the time they get to the spike, we're going to be at 25 seconds. And then they've got to go to B. And that's exactly where Hukas are. 30 seconds left. I bet he wished he, his, the, wished he had the op right now. He's going to find a fight. If he can group up with his teammate, that could be everything. But the spike's been picked up 20 seconds. They're going to A. Oh my god, this, this is nail-bitingly close. I don't think it's going to slow them down. It's just literally a test of time. I don't think they've got it. Ten seconds oh, they do. Left. They do. They've got the plant. Oh, it's going to be close, though. It's going to be dirty close. Get it in, and they do. Three versus two on this one. A couple of players hurt. Who cars on the back foot? Two players, very low. Toxins no real utility to use other than state bites for Jaff as well for post plant, so they have to fight. Nil and Dabbit, two very influential players this game. But Riyad has got them both covered with one simple spray down. One team only differentiates overtime, and Hukar's winning this entire thing.
what a comeback this has been. I think Hukar has still have a timeout themselves to use. Just give them a moment. Might as well use it now. But it also gives Formulation Gaming a chance to cook up a strategy. They're one away from having a reckoning. Couple away from, from this fury. Lockdown. And that round a couple of times ago where Hukar is like used to thrash. When it looked kind of done at that point. Into the Darth, these big ultimates to boot here. The Antoine Drift has been pretty useful for Formulation Gaming so far. It's given them a lot of information on these attacks. Deep Lurks as well have come off the back of it. And it will be an able straight out of the bat here for Riyadh. Finding some placement of utility already. Who guys are respecting it? They make it of the area. The Formulation are going to move on the, in response. If Fandom's come for this late bus route Lurk as well, it's going all the way around it to defend the spawn. Maybe she's found the gap again! How does he keep on doing that? You would have thought Formulation would have adapted by now. But the Father and Riyadh are not going to give up just yet. Hukar is moving in. It's 3v3, but Lethal not with the best weapon in the situation. It's an Operator, and Nilla losing his life. He's been the Clutchmeister of today's games. Lethal putting the Operator to the test, but Fardon is on the <laughs> flank. Gets the superhero landing, and it's weak. An overtime game to start off this series. Uh, like I said, if we got to this point, Formulation 12-8 down to bring it to OT. I just feel a formulation of all of the momentum in their favor. Again, just of individual moments. And the IGL of Jaff just being able to build up the players. Riyadh on the Yoru, he got called a ranked Yoru player in the last series he played on this map by only Finns. Now he's actually making it work and he's showing up so clutch in the big games for Formulation. And Ryan, I think the tides have changed on this because we're talking about a Formulation gaming who's got in a four round winning streak. The momentum is definitely in their favor. Now they've gone onto the defense though. Yeah, and how many times have we seen who cars like lead go into overtime and lose? Oh my god, too many times. One of the reasons why they are in the, uh, the bottom side of the table of this regular season. Because let's be fair, they haven't brutally lost too many maps. Most of them have been really close affairs. Yeah, I mean, for a team that hasn't picked up a series at all, it hasn't looked, like, completely tragic. There's definitely moments of brilliance there for Hukars, but maybe a little bit inexperienced here. And also just, like, the level of Polaris, especially with a lot of unsigned teams, means that just the talent that is available is crazy good. Sunshine can't quite square up his shot. Formulation start off overtime with an advantage, having more players than their opponents. But look at the left-hand side of the screen. nilla has gone oh, for a no. look. He's going to try and go all the way around, and they're crunching in on Jaff, but it doesn't matter. Jaff really want to take, really want to wants to take Fukas down here, and he shows us exactly why. Three kills, and they know exactly where Nilla is. There's no playing games. A Viper's Pit will be dropped. And for the first time in this map, it's going to be Formulation's turn to be on map point. Jeff just holding on. Viper's been to a good position. Didn't see it that much on the defense, but probably for moments like this, they can just be the left. end of the line for Nile. No time to really plan. Jeff's going to push him down to That's get the 4K. It. And leading his team off the brink of losing only, uh, sorry, Hukaz's map pick. Now one round away from taking the opponent's choice and then going to ascend. How poetic would it be if Jaff was the first one to net this comeback, but also be the one to end it? How poetic would that be indeed? We've criticized, we memed about him, we joked about him. This has not been his year. This has not been his season. But Redemption's got to start from somewhere, and it might as well be this map, be this series. All five players for Formulation leaning towards B. It is just Nile, no support from the Gecko this time, holding on to this position. Recondad's going to come in, forces him off the angle, and this rotation from Hukaz is instant. Yeah. Both teams quick with it. No messing around. Riyadh flashing out. But Nilla Spray is good! Doubles up. 
Both Vipers taking matters to their own hands, and all of a sudden, Formulation's attack has crippled. Jab going aggressive. That's one shot. Not quite the second due to the crouch of Sunshine. And we're right back to square one. We're going to a second round of overtime. Yeah, Nile just in a little bit of a pocket to play from. I think the Viper wall goes down on attack. The harbor wall is up, and I guess Formulation assumed that that space is still there for free. I've been a couple of moments, I think, where these harbor walls from Semburn, not necessarily him, but maybe just like the team not realizing that certain positions are given up and stuff, right? Other times that the harbor wall has just given Hukar's positions to just take easy fights of formulation aren't expecting. Dream big, make it happen. Streak rounds at least has ended with Hukar's being able to pick up one in the last six. Simburn is certainly one of the most aggressive harbor players I've seen. It does seem like it. Likes uh, being quite far forward with his team. Hasn't been unassisted though. Three players to the defense. Aldrone, I think, spots only one. It's a key for Simburn to break like it before it gives up the position of the Euro. Not really seen formulation on their defense play from screens a lot. So if Riyad just doesn't get cleared, Yukaz might walk out into his crossfire and not really expect to be fighting. And round the world we go. Around the world, around... Sorry. <laughs> Hukaz, I've got the, the chance here. They've stopped formulation from closing out this map, but remember, this is their own map here. Cassent. They can't really rely on that one. It's a pretty darn strong pick for formulation. Wingman. 30 seconds left. Not past Jaff, but it's a fake. There was no spike on that. But it seems that formulation aren't budging. They've stuck towards the defense of this A side. Adam wasn't even prepared to peek, playing it super safe. And there's Riyad, he was there all day. Managing to at least get one before he gets back, but he is traded by Sunshine. Unwind the skirmishes. Who causes the team that comes out on top? Again, winning out on these trades. And there's nothing Formulation can do. It took them a while, but they will be getting on another map point here. Unless Jaff will do it again for his team. He's done it before, but he's got to read so many different positions. There's one right underneath him. Sunshine to his right. Another to his left, but it's David to his feet. That gets the job done. Who cars again on map point on their own map pick. Oh, good lord. Formulation had to just go on a hot streak but as soon as it ends it might come crashing down nobody likes a fake comeback but it does provide overtime another timeout for formulation gaming to talk about this round of what they want to do i mean what would anyone do it feels like this is a complete call for stay silent for a bit chill like you can't be in your right headspace for this match it's been so back and forth so filled with skirmishes you've got to just be able to calm down chill out and play the game out like you know how to play it yeah it's quite literally probably just calling a strategy like let's do what we usually do in a pistol but with a full buy it's pretty much a time to like just cook up a strategy which is a bit of formulation being able to do but just to make sure that the i's are dotted and t's are crossed because we've seen way too much of Formulation trying to just do too much with these plays around the map. And it costed them greatly. I think one of the things that they can certainly aim for, try and stop Sunshine. Just get rid of some of that utility in mid. Because Hukas are prone to over-rotating, but if they've got Sunshine holding down mid, it's such a good area of the map. It's the anchor that keeps this team together. The question is, can Jaff save the day again? He's been at the saving grace. He's been the answer every single time he's been needed. Aldron's heard behind his cascade, so David's doing everything he can to just avoid it. Well, formulation has crept up onto the B site quite a bit, but that's not where Hukas' defense is. It's only David. Maybe to sidestep the recon, doing some noise in the meantime. Shock dart to his feet. No more dash. Indeed. Hinders his confidence. Drops back. Respects it.
Jeff really wanted to just bait out Sunshine to peak, but he's been incredibly disciplined. David shown presence with the operator taking a shot. But hey, no had such a good idea to move into that B site, but they just didn't move into it. Thought about it a little bit too long. And now we're heading where most of the defenses of Hukas is lies. I think they just assume that Hukas is rotated, but they've shown too much and it's clearly obvious that they're going B. They've gained no info of it though. It's just left. on a hunch. It's pulled Sunshine away from mid, but yeah, this is effectively a four versus three. And Riyad's on the other oh. side of the map. He is. And it's been a while he's been on the other side of the map, but he hasn't called his team to rotate, but it's all too late right now. Miller's turning it all around. This is the round that ends it all for Hukas on their own map pick. Right, Riyad is as blind as a bat. And to that, he will splat. Hukas win their first map of the series. God, it took them long, but they managed to close it out. I mean, yeah, it was pretty much down on top the whole way through, like formulation, doing what a lot of teams have done against two cars, come back, go to overtime, but unfortunately weren't able to win. Luckily for uh, Formulation Gaming, they have Ascent coming up at the very least, so there's a chance to bring this to a full free mapper, but at least two cars showing why they pretty much want to be fighting him for clips and some of the promise that this team has had pretty much since day one. That is very true. They are one map away from ending their loss streak. One map away. There's two maps left. One of them can be it. Let's see if they can do it. We'll be finding out right after this.
Welcome back everyone, this is the second time in the season who cars have found themselves in this position having won the first map in the series, Icebox, first time was against Sweet and Sour a few weeks ago, now in the most critical moment honestly, they have found themselves in that position once again, it was a hard fought victory, probably cl could have closed out a lot earlier, but they managed to get it done in the end, and I was a bit worried, you know, if, if they had lost that overtime, I'm not seeing Hukar's winning this series, I'm not seeing them go into a third map, oh, but absolutely. they have managed to do it. Yeah, absolutely not, I, I don't think they could have, could have gone in a sense and actually win that. I mean, Jaff made sure that Formulation Gaming gave them their best in that map, insane performance. Two 4Ks, one 5K, one, one, one versus four situation which turned uh, the momentum completely upside down. Who cars? They struggled. They struggled to close it down. They struggled to keep the momentum. A lot of mistakes here and there, but in the end, they got the map win, finally, and they have a chance for this series. Yeah, I mean, that's the important part, isn't it? It's just keeping that hope alive at this point. It was very, very hard fought from several members in that server there, and Hukar's definitely put up a good fight there. Formulation Gaming, as much as Jaff did not want to let that happen with several insane rounds, uh, didn't quite get it over that finish line. I'm sure they're still pretty happy with their performance on that map. They won't be too upset with the fact that they lost it. Uh, now it's just about trying to get over to that third map and get things done. Look, I mean, so many things about that we could talk about on end in terms of misplays, but yeah. let's have a quick kind of uh, look over some of the positives of that one. We have a few rounds that we wanted to highlight. I think we wanted to start out with round six here, and, and there were definitely highlights for both teams as we started. Who cars started off really confidently? Yeah, absolutely. I think it looked really, really well until that one versus four situation came, but who cars, they really looked really solid in terms of getting the side, in terms of holding down the side, and this is one of the retake attempts. They were tr trying to do a five versus five re retake, on the side of formulation gaming but look at the utility here a lot of utility and when you have that gecko you just need to force the plant down hold down your positions put that utility right there and who cars they absolutely did that they cleared the site they, they weren't 
gonna let formulation gaming take that retake especially on the five versus five situation when they have so much utility they actually won their duels quite often there as well and that gecko composition it kind of heavily relies especially on attack that you get the spike down but then you get into your positions and use utility obviously you have viper you have gecko killjoy a lot of utility even solva shock dodge right there so you yeah. should be able to delay that retake so much longer and that that's exactly what they did things did start going wrong for them a little later though we'll take a look a couple of rounds later here where i feel like jaff just started taking matters into his own hands but overall i think the response from formulation gaming was very good i mean even past this round they brought it back to a five seven half here absolutely this was complete a turnaround i think right before this they had a timeout they had an eco round right after the timeout it didn't quite go to the plan Four versus one situation for who cars, but Jaff is like, this is my time to shine. Gets those first two entries. Absolutely huge. Take a look at that positioning. <laughs> <laughs> Jaff just winning all of the duels. Insane yeah. performance from uh, from Jaff here. And like I said, huge mistakes from who cars where Jaff were able to ca uh, capitalize off of that. And the second round that they were able to get on board was so crucial for them to get those five rounds in this defensive half and actually bring this to overtime. Yeah, and we can, uh, after that, run straight into... Watch the start of it again, but we'll uh, go straight into round 22, where, I mean, for me, it was really just kind of... This was after, I feel like, Hukas had already had a couple of attempts to bring it back, but this one specifically, there was... It, like, I think it just accentuates the fact that there were just a lot of tiny little misplays from Hukas that gave formulation yeah. enough openings, and I think... You know, that's one of the real positives that you can get on the side of formulation here is that they took advantage of every single little thing that Hukas did wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that when it comes to Ascent, you have to account that for uh, formulation gaming, who's really strong on that map. If you see them punishing those mistakes on Icebox already so much, well, if we go or when we go to ascend where they are really really strong that's gonna pay them a lot of dividends and who cars has to take care of that but you were talking about that uh upcoming round as well round 23 i think it was a uh, it was a beautiful round maybe a little bit overcooked for the side of formulation yeah. gaming right before this like a lot of overcooking they lost a lot of rounds and who cars got that 12th round but i think this was really good uh overall and and in the end it was quite closely managed round right yeah i think here's the thing right while it was not a great start to the round obviously they got those kills but then david came back had took that space that they had kind of left their players in they were able to just really slow it down grab that spike back keep their heads cool and get on site just in time to get the plant and i think you know this is the sign of a team with a lot of potential in formulation gaming where they're able to just you know think about things properly you know you don't get caught up in the moment that you are in you're actually thinking about how to finish out this round as soon as you are in that disadvantageous position you're like okay so how do we get out of this hole how do how, how do we do this and it worked they got them into overtime Hukas still just about had the edge on that one. And it kind of that's what you expect. You know, Hukas did uh, pick that map. It is their map. It's their home ground. It's the only map so far that they've got to win on. They've got two now. We go to Ascent. I'm expecting this to go to three maps, but Hukas might have a bit of momentum after that. They might, but I, I think, honestly, Formulation Gaming, the momentum that Hukas got at, uh, at the beginning up at 6-1, I think, was... Formulation game yeah. shut down that momentum. I think it was kind of back and forth. Yeah, you won the map. You cannot be too confident yeah, about exactly. Ascent when you're who cars because that map was almost slipping away. Now that we go to Ascent, what is going to happen when the enemy knows knows the map better? Obviously, you have played the map as well multiple, yeah. multiple times. But like Jeff said uh, in the interview, it feels like most of the time they make the right decision. And Jeff said Ascent is definitely one of uh, his better maps. So I'm excited to see what is gonna happen there because honestly who cars they have played decently against only yeah. they they got to ot 12 and 14 i think was in ascent but they haven't played after that do they switch up the composition like this uh, switch up in icebox do they bring up something new here i mean i made the gecko prediction in, in icebox do, uh, should i should i go for something here as well maybe gecko race fade viper 
Yeah, all of the above. Let's just go. <laughs> let's just go all new picks. So we try something completely different. I mean, yeah, they they played the first time they played it. They played the kind of normal ascent comp that we've seen for the last two years with the uh, the KO and the Sova, yeah. and then you've got uh, Omen Killjoy Jet going on. Um, and yeah, I, since then it's just been a float map for them. They haven't picked it, they haven't banned it, they haven't really done anything with it. And I, that makes sense. It's kind of the everything map. Nobody really dislikes it particularly, apart from Apex, apparently. Um, and, and yeah, no, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do have something good on it, but I don't think it's going to be anything special. I don't think they're going to change anything too much. The change I was a little worried about, obviously, doing something in the last week. There's no, you know, reason not to do it because there's no stakes uh, for you in, in, in losing the game. But, uh, you know, usually when somebody changes their composition right uh, within a week of their last game, uh, things go slightly wrong. You know, you're, you're used to this different play style. You try something new. The other team is able to take advantage of it, uh, the small inconsistencies you have. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't hate seeing something new here, but at the same time, I think... This is just kind of let's let it wash over us and go to map three if it doesn't go well. Yeah, I, I could see that definitely happening. Uh, one thing I, I think is really good for formation gaming that who cars kind of lacks uh, in this map is that Sentinel or rather Cypher. Formation gaming has that Cypher there, which I think is really so much better than Killjoy in Ascent. Obviously, it's player preference, uh, it's team team preference. You have that Killjoy lockdown that can cover whole sides, so you can take that side control with that. But how many times are you going to be able to use that when you have Sova on the other side, you might have some uh, flanks coming through. You cannot maybe use that so often. And I think the Cypher locking down the sides is so much more prominent here. We actually oh, do see the Gecko. Oh my god, okay. They just love Gecko. Okay. There you go. Okay. I mean, yeah. Lethal Gekko actually did KO. well with that Gecko on Icebox, so I, I like to see that. I like to see Fair that. Fair enough. I mean, you know, yeah. that's not, you know, that's not groundbreaking. I think you know, swapping out a KO for a Gecko, absolutely it works, right? There's no real difference in terms of uh, the amount of... You've got a little less recon. That, that's basically it. You've got more flash, yeah. kind of less recon, so a little more aggressive, I would say. Uh, for formulation gaming, nothing groundbreaking there either. That is basically the comp that everyone plays with a Cypher, which it also works. <laughs> so there is uh, nothing completely out of the ordinary here. Just a, a little adaptation for both teams. Yeah, I think it was Paper Rex in Masters who actually picked up this Gecko, but they switched up their composition completely. Yeah, exactly. It was like Fade, Viper, yeah. Omen and Race, but right here it's just a replacement for KO and I mean if you're more comfortable with that I, yep. I think it's perfectly fine. Gecko is like kind of switch up for, for that KO but one thing I'm worried about for who cars they don't have that KO for the Cypher so who's gonna break that utility? It has to be the soul but you have to be yep. so on top of your game with the Cypher utility with the trips because that's gonna be in the ba uh, pain in your back if you don't break the, uh, those trips. We'll see what their plan is for it. We're going to head over to Ascent now. Let's see if Hukars can close this one out in two, or if we'll go to three. Take it away, Ryan and Pavlos. Thank you very much, Twiggy and MP. Yeah, there's going to be an action-packed one because Hukars have got a chance to get the first series of this tournament and formulation. They've got a chance to stop that all from happening, right, and redeem themselves at the end of this stage. Ascent, Ryan, what are our impressions before getting into the second map of the series? Uh, it seems that um, we've got some audio issues, but we're back again, like we said, Who Cars and Formulation Gaming on the second time around in this series. Formulation Gaming have had a tremendous play on a sense being their strongest map and therefore why they have picked it. But Who Cars, well, we haven't seen too much of them play it. Let's see if they can do uh, something better than we've seen before with the changed comp. Gecko now in play as they do seem to stack up now towards this left hand side on to B. Get shrugged out, ready to just do some initial damage, make their way through as much as they possibly can. And so far, they just want to make sure that they can get all of these positions. Already managed to sneak in and fight in a lot more for mid. It's just a separated Mishu from everybody else. Well, the players that have wrapped around A have now pushed into mid. Jack can hear all the commotion that Dizzy will make him blind, so are unable to shoot back here. Lucas have got the numbers advantage, but they've got the pressure of closing in on this spikes position now. Defeated. 
for the wall bang. Nice kill to actually get onto this. And this flank from Faden could be it's absolutely so everything. For a moment, I thought it'd be taking a bit too long for him to come into play here, but it hasn't been the case. Instead, he's bought enough time for the rest of them to find a different position to the back of the site. Faden only just moving in. Is it on time, though? Wingman to get onto the spike. puggy has been good with the Sheriff shots. Lethal trying to do it and stop them from taking the wingman off the spike, but not quite on time. Puggy, he's been tremendous this pistol round. I mean, that would have been an unbelievable one versus three there from Lethal. In a great position to set up, but just missing the shots on the target. It wasn't necessarily looking at him to begin with. And yeah, this is formulations like stronger map, hasn't been played all that often in comparison to other stuff but the main thing is that teams have been banning it out against them some of these squads that are still in polaris know how scary formulation can be on this map 13-1 against metaspot is the bigger one but recently beating up only fins which you guys lost to in week one in overtime believe it or not So formulation now, moving towards this A site, in too short, there's no one there to defend, <laughs> although you can see some cross-site utility, cross-map cross -map utility rather, to obscure the potential of there being a defender nearby. But it'll be an easy cross for formulation, who cars have made the wrong call this one, it was a gamble, you've got to take those from time to time, especially on pistol rounds. But yeah, site taking over, no issue whatsoever. But you need to keep your eye out on Semba here. I mean, it was a late leg that did so much for formulation in the last round alone. This time, however, the KO playing very aggressively, forward facing from the bigger buy, but two of those are rifles. You need to be really careful with keeping these guns as much as you possibly can going into this bonus. Mish is looking for the lurk, though. The Semba's a little bit quicker to that. Hukar's were waiting for it. Formulation have done this twice now, so it shouldn't be catching Hukar's off guard for now. But, yeah, they're not willing to give alt orbs to their opponents. They're just going to wait and see if they're going to get pushed. So at least they can have strength in numbers if such a crunch does commence. But no, no orbs to be given. And the second round of formulation, plain and simple. Only one player really from the Hukar side found any interaction that one. Yeah, Hukas all wanted to go down, get that full buy in for round three and not give any ultimate orbs up for formulation. Because they've been really effective in using them. I think this is one of the maps, especially where, like, again, a bit of maybe overcooking for formulation in the past, but this has been one of those cases and one of those areas where the mid rounds, the quick adjustments have been almost pretty much perfect on attack. Yeah. So it should be some of the who cars are expecting, and just this throw-in of Gecko, it's incredibly unorthodox. I catch the formulation giving out. That's fair. But how hard is it to overcook on a set? It's one of the simple maps. You, uh... There's not many places where formulation can be the enemies of their own mind. But for now, cross through mid, onto the other side. That's where David's holding out. He's lost a lot of health early. Surprised too, so he can't dash out. Good flash. And Riyad gets first blood. One player remaining to the defense of this A site, but not challenged yet. He's got the read. Yes, I'm sure I'm re clearing this. It's a good shot to get that information. And all of the other players are Hukas stacking up on that B site, ready to go and fight. Very smart from Hukas to stick nearby. Lambo in mid means that they're going to know if it's a split two. But it's looking like Formulation are going to go through all in from B main. Even the place where the recon that's going to come in. Watched by the Killjoy. Nilay's ready and waiting. Yeah, Paranoia has found impact. Well, the utility has stopped going Formulation back. from pushing in. So they've decided to go all the way towards the A site. Realize with so much thrown at them, there's got to be a lot of defensive presence. So... They're trying to make the call, but Hukars are quick on their feet as well. Sunshine finding himself into short soon enough. Farden able to take him down. And Hukars aren't, aren't allowing formulation to cross, but it's the, it's the attacking side that is demanding respect right now. So the spike will be going down, and it's Mishu to deal with two low players and one fully Odin uh, stocked up player, Puggy. But I don't think it's going to be happening this time. He's going to run away and save that big gun.
Yeah, it's so risky for formulation to be making that rotation, but the fact that they did it all together, who cars one after the other, trying to be the stall, trying to make sure that this stack doesn't have enough time, and they just ended up being really an obstacle for formulation to push aside. And in the end, dealt with it nicely. Like, not really that much damage done from who cars and formulation can confirm the bonus and keep this map pick of theirs working. Grand start for formulation. Really good stuff. Especially after a disappointing icebox, right? I think I think there were many moments we can scratch our heads about with that map. That's all formulation really need as well is to just keep that momentum in their favor because it was who cars that started off hot on icebox. For who cars here, it's like pretty much week one was the only time that you've actually played this map as an official. Ever since, it's been sort of awkwardly avoided by most teams. It's only formulation that have been keen on consistently picking it. Well, formulation now starting to move towards this A site. It's what they've tried to do multiple times, but Misha's the only player with a gun from the Hukar side. And he might be at the right spot to get the first kill. We're looking to go for a second. His wall banks doing some damage, but not quite enough for finishes. Only gun that they've kept. Everybody else on lower buys and Simburn picking apart. Thriving situations of formulation gaming like to do, but this time after just putting out the feelers across the map, everybody else is gonna group up. And there's no way they're gonna check this right hand side. Lethal. How much can you find? Oh, they don't actually I check it! Exactly it could have potentially been a double kill, given how low Semba is right now. But it cleaned up by Nilla. Two versus two. Gun still in the hands of Mishu and Sunshine with the possibility of picking one up himself. 30 seconds so left. much left in the main choke. Baden's not on site, it's just Jaff playing alone here. Has a paranoia, has a smoke. Sit up a warm way on stairs. Barton is just going to wait. He can hear all the movement. He'll just be a late lurk. All Jaff has to do is buy time. They're not expecting him to be here at all from the looks. No. You'll never expect this. You'll expect the two players trying to play together. But now Sunshine's realized, wait, where did my teammate die from? Well, the flash will come out and the follow-up will come through as well. Formulation unfolded so far on the attacking side of Ascent. Yeah, a bit dicey there. Hukar's doing a little bit more damage. Have another full buy to work with and a frash too. One of the big things of playing Gecko is just farming these ultimates up fairly quickly. Maybe not as effective as a null command might be, but just something a little bit different that Formulation Gaming might not be used to. Could be one of the things to pull a map that Formulation have been terrified, not only in Polaris, but in the qualifiers to get here too. One of FMG's better maps. David hasn't really been, uh, been uh, pressured too much in mid. Hasn't really been a point of contention. Instead, it's short again. Seems to be the short simulator today, but with different executions every single time. And with different setups as well. Nilla holding it out with his utility. Together with Sunshine right beneath them. It's a good lineup. That pays dividends. Finally, Hukas have got themselves the advantage. Can they turn it out to be a victory, though? Hunter's Fury being thrown out, and Jaffa's gone all the way around. The Hunter's Fury is caused a so lot of pressure to them with a spray down. He can potentially pick up a second. Sunshine is live, but somehow still alive. Jaff cleans it up. No issue. So Formulation's still in the fight, but they need to do a lot of work to pick up the spike again. If they do get a kill, though, they have from the shadows. Jaff has his ultimate, so he's able to pick up the spike, potentially. But it all requires Hukas to overextend and give him one more kill. Is Puggy going towards Garage to see if the old orb is available there? I don't think so. He's just trying to wrap seconds. around. Maybe if he can pull the attention left. away for Jaff for a second. Hmm. But even if they do get the kill and head towards this B site, there's also an issue as a guarantee. 19 seconds. They've got to act quickly. That was covering that angle, and he's quick to it. Jaff, 1v3, 12 seconds. 
and Lethal has got that covered with the Operator, who cars with their first route in Ascent. Now we're talking. Don't jinx it. Cost the Gecko Dance, I know exactly what he's doing. Third person observer might be nice there, but for who cars, yeah, the first round to pick up after losing the full buy against the bonus. Very nice and haven't been required to use an awful lot. In fact, formulation also throughout the Huntless Fury, trying to fight for Tree a little bit more to give David a bit more, uh, sorry, Riyadh some space to fight, instantly shut down. Who cares pretty much after area of the map on lock. And actually dedicating a lot of Killjoy utility over there consistently. Was it Nana Swarm last time, the alarm bot? Not playing it on the B side at all, or actually trying to fight for Tree with the Killjoy util more. Switch your pace for formulation though this time around as they do move into mid. While the bots will trigger Timmy the turret. And uh, right back at them as well. Who cars now have got question marks in mid? That's what formulation wanted to achieve. But who cars aren't budging? They're chilling. Still got that alarm bot to play off. And really, if you formulation, you've seen the turret there, which is a bit different. You're either expecting that alarm bot to be in B main or over towards tree, which with a minute on the clock, it's good to clear, get that nano, nano swarm out. Then you can reset wherever you want to. But Sunshine's got a plan. Ooh, Paranoia is activated. But Riyadh is able to rip Sunshine from existence. Early advantage for formulation, not so early, given it's a 45 seconds. Here. But Jaffa's got the line on David. Looking to smoke it out, and it's good timing too. Try to actually watch that aiming too. Ooh. He got spotted. And Riyadh is able to pick up that kill. Still one defender to the speed site as rotations are coming in, but formulation are taking a lot of time due to the delay from the nano swarms. How oh, do they the make this work? So good. But, and now onto the site. Mishu defending. Can he buy the time for his team? Formulation. Two of them drop onto site. Two collected as well. Puggy able to clean it up. Vanilla is right on the case. It's a one versus two. And Puggy hasn't been able to get the spike down yet. Seven seconds remaining. And the thrash basically signs the end of this round. Who cars? It was a rough start for them this round. But they're able to close it out in their favor, nevertheless. I was really worried about formulation going for the execute because they were trying to go out of B. They didn't have the smoke for CT. Just a really clutch cage that came in from Semba to just enable him onto the site, but it was still a solid hold for who cars. Great play from Mishu in backside. And just again, more of a fight up here. Formulation still having money, but only just half armor now. No command used from Farden. And now they don't really have those big ultimates to enable them. Playing the Cypher, you don't have a lockdown either to go for an execute. Free fire here from Mishu. Doesn't find any damage. Maybe a little bit on December, but it's David to pick him up. Swiftly as that. Who cuts with the advantage? Wait, Jaff. What? That was from the shadows used to the back. Oh, he fights a kill already. That's a good paranoia, but Riyadh is the one to clean it up. And Mishu at the back of sight. Somehow, a formulation are pretty darn good at causing chaos. On the previous map, it was Who that came out on top and prevailed in such chaos. But this time, Jaff. Has got it covered for his team. Spike can go down. And it's a 2v2. He's an agent of chaos, isn't he? Just getting into those positions. Flank is good, and Nile, not contested, is able to put this lockdown in, which is going to force formulation off of the site. And the cross is going to be watched from Lethal, who just switched off for a split second. Wow, you never expect Jaff to take up these positions, but that's exactly why he takes them. And he wins time after time. And formulation are back in their winning ways. Super close in the end. Like, who cares? The adjustment was really good. But Mishu maybe just not expecting Jaff to be that close. Single-handedly, the IGL just finding space for his team. And even with, like, the lockdown, Lethal's just watching the cross as a smoke. Really, maybe should have been expecting the players to be pushing him in that spot, right? It just wasn't expecting a fight then and there. Bladestorm is for him, for David, but everybody else to full visor. Sunshine really struggling to find any kills through the smoke there, but he's also given up his position, and that's why he's found bullets to the feet. Gonna hinder him a little bit. Just lethal with first blood. It's these weird skirmishes, man. Like, you never know in which direction they'll go. It's always a 50 50, but Hukar's looking to change up this, this pace and put fate in their own hands, and it's worked out. It's interrupted the spike plant, and FMG are locked out of the A site. This pincer could be really nice for Simba, and if he can get this kill onto a low Sunshine, no Sunshine wins that fight easily! Mega quick to react! 
And Puggy's left to himself, fully telegraphed position. He's got to drop back here. Economical decision to make as he has got to drop back and save the gun for the next one. Is he going to flank all the way around? Well, no, is... he's just going to leave. Nele is far enough away from the alarm bot that it's not going to catch them. That's true. So at the very least, like, saving the gun would be good because of the money for formulation, but it does seem like he is trying to go for at least a play. Standing at least ahead. to see what kind of opening they can get. Oh, he's gone all the way around, actually, he has. Maybe he's dropped that. They don't expect it at all. They don't? No oh, trying to go for the trigger doesn't play, but, but realizes not enough time. 28 HP, 14 seconds. It's not looking good. Quite the, act, the contrary, actually. It's, uh, it's looking pretty bleak. Eight seconds. And he's got no idea where Sunshine is. He can hear his footsteps behind him. But Mishu is on the side to stop him from doing any other damage. And, uh, yeah. Life lost. And Hukar's on the board once again. Fantastic, like, attempt, I suppose, to try and go in for the flank. The Hukar's just shutting that down straight away with the fights. Formulation calling a timeout. Have been like good moments after timeouts for formulation at least. So at least there's some element of being able to fix a part of the play and sort of work with it. But right now, Hukar's at least playing back a little bit more. I wonder what's going on through Formulation Gaming's head right now. Because let's be fair, this this game has been quite chaotic. There's a lot of back, there's a lot of back and forth. There are a lot of moments that are down to 50-50 moments. Whoever's quicker to react, like, do they want to slow down the the game? Do they want to make it more chaotic? Like, I don't want to be there making this decision right now. I think with the gecko, like, you have got more freedom to make some plays, stuff you don't need to worry about as much on your attack. But honestly, it is just. Let's not feel like we have the pressure on us. It's our map pick. Five rounds on attack is solid enough for most teams to go on and win. Like we picked up the pistol, we got the bonus. If we can just get one more and just keep eking away at the money because for who cares despite winning the last one. Money's tight for them. Bladestorm even gonna be forced up from Riyadh. Really tight between these two now. It is. How in mid they go, Riyad comes out on top with the blades. That is tremendous work from Riyad, and he keeps on giving. Sunshine trying to draw it all back up, and he's actually done quite some work because it's a 2v2, but Formulation have found space towards the B site. Look at the movement, though, from Semba. He's going into spawn, and he might be collecting Sunshine. That's exactly what he does. And Nilla is hating that he left his teammate uh, out to dry in that final moment. Very quick, big battle in mid. Nile 70 HP doesn't have any other utility to work with. It's all still on site, so it's not even been recalled. Just to out to out aim these players. Oh, oh, oh good free fire. Some could have lost his life there. But there's also a one way. Good delay. Walking in. Oh, it could have been a lineup. Both players barely alive by the end of that fight. But they're going to the toe. They're just switching rounds. This is anyone's game. Even now, like formulation, every little round that they've had has just been. It was blitzing at the start, four rounds in. Now, every little one that they've won has had to be brutally handled. Just becoming a bit of a slog fest for both sides at this point. End of a stage. Relegation already happening for both sides. A chance to play back at least. That was ultra aggressive. Good grenade to his feet to keep him out of harm's way. It's a combination shot of a warbang from David and a shock top that killed off Farden. It's just all so that surprisingly, he should have with first blood. It's not in a great place to pick it up, though, so it is just still mostly pistols all rotating around to A on all of this space. Gathered up. Semba's found a great bit of pocket of space, but he has to back up now. Doesn't want to give away a gun if he can help it. Sunshine was lurking there the whole time. Stops the plan for a second, but that's all he's able to do. Semba sticking behind. Will always be a thorn for who cars here, as they always have to keep an eye out on the back line. Recon broken. It is accurate with it. Still got the numbers advantage, but how much damage can they find? It's an upgrade for Nidler, he's found himself a Vandal. Puggy, 
looking for a closer here on the far end, and he's good for it. Really troubling for Hukas the longer this round goes. It's been a great start for them. A brilliant eco. Vanilla needs a 1v2 with not much time to spare, and he won't be able to get it this time. Formulation, they've gained a sizable lead. It just being able to win out of these Antiquos is going to be so important. Money was very tight for both teams, like round eight, round nine. Just formulation doing enough, but even now, still a couple of players just up to like 1.2k. Operator now in the hands of David, who looks marvelous on Icebox. Here he's bottom fragging for his team. And especially like with the setup for formulation, with how much they're trying to cut noise and find little bits of space, especially lurking. Operator can do a lot, but it is over towards B. That's true. But every positioning. That is not a player that would stick to one position throughout the entire game. Already switched up to mid, but it seems like the fight for, for FMG is this A site. And there's no one in the site itself to defend, so we're doomed for a, a retake scenario yet again. Yeah, who cares? are scrambling for info too. Like they used the Eldra and had the operator up in top mid and then just had to move it again. Here. Like they're moving around so much and they have no information to work with. Other than those little spots of noise towards A main, like you said. And why information is useful is because Mishu also has a Hunter's Fury, so if it can be in position to use it where the take is happening, it could be massively influential for Hukai. Doesn't have to worry about like a lockdown and stuff either. So he can use this Hunter's Fury as a bit more of a play, and with time getting low, stalling the plant could be major with it. Well, FMG have bided their time and now are close to this A site execute, looking for a double sided approach, which will be blocked by a smoke. Peek out through it with the operator, but it's an issue to find first blood, but it's quickly traded right back up. It's two cars that have the advantage, but it's FMG with space control over to this A site. We are trying to get on an aggressive angle. There's the Hunter's Fury. Going more for Sember on the flank? Yeah, it's and sort it's of Sember that gets a kill. Ten seconds left. And 10 seconds remaining. The spike only just now has time to go down. And Riyadh looking to save his teammate's life by pushing even farther forward. Mishu can't do a thing, but Sunshine has got the timing right. He's been able to isolate one of them, but Riyadh, it must have been a misclick because he dashes right into the face of Sunshine, allowing them the clutch, allowing them the round, and closing the gap even further. Chaotic fight, but who cares? It's not only that the Hunter's Fury doesn't really get a ping, but it does put formulation right into this pocket of Last corner. The switch. And then just, you have that flank pushing through garden into short, flanking onto the A site. Just really forced formulation right into a corner and who cares could just bully them from then on out. But again, it's coming down to like one versus one clutches, so it means that the money is consistently tight for both sides. Luckily, it's the last round, and both of them only just have a full bite to work with, as well as a couple of bolts. Cover going. If Hukas can keep close score with Formulation, it might be possible that they do end up winning this round. Formulation has been the favourable side so far this game, though. If pushed in the smoke, Puggy's actually going to go and try and fight this mod. Nilly needs to be careful. Does. He's patient, waiting for Lethal to approach with his judge. Close proximity can do quite a lot. There's a lockdown too, so they're trying to like, well, if he gets a kill, he has a lockdown. It's like formulation, they're trying to preemptively shut it down, but they dashed in right past Riyadh. Jack gets a third. Does he expect another one on the right-hand side? I don't think he does. There's no way you think Semba is lurking in that corner. And it's Semba to end his life. Eight to four, favoring formulation a lot. A, a, a much greater start than what we saw on Icebox from them. So Hukar's now trying to do a little bit more on their attack. I think it was their better side against only Finns earlier on in the, in the league, but that was so long ago it feels like you can't really compare it. I think it was 6 all actually at the half, so at least they're able to do some stuff on attack, but against a team like Formulation that have been incredibly dominant on the defense like literally for them it's like 22 rounds played only lost three for formulations defense so yeah it goes to show like what we were saying about apex's icebox before formulation have a similar run of results on i7 area. Oh, they do. 
<laughs> and it's uh, it's an interesting statistic to see as well, given that formulation haven't had the best of performances generally with the match results. Losing most of their series this tournament, but still having pretty good scores on this map. But the second pistol of this game has already commenced. Jaff in mid, caught off by Lethal. Who cars? Getting this pistol would be the best opportunity for them oh, to the get recon. themselves right back on track. Recon, excellent. David, no more. Equal equilibrium across the board as FMG try to deal with who causes attack. Similar pistol to what we saw against only Fins from Formulation. Very scrappy fight in mid, but who cares? Getting the kills. Who cares? Having the advantage means that they can sort of reset a little bit. Formulation scrambling for information, but the camera and trip in a main might be massive. Just allows formulation to sort of focus more on trade. A knife hasn't got anything, so they are le leaning and rotating yeah. towards B, but at least they still have something to work off. But Fadden might push past it and it might be completely useless. Or it could have come off huge if he got him a pick, but that wouldn't be happening. Wingman set on sight to get the spike down. Who cares? They're in a great position for this post plant. Multiple players, multiple positions, and Mishu wants to play this one aggressive as hell. Lines two bullets up, finds two heads, and it's Hukas right back in pursuit of Formulation score. It's so tricky now. Like, Formulation looking a little bit sloppy there. Like, it was the right idea, I suppose, that came in from Farden to just, like, we need to find something for a player down. I have a bit more chance, I suppose, to gamble. It's a bit more uh, it's a bit more easy to explain yeah but it's just like going past the cypher trip and stuff more unfortunate with timing than like a major mistake but who cares played it perfectly just forces formulation to make gambles and hope for the best yeah and you can't really rely on gambles I mean, it's formulation that's been winning most of them so far this game. Tight fights. B side push. Only one defender. Again, very spread out here from Hukas. Default approach and mission position. It's going to spot out this aggressive maneuver from FMG. This is definitely going to trigger a push onto this B side for Hukas. Yeah, no point fighting for this either. There's just enough bodies. You hit a dash, recon. Lots of stuff to deal with now. He's going to hold the ground, but a Bulldog's going to be given over to Riyadh. And they are pushing right into Puggy that is still on site hiding. Mm, yeah, not for long, though. Lethal stuck behind to find the longer range fight with his outlaw. Everyone is at that one shot body range from this gun at this point. Fardon on the other end, but he's only got a classic. And Hukas have pushed very far forwards, not allowing them to get anywhere close to the site. The formulation, if it's you can get these players as they're leaving the site after the spike goes off. A couple of exit frags could be major, making it a lot easier. The formulation. I mean, they made the right decision. They realize where the bulldog is, so where's the best chance that they'll be winning trades? Well, up against the classic. Spray's not really working out too much. It hasn't really even done too much damage. No, not really. On to the buy round now, though. Enough funny business with the pistol and follow up. This is where the real fight part of uh, Formulation's defense begins. Yeah, and it's also the fact that, like, who cares? Have won on the back of Icebox just off the momentum that they've been able to build up. So, like, winning the bonus here could do uh, a major element for them. Formulation doesn't really matter too much now with both teams being relegated, but losing on Icebox and then losing the Ascent. Going into Eclipse, losing on that map that's been so pivotal for you across a stage. Spike drop. It's a boom yeah, for every team that pride. faces them, yeah. All about pride. Bragging rights, but also redemption. It's more about how they feel with themselves rather than anybody else feeling about them. Knowing that they can do it. And when the time for Eclipse comes, they've got the confidence to stay in Polaris and deal with any other pesky team that's made it through Beacon or Premier. 
dashing in now, all from Tree Fadden's going to meet them head on, but is hit by the power noise, so he has to back off. He still manages to get Nile, but Jaff, the wide peak from Sunshine is enough to just split him apart. And now it's really awkward for Formulation to hold on to, but they're still managing to get Pixie or there. Yes, somehow? Who can't have stayed in the game? Oh, but Riyadh is lightning fast! Little bro, trying to get the spike down. But, unable to do so, as the box is very spray through prone. Lethal brings it back to a 1 2. He's not going to expect a cipher here, surely. He's going to wait for the wingman to come up again to get the spike down. He can't afford to be off his gun. Mollion as well, where he's pretty much going to be playing from, and they're going to expect him in hell. Thrash available. But the moment he uses Thrash, then he'll be exposed to the elements. And Semba, all he needs to do is spray in his approximate direction and formulation. They lost three players in this attack, but they get the win nevertheless and find their hold on this defense. Yeah, plan for Hukas, and like you said, Thrash now available on the side of Lethal. What they're able to do on Icebox as well, right at the start, like to win the pistol, lose the bonus in a pretty like close clutch, and win the next three rounds off the back of it too. So there's still like stuff for Hukas to work with now. I think one of the big issues is just dealing with some of the cipher utility, being aware of where Semben likes to play with it, and they're going for B execute. They've got to be very aware of these kind of camera trip setups. This one's right in the choke. They've got to be. There's also an Odin in play here from Puggy that he's going to try and get some spray across onto the attacking players. Again, no damage found. It seems that these Odins haven't been that influential in this entire game. Mishu spraying in the response. It's so funny. Okay, now it's going to get a lot of information. I don't think it hit David, though. But the call's changing for Hukas to revert and Riyadh has full mid control, so he's going to see this rotation. Not going to get smoked off either by Sunshine, who just peaks. But Riyadh spotted, can't risk any more, he has to get out. For a moment there, I thought it was a back and forth for Hukas. Push and pull, and push again into this B site. Our drone is tremendous in value, again spots out three players. What's the plan for Hukas again? Back off and come in again? Formulation if Pushed up fairly aggressively. Ria, ultra aggressive angle that no one expects. That's one pick already. Formulation doing great so far. But as David tries to bring it back in his team's favor, but Ria is being He's such a nuisance. Somehow still alive. But with 30 seconds remaining, they need to act quickly. Good left. tag on them. And Puggy finds damage through the wall with his Odin. Hukas are still adamant they want to hit this B site. Great positions to be stuck in. Right now, it's just 20 seconds before you can go for an execute. Might be waiting for the recon, but the KO knife's come off cooldown earlier. Might be here to just save, honestly. Ten seconds Everything's been shut down. It's done. This but round, at least. Really felt for Hukas that they weren't sure what kind of call they wanted to make. They backed out of B main after the first KO knife. Sort of sat where, like, Nilly and Sunshine are now. Hoping to cut noise. I thought the Aldrin was going to come through spot nothing and then Hukas were going to go. But two players from Hukas peeked out, sort of gave the game away. Hukas go for the peek, run into two players that have pushed up. It was good from formulation to not really get panicked, give up space. They were holding on to B main for their lives, and even though it, two of the players still went down, they bought so much time for the rest of their team. Well, Thrash on one side still for lethal, but can it be used to their success? Mm -hmm. Riyadh goes ultra aggressive. It's just a trade, though. The trade of the Jets. What does this mean, though, for the rest of Hukas? And move towards this right-hand side. There's a Cypher set up, and just the Cypher. And only being followed up by the KO of Farden. Oh, dear, he's going to spot the barrel, isn't he? And Cyber Sema picks up the pick. Oh. And the, the spray down is good. Nee, good for a double as well. Yeah, some shots had to teleport across the doors. Near enough broken, but it's actually ran over to the other side, so it's a bit of a fake. Two versus three, and Alarm what's going to be spotting for mid. A one yeah. way to play around if this door gets broken by Simba. How do hookers keep this from going haywire? They've got themselves a crossfire. An alarm bot towards heaven. Recon as well. That's going to ping Sunshine, surely. No. In 
Interesting smoke, allowing them to cross over the one way. It's Semba to get both of these picks, and Hukas cannot defend this site for the life of them. Formulation easing up to closing up this map. Really close to it now. Only a couple rounds remain. Eco might be needed for Hukas. Formulation pretty much back in the driving seat, only losing the pistol so far on this defense. And going on with everything else, but really like nice individual stuff that they've been able to kind of work with. And just like Hukas, not quite as compact on the attack as they were on Icebox. Feel a little bit unsure of themselves and how they want to play stuff and formulation. I mean, just with Decipher, the trips, they're just finding so much value. Lucas looking to give mid a go. Trip has to be broken, alerting them of the presence. The only push from formulation is giving them some information of the lack of players in that direction. So they refocus their efforts and holding back market. And potential couple of players in short that could be quick on the pounce if needed. And that's exactly what happens. Paranoia coming through, but Lethal is ready for it. Yep, two players peek out. Lethal's ready to fight. Would have been a big loss as well if Lethal went down. Gecko with the spike right out in the open. Lucas might go into a blind panic at that point to try and get themselves back in a better position. But speaking of which, look at them on attack. Completely oh, yeah. spread out. The Formulation have pushed on both sides as well. Andy and A. Mishu finds Riyadh's push. And Semba has vacated the A site, allowing Hukas to move on in. I think that cage being used might give them some inclination. But it's weird, it's just David on the site over here on his own, and the spike were lethal. Semba cuts them off. This turns this round around completely. Mishu finally wins the fight. At least the spike now has now been brought back into their control. But the fact that Farden is here it's and the joined. Hunter's Jury is throwing at them, it's just weakening them second by second. They've got no idea. Farden is there, but David is lightning quick. And Puggy, with the Odin, has drawn it all right back up. One more shock that remaining. And Mishu's low. Odin v Vandal. Oh, but it's who close. sees who first that will take it. It's Mishu to spot Puggy's head. And Hukas right back in the fight. Yeah, marvellous stuff from Semburn to just be an absolute pain. But it's again like these mid rounds for Hukas that just maybe cost them in the end. Semburn not properly cleared from A main. And that's fine if you've got Hukas, you've got somebody with lethal to run with when he has the spike. He was just too far ahead of everybody else. Luckily, he gets re cleared afterwards. But so much damage still done for Puggy, and it's around for Hukas, but still, money is tight. Formulation picked this up to 12. How much for Hukas to work with? Only these ultimates that are crawling their way to being usable. Missing alarm box. I mean, what Formulation has been doing has been pretty good early on. Gain information, push extremities. They've been quite active on their defense, and one of the reasons why they've been strong on Ascent, because it's also paired up with getting picks. Well, now they've been forced back, forced to respect the presence of Hukas. And again, they don't sit still, they're constantly moving. There's a flash in mid now, trying to gain information on whether anyone's nearby. Riyadh to crest forwards. It's a good timing for it. David's been sprayed upon. Hunter Shuri onto Jaff, trying to TP away. Doesn't get there on time. And this 4v5 favors Hukas, but what do they make with this advantage? Riyadh is on that aggressive angle again and against the low health, David needs to be careful, doesn't have the dash to get out this time, so the spray is a scary one, Riyadh just being mowed down, trying to get a pick, trying to get anything, but it's in fact the other members of Formulation Gaming across the extremities of the map that have found those two kills, three versus three. These rounds are so shaky, so back and forth, nothing solid in it at all, and Semba's given an opportunity to do it himself. He's got the assistance of Puggy, don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, Sambo won't be doing anything. Shocked out trying to close off Dabba's life, not going to be happening either. Ukars, they're on the unrelentless here. They're really wanting to close up this gap. They want this game to go all the way, really. As they, with that number one map that they've collected, they want to secure a second as well and get their first win in Polaris. Well, they're not too far off now. Not too many rounds remaining. I don't know if I can deal with another fake comeback at this rate. <laughs> Is it a fake one, though? I think that's the question we need to ask, Ryan. Is it going to be a fake comeback or a real one?
It's a great test for who cares, but you look at the history of moments like this, the map that they lost in that first week was overtime. And I think it was them coming back onto even instead of having a lead and losing it like they did against like Apina, or potentially like they almost did against Formulation. Well, couple of players spotted with a dagger, Formulation, taking matters to their nice own hands, quite aggressive. He's been insane with those. Oh, but David isn't. Forced to a classic up against the sheriff. He's low in health. Oh my god. Oh no, it's so uncomfortable. What is going on this game? I can't believe what I'm seeing. But it's nearly up against three players. And thankfully for him, at least he's got some sort of weaponry advantage. Formulation not feeling comfortable because it is that lurking killjoy to actually go and get these guns that are in A main. And even then, like, they probably saw the spike earlier on in that fight. Maybe that information was lost with how chaotic of a duel it was across multiple Formulation players. But it is that Killjoy, despite going in a different direction, heading over towards A. Just a camera on B I mean, to get some information there, but it's not going to be needed. If there's anyone to clutch around like this, it's got to be Nilla. Everything's been watched, the door's closed. Left. Have to be like a hitman yeah. run here. Oh, they know. Bot out. Main smoked, huh? Instead of short. Nilla's low on bullets, though. Does he have time to reload? Does he have time to look underneath? Because there's one no. chasing right after him. Feels the pressure. Feels the heat. And formulation. One map away from a triple hit. Formulation can always rely on this. Hukaz would have to do a lot to bring this to OT. Lotus is a decider. Well, it's not been great for either teams, I don't think. But one of them has to come out on top. It's just bragging rights and a bit of respect on the name to at least not be going out bottom out of Polaris for both teams. That's what's on the line. And just who can take a little bit of good morale going into Eclipse, the promotion relegation tournament that these guys have to play with. Alongside Premier teams, for one, which is exciting, but also Beacon squads too. They're in action this weekend. Well, lockdown utilized early. Which provides access to the site for who cars. The thing is, they can't afford any mistakes here, but it's been so back and forth that feels like mistakes are inevitable at this point. They just need to avoid them for a little bit. A 12 to 8 comeback was exactly the one that Formulation were able to perform last time around, at least to get them to overtime, but they couldn't quite close out the match. Can who cars one up them in that regard? Smoke on one end. Jaff, this is a good paranoia lying in wait. He's got his team to break down the wall. They look to cross off the back of it. Sunshine. It instantly deleted off the map. And the lesser weaponry from Hukas doesn't seem to be favoring them at all in these trades. Formulation. Seem eager to close it out right wow. here, right now. Lotus to be our final map and decider. Formulation. Want to deny Hukas their first match win in Polaris. And it looks like we'll have to see if Lotus will be the map to do that. Yeah, good one. Both teams winning on like their map picks. It, it, consistently reliable, I think, for like both Ascent and Icebox for these teams when it comes to their choices, at least for the most part. So going to a third map, we've seen both these teams go the distance in a lot of the series and not being able to win. That's why they're in that relegation dogfight. But at least one of them has to come out on top here. Otherwise, it really is going into promo relo, going into Eclipse with just the worst kind of morale. It really is. It's um, it's a matter of being confident in your abilities. And so far, we've seen a lot of shaky moments, which doesn't make me any confident about any of them. <laughs> it's time for them to prove us wrong, though. Show their resilience on a map like Lotus, the third map and decider of this series. Stay tuned, everybody. We'll be back after this to make sure we see some good solid fire in action.
Searching for some. 
Welcome on back. Formulation aren't going down without a fight. They've brought back that second map. We theorized it might happen. It has happened in the end. And who cars are going to have to try and get their first victory this season on map three? It's, uh, it's a tough situation. Once again, you know, just knocking on that door. And after such a frustrating first map as well, it's probably not feeling great for them. Yeah, absolutely not. Jeff doesn't want to go out without a fight at least three maps and that is also on ascent i mean he obviously said it in an interview i think it was a few weeks back ascent is their most confident map like i said a few times and here we can see it. a lot of control especially on the attacking side on mid they took it multiple times really good splits onto b who cars they couldn't really do anything about that and formulation came in in the end i think they just had the better decisions on that micro level obviously ascent you know how to default that you know how to play the macro on that map and you pretty much know what the enemy team is doing but those quick decisions in the middle rounds is what i think paid dividends for formulation gaming yeah for sure i mean it was a good overall one this is really just one of those uh one of those maps where everybody got involved yeah it's reflected yeah. in the score line there it was not a player going absolutely crazy it was not jaff on map one just dropping 4ks all over the place this is a well formulated haha <laughs> team play from okay. those guys and <laughs> the hookahs did put up a good fight there was a, there was a moment at the start of the uh the second half where we did think for a bit who guys were going to finish it out in two but it does go the way that we kind of expected with formulation gaming being very confident here and despite the fact that who cars really do look good with that gecko uh not quite able to get it over the line yeah and especially lethal i, I re really like how he's doing with that gecko i like how he was playing i think it was the one versus two situation in the end he lost it but waited for that wingman already it seems like he's really familiar with the utility of yeah. gecko and uh, i think when we go to eclipse that's especially what we're gonna see lotus one of the most prominent maps for gecko as well i think so why why change why change i don't think they're gonna change for that but i said i i think it was really tough for who cars to adapt from formulation gaming taking those yeah. mids but there was this one round that was round nine that who cars were able to fight the mid in the end they couldn't quite win out the round but let's check what happens okay who cars they know fmg they have taken mid so many times and that's a five stack against this fmg mid this is really really good trap play onto mid utility broken what Riyadh takes first two picks. That's who cars his mid aggression down. Trades go back and forth. In the end, it's two versus two. But I think this was this was beautiful rounds for, uh, round from who cars actually trying to counter their aggression. In the end, because Semburn gets this timing on the CT, gets that pick. They cannot quite win out the round. But I think that showed already that who cars they have the adaptability here. Mm. They have some trap plays already on ascent, but couldn't quite close it out. It was really close, but just because Riyadh got those insane kills, who cars were not able to win out that round. Yeah, I do think this whole map in general was very much a story of two teams really trying very hard to, you know, like a battle of the minds, like you'd see in like some yeah. kind of chess anime or something like that, <laughs> where it's just kind of, it's like everything was so formulated and it was just like, okay, I'm going to do this because they did this and then countering each other's plays and just trying to really think about what uh, the other team is doing and outplay them, which is a great thing to watch. Hopefully we see some more of that when we go to Lotus. I mean, this is a map where I think both teams are very comfortable here you know very much icebox is who causes map although uh formulation gaming are quite happy on their ascent very much formulation gaming's map i think we're going somewhere where both teams are going to stand a good chance of getting a lot of rounds here yeah i mean in this year formulation gaming has played it four times lost twice won twice who cars they have played it four times as well they lost all of those although we have to mention the losses against only Finns and Swedish Sauer were really close, 11 to 13, 10 to 13. Obviously, the latest losses in week 5 and week 6, six are really dominant from Metisport and NXT, 1 and 13, 2 and 13. So that's something where we have to look like, okay, do we base 
these results off of the latest results or do we just look back as well onto these first two weeks is hukar is actually gonna get really dominated here or do do they have a chance are they gonna switch up the composition because that's something that they have done quite often here mm -hmm. against metisport they completely switched up the composition yes. and i think that that is what didn't quite work out for them for sure i think it was very difficult for them getting used to that fade specifically uh, yeah. on that one and now that they are more used to a gecko i assume that's what they're going to switch over to now uh, I, I i wouldn't doubt that there is going to be a little bit of adaptation in terms of the composition for them and honestly you know the, that, that game against metasport they had just started you know they, they knew that they were now going to be relegated they were up against a difficult opponent anyway and then that game against nxt nxt were kind of on fire and they just change their composition again hopefully this time around now that they're against a team that they can definitely be something will change for them yeah and i i do believe that the gecko would actually be a really good pick mm. especially if formulation gaming keeps up with this composition that they have with the chamber because it's usually a really self-sustained because of the tp but when you go against gecko that dizzy becomes so hard to deal with especially if you are with the tour de force or operator you have to have someone else with you shooting at dizzy so that pulls extra one player towards that chamber side so i think the gecko would be a really good counter in in terms of that i don't I don't think they really think about the counters here, but mm. I, I would see them going with that Gecko, especially because Lethal picked it up on Icebox and Ascent. So I think Lotus would definitely be a map that suits that uh, angle as well. Yeah, for sure. And I think it would, uh, you know, it comes up quite well against, I think Formulation Gaming, if I'm correct, play the, play the Fade comp last time we saw them at the very least. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's just a good way of doing it. There's two different kind of schools of thought when it comes to the initiators uh, on Lotus. It kind of used to be the Breach, and, and then we switched over to being more Gecko-y on that one. And uh, yeah, I think Formulation Gaming runs something that I wouldn't really say is like a well-tested, tried-and-tested comp. They have a chamber on there still, which is a good idea uh but i'm not sure it fully matches up i feel like it's it, it's a similar way you're looking at you know the icebox comps where you see uh the new harbor one coming in and it's kind of just got better wing conditions i think the gecko uh all around has better wing conditions than the fade yeah i, I do believe formulation gaming if they switched up to killjoy this composition would be really meta right now like it would mm. be really uh, really on top of the meta, but with the chamber, it's uh, it's a questionable one because how do you work around that? Are you right. really gonna go go aggressive with the chamber if the gecko is gonna come? How do you counter that? Obviously, you have a lot of firepower in the chamber. You can find those picks. You can find that uh, third force, but Riyadh has to step up because if we look at the game against NXT. Riyadh wasn't stepping up. He was getting countered yeah. quite heavily, 10 and 18. And right here we can see the uh, agent pool on Lotus as well. We do believe that it's going to change for who cars, at least yeah. I, I'd hope so. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they're comfortable with the utility of Gecko at this point. So I, I, it's one of those maps where it would be... Uh, it's definitely more likely, I would say, that you would run a Gecko on this than uh, on Icebox. So I don't see why they wouldn't uh, continue that change on here. And the Fate just isn't really uh, looking all that great for them. So, yeah, I mean, if that's the way they're going... I mean, they might go Fade and Gecko. I don't know, because they were running Fade and Breach before, so that wouldn't be insanely surprising. But I would prefer a double controller for them. Uh, you know, uh, Viper, Omen, and then Gecko, Cypher, Race, something like that would be kind of what I would prefer from them. But yeah. I don't know. Uh, they they seem to be you know testing the waters out uh so we could see what that is and yeah, yeah pretty much exactly that just uh, instead of that cypher you have got a oh well, well actually no not the viper they're running the sober instead of a viper there yeah that's actually interesting pick because usually you want to go either double duelist or double controller in this map at least in this meta it seems like it's the most prominent option but they actually want to go double initiator which is really interesting okay. you put a lot of pressure on the nille being able to control with that killjoy and then again you put a lot of pressure on the lethal and mishu to utilize their uh, cooldown utility that recompile that uh, dizzy to help out david get a lot of good positions a lot of aggressive information and maybe those first entries especially on the attacking side 
Yeah, so sticking with the double initiator, so I assume that's just the play style that they enjoy, going for double initiator, having, uh, you know, very well formulated attacks and being able to do stuff like that, and just kind of like sacrificing a little bit of that Viper utility. We'll see how it works out in-game. We can get right into things, close out this series. Hopefully for Hukars, they can get that win. Take it away, Ryan and Pavlos. I'm already getting a little bit emo emotional here, Ryan. It's the, the last map of, this, of, of the regular season. What are we going to do? It, this has gone so quickly. It's gone so fast. Blinky, you miss it. And yeah, all right. The, fast, the last map of, uh, of the series, last map of the day, and last map of the regular season, a split one of the Northern European Challenger League Polaris. What are your thoughts heading into this one? So for who cars, it's just commit into this gecko a little bit more you like the viper but that's something that like who has been experimenting with seen this map six times across both teams no wins at all no wins the next team Metasport, <laughs> sweet and sour only fin subpoena orchestrary both these teams have been rough on lotus so what are they going to break that guarantee the win formulation gaming keeping the cup the same despite the roster move before and then for who cars, yeah, just going, tried a bit of stuff like Fade. Now going in for the double and yeah. yeah, moving stuff around a lot, but maybe this could be the right comp. Fourth time's maybe. a charm. <laughs> maybe. That's, I'm pretty sure that's not the saying, but it, it, maybe that is for who cars. There's the out, lethal, out of the server. Instantly one for one trade, but that one is coming out up in a lot of these fights. But Jaff will put him to rest because he's had enough of action this one. Mishu, oh, barely doesn't have the timing on that one. So it's still equal on both ends. But the two Formulation Gaming players are isolated, but Jaff doesn't seem to care. He, I think he thrives when playing alone. Nilay's alarm bot also gone off towards A, so he really has no idea where Formulation wants to go with the spike. Hearing the door open, hearing the steps with the spike, Nilly might be able to catch this play off alone. Oh, he, I think Jaff was spike hoping down. that he could See. open the door again or at least go through before the door had closed. So that's the spike on the wrong side of the door. Briad is able to get it. Oh, it is it's ready. towards mound. And opening this door again for Riyad will make a lot of noise. Left. Definitely notifying where he is. I, I think this door has been opened four times this round. I think that might be a he just out. What? <laughs> what was oh he expecting? What, did he expect that, like, Nile won that fight before outside of C? Or that he'd rotate all the way around because the spike was in mound? I don't think Nile had any idea that the spike had actually moved onto the other side of the door. Well, that's an interesting way to start off this game. Yeah. Who cares? get the first one i was convinced that fmg had that after what jaff was able to do yeah nilay plays it super well as well like the alarm bot gets information that there's a lurk up a main main but he hears somebody steps in b and goes surely that player's alone because i know that there's one towards a my alarm bot's just gone off so i can just isolate these fights and yet again formulation just too much stuff happening at once for them to keep on top of Cover feels like who cares who gifted that pistol They were. And you could see the early aggression towards C Long here, but um, no one was found. Therefore, by process of elimination, they can figure out that it's an A site hit. Formulation are given that space. Oh, look how far forward. Did, did Sunshine sneak underneath the seat? Maybe. Jaff, up close and personal, doing some damage on David. I guess Riyad shot to the side of the head to put David nighty night and sleep. Mishu? Somehow, Hukars haven't found a kill this entire round, and they're up against Classics. Now, this would be a topsy-turvy and a half if this happens, He's and Formulation end up winning. There's no way. Jaff has found himself behind. He's found himself an upgrade as well. Mission touches the spike. Toxic screen goes down. Riyad wins his fight. Lethal does turn oh. it right back around. Oh, it's awkward. Wingman out. Who's got his classic out in time? It's Riyad. What on earth is going on? Yeah, this is feeling like we're watching the two bottom teams in the league at this point. Formulation making up at least from the mistake in the last round with just the chaos. Especially for Riyad. And it was like there was no buy-up at all, kind of like you mentioned. No pickups, really. It was just Riyadh 
having the headhunter ability to work with more. Everybody else was kind of on classics and the like. I pinched myself, I felt pain. So I'm not dreaming. You're not dreaming either. If you're watching this, you're wide awake. <laughs> Which is quite a weird game. But hey, weird games tend to be quite entertaining. So we take them. Yeah. We take them. Ob's going to be picked up for Farden. David in this position cleared nicely from Riyadh. Seeing if there was anybody on the other side of the box, but David on the lower bank going for aggressive stuff. Speaking of which, Nelly on top of the box, digging out from Puggy. And now things for formulation are starting to look a little bit more organized for the most part. Still time for it all to go wrong though, of course. Oh, come on. Not not this round. Surely not. I mean, what did it have? Mission on a classic on the A site, fending off against three, five rifles. Yeah. Come on. Let's be fair. Let's be realistic. I think Madness can stop here. Let's put an end to it right now. But Mission's crucially been able to stay alive. Paranoia does spot him, so they're wary of his presence. Seize and paint shells. No kill going to the classics. Normality restored, perhaps? Have we thrown shenanigans out of the window? Maybe for this round. But this uh, allows formulation to gain a, a lead from round three, even they did lose the pistol. Means as well that they're not really playing up for a bonus either. Just a full buy with a good amount of money to stock up on Riyadh, especially. 7.1k. Might consider attack hopping a little bit on this map too, but at this point, just keeping the rifles... Keeping some of this control. Like I said, this has been a really poor map for both sides. And for the attack, it's been rough for formulation. Even worse defense rounds for Hukars. This has been the thing that's been letting Hukars down the most. But it's fine to open things up. Very explosive start from them. Both of the teams trying to contest this area outside of A. And so far, it looks like formulation gaming are demanding a bit of respect here. Sunshine does drop. Where did that kill come from oh that came through mini door and lethal is left to fend off onto this b site he's very deep he's not going to have the assistance of sunshine he has potential for a double kill that is nuts but semba is on a lurk so if he finds an opening formulation they're going to be called to rotate instead they move into b where they find resistance and rotate anyway He's hopped down. I don't know if this is going to be heard. I don't think they're focusing on it at all. But luckily, Semburn is just glued in enough to play off the Prowler at least for a second. One Sunshine remaining. stuck in place. Spike but still very well and truly able to shoot his Bulldog. It's weird to go for that fight whilst your teammates plant in. But a is going to be used for Puggy. No utility to work with. And only hits one. Which he doesn't know. That Mishu is nearby the other player, and Sunshine is really pretty damn quick with it. This one, he's done a stellar job on that Bulldog this round. Four kills to his name. The defuse will be handed over to his teammate to get an extra orb towards that Hunter's Fury. And we're two to two right off the rip. This is a close game as ever. Uh, I want a prediction here, Ryan. What's going to be the score by the end? By oh, the end? I don't <laughs> even want to think about it with just how these rounds have been going. You couldn't even predict the next one with the rate that's playing at. Like, come on, come on. Let, let, let's see if there's any Caster's Curse or Caster's Blessing on this one. Oh, what's, overtime. what's the prediction? It feels Make like just it's going to go to overtime. overtime? Yeah, it's... All right, how many rounds of overtime? I don't know. Hopefully not too many if it's looking like this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to guess two rounds of overtime. 15-13, and it's going to be who cast to win it. Because they've got to get a win in this, uh, in this league. We'll see. Fan of my disagree. Fan of the first blood, though. Oh, doubles up again. And Formulation are actually moving towards this B site. They've uh, spent a lot of uh, effort to draw the attention towards A. Fun eventually drops, so still doable. But four players stacked up together. It's a death ball. And Peggy's looking at Nilla's direction. It's a matter of timing. As soon as the smoke dissipates, Prowler spots him. He's really darn close. So everybody can spray in this direction. Lethal throws down a, the thrash. But Riyadh is there to kill him off. Before the trade does come out, so Formulation are happy to take it single-handedly. They're moving towards the safe site. Don't want to allow Hukas to be in a good position now. for this. And now they're going towards C! 
I don't, like the comms on this must be just crazy. Like, let's go B, let's put fruit away, actually, let's go through this one to see. <laughs> Planted. Very chaotic. With just all the fights, this wolf pack of formulation running around the map is just enough to eat up. A nice shot from Riyadh to TP out and take that fight. Formulation finding the third. Off the back of Farman's ultimate too, which feels like an eternity ago and it was just early this round. I'm going to approach this game in the way of tr spotting what the next... Huh? moment is going to be we're just going to slow it down a bit and try and figure all this out because it might not be such a hard moment there might be 200 iq thoughts behind all of this we'll figure it out together put the haunt very close on c just to clear anybody that might have pushed out from who cars on mound especially against the eco there's a lot of little plays that you can make David, get one kill, get the showstopper. Could easily snowball this 50 into an actual round. Yeah, that would be a hard moment. And we can have a hard moment counter. That'd be cool. Analyst desk, come on, think about that. Just a, just a proposition. It's like but a... Hukar seems to have a pretty good read. Three defenders to this. Yeah. Sees Nate combo's good, but David is a guy there. The oh, there's, 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 there's the opening. There's still one on site, and there's assistance from Hukar. So yeah. Oh, David throws a showstopper right into the face of Farden. It's been a while since I've seen a showstopper like that. Uh, but the way that Formulation Gaming respond is that there's no longer the need to pick up to the A site. Instead, go to the opposite side of the map. No left. shenanigans, no fights. Nothing can go wrong, right? Here to go, Riyadh. On that lurk, because of course, pretty much being the way that this team is playing, and even Jaff's just gonna try and push up aggressively. David's found himself to the back line of Riyadh. One versus two. Doable, very doable. And that will bring things to a three and three standpoint. One above, one low, one right, one left. Yeah, that's uh, that's impossible. That's impossible to deal with. Even through all these shenanigans that we've been seeing so far, this is not a round that we'll be seeing it come to fruition. And it's a 4-2 formulation starting to gain somewhat of a lead. Yeah, you got to think of it from our POV as well. Like, I don't want to be, yeah. like, toxic at all. It's more like, of these teams are relegated. It is just, not even seeding, I don't think. It's just pride generous? of who finishes bottom and who finishes seventh. And so the fact that it's gone to like OT and like a full free mapper is just, it's just hilarious almost. It is, it is. Operator had a chance, chance to get a collateral kill there. But not quite. Nilis can hear a lot of this commotion. He might throw down a lockdown instantly and that's exactly what he does. What do FMG do with this? Do they get onto the site and punt anyway? No. It's dead. Any excuse to fake away. The problem is they haven't like worked up any space on A. This is a night like the oh, stall as well here. Knife out. Yeah. Sunshine is also like pushed up to A main, so they know that nobody's like lurked up off this five wall. Look for Jav. TP was hurt. Lethal's gonna look in this direction. Oh Jav! So close to getting the kill. It's the fandom diff, I guess. Would have loved to have the vandal in that situation. Oh, so Sunshine is gonna die to the pain shows! What is this? You got a very wide flank coming in from Mishu as well with the Hunter's Fury. And then Nile clearing behind where Jaff just was. Just waiting. And Jaff is good for it this time. Bukas are putting to bed, put into bed, one by one. Why is one player saving and Mishu's going in? Last player standing. I mean, Lethal's I one HP. I had an answer for that. Maybe they've closed comms <laughs> for this. Maybe. Yeah, I, I think, look, it's a matter of who cars finishing things off with their pride less touched than uh, than it was before, right? Because coming off of uh, Polaris 
season without a single win has got to hurt. And Hukas has been one of the teams, at least the team name, uh, that has been around the longest. And it has some of the players that have been around the longest in this league. Yeah, so performing like this, it, it doesn't sit right. It's been our ambassador of Danish talent, right? So, like, yeah. if we are in a world where Hukas aren't in the league for Stage 2, it'd be a massive shame for the region, but also for Polaris as a whole. Yeah, we've had Danish teams come and go. We had Vamanos, we had Alliance. Who cars have been here since the beginning and haven't gone anywhere? They've made playoff runs, they've gotten to last few places, and it feels like this time we'll seem to follow the latter. But most definitely. Traveling. I guess everybody was hoping not like this. Still. Oh, nearly. Nearly. Troubled by a lot of utility going in this direction. This should be a simple win by formulation. I know we've had plenty of rounds where Ecos have turned it back in favor of Hukars. I don't think this is one of them, especially with the numbers deficit and the full control that formulation do have. And Riyad has just had enough. Dry peeking close distances with the operator. Nil, come on. Two kills. Looks to give us a bit of a show before he drops and before this round ends. Gonna pad those stats. Why not? He's been at the top of the scoreline, I believe, in every single map he's played so far. Oh, can't do a thing for this one. He's, I mean, he started this round off with a classic, and he's finished it off with a vandal. I tell you one thing: if Formulation end up winning this series, and we don't have Jaff for the interview, I'm going to be very upset. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. If, yeah, that's true. I, w I want Jaff on. We've meaned about him too much. We need to give him a chance to respond. And again, for anybody that has just joined and hasn't seen the pregame, Jaff hasn't won a single match against Hukas, right? And we did make a big deal about it, about it in the pre-show. So he's got a chance to redeem himself. Yeah, he only needs seven more rounds. So far, so good. Tack up for Riyadh. I think 13 and 3 he is at the moment. Just a bit more firepower and fad and almost playing a bit more supportive with some of that utility. But this corner hasn't been played by the horn, so Lethal's able to play in there just with a Guardian. The Gecko Flash and the support's going to come in. It allows a nice pick for Davi too. Shadows traveling. So, fairly decent for Hukar as a start, and they still want to pressure Formulation Gaming out of this angle. Look how far forward Simba's gone. He's got an Operator as well. This is weird. This is well weird. He's got a Vipers Pit. Puggy couldn't find his way out. What can you do with a Viper Spit and an Operator? These steps are going to be heard from Lethal. Only the Wingman and his Wingman, I suppose, of the other three teammates with him pushing through this door. But Timber and pushing up. Takes out space for CT. Good information. And Jaff is kind of fighting this alone if he's not careful. He is. Well, Snake Light to delay them a little bit. Classic to finish the deal on David. A triple pickup by the end, but around for Hukas nevertheless. Yeah, being able to scramble it back a little bit more. Just that fight on A main. The body's in the right place for Hukas. And that's why we're seeing so often uh, Fade Haunts used right in that corner, right by the doorway in A main, near tree. Just to clear out that little position that Lethal was playing in. And especially when you're playing as a gecko, no way to get out. Just gets a kill with the Guardian, flashes, has some nice support from David. And who cares if they can get the first kill? Able to actually just confirm rounds off the back of it, it feels like. Cover going out. When you're playing up against a team like Formulation that just like to rotate and manipulate the map, fine for a is a good shout to play from. But Nele is just out on his own playing on C with these two players going down. Formulation, player advantage heading straight for C again. Yeah, he lost his body early on in the first instance. Stafford opens the door, takes every fight possible, because why not? 
And now the players of Who Cars are very isolated. One on the other side of the Vipers pit. Frosting and one on the down. other. Lethal doubles up. This is a world where Who Cars can actually win this because there's a thrash <laughs> available. Away. Jab. He's away because he wants none of that business. Planted. Any chance to just do a reset and go elsewhere is good. But it does make it a little bit awkward for Riyadh. He's just going to rotate all the way around at this point. Needs to be careful because they know that Jaff likes to push up into this face and this is going to be used. I wonder when the flash will be used. Wingman on the defuse, all quickly shut down. They know where one is. Where's Jaff? That's the question. No one peeks that corner. No one checks it. And Mishu is forced in the 1v2. Oh, Ooh, takes the crossfire! Trying no worries at all! It's oh, close. There might not be any time, though. I don't think it's time. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Barely misses out on that. But let's be fair, there was a crossfire there, and Mishu still lost the fight. I mean, and Mishu still won that fight. Yeah, 0 0.08 in the end. Just enough time. Even the fact that, like, Jav TP'd all the way across towards A. That rotation time sort of meant everything. It was a good attempt of the clutch in the end, the one versus two. Pick the fights nicely. The formulation make it seven. And who cares? It'd be a typical not like this moment to lose out in a series in this position. Still a chance to fight back, but another eco and formulation have been really good against Frifties. So stop it out from Farden to initiate initialize this attack. Spike going down. Looks like Hukar's a little bit slow on the reaction this time around. They've only got a couple of rifles for this, but again, thrash available. Showstopper there. There are facilities for this defense. Both ultimates used simultaneously. Oh, no. Jeff to find the shot onto David, but there's a comeback here from Hukar's as it made the rest of the guns work. But all of the FMG players want to play on the other side of the smoke. Don't want to play with a lineup for a mound. Instead, they're fighting it straight remaining. front and center. And it, eventually, it's a spray from Puggy without being able to see his opponents to get the kills. Last round I mean, they say that the these antiques have been cleared from formulation. That was anything but scrappy, but managed to get it over the line. Ukaz were one of the first teams that we saw play in our first day of this stage and i think it was this map that they were on first very back and forth to begin with almost poetic that it's the final map for them at least in polaris until maybe stage two or at least in the foreseeable future but it was a similar map for hukas then just backwards and forwards with who had the momentum and this time hukas hunt this fury you straight away catches out riyad takes him out from the last round of attack Face your uh sunshine's let everybody walk past him got the spike though spike down, and it allows his team to move in but they move in to a shower of lead <laughs> by who cars there you I'll go four to eight that's the end of the Switching first half sides. and it was chaotic as ever back inside is where the majority of teams get their success though so who cars there might be a chance starting with a pistol that would be everything we had 16 and 6. Team's flirting with the idea of playing more chamber. So Zeta pick it up a little bit as well. So far in like Pacific. But really outside of that. Very few that would choose it over something like a Killjoy. And Hukar's sort of bit of inspiration it feels like from the likes of Heretics have been playing this. Gecko a little bit more on this map. Using it on attack could be major, and it's looking like they're sort of going straight for a B execute, and they don't have that Viper Wall to help lurk up. So Nile has to get all of this face alone, and he's going to do it into four players. Yeah, it seems like Nile is going to be dropping. I think it's a matter of how many players he takes down with him. Now, Hukas were looking down mid early on, trying to see if anybody was going to peek that, and now I've grouped up with Nile. Yeah, there's no, like, fate on that you can do here either, so you can't clear this position. First and put bullets into someone is David. Paranoia is good though, catches off a few of the attacking players and Farland's taking full advantage of it. Kill and paint shells doing quite a lot of work. Jaff, paranoid, death, blind. 
Riyad all to himself now on a one on three. It looked like Formulation had the perfect setup, but think again, because who can't turn it back around? Yeah, Mishu getting so much damage done and hasn't taken any damage himself. Riyad one versus three, been here on the chamber. Six bullets. Uh-oh. Well, that's a quadra for Mishu and the pistol for Hukas. Exactly what they needed if they wanted to come back. I mean, it felt like Formulation had everything sorted. Like, I think they're going to be playing from this little position behind the box quite a lot because like, we've seen so many haunts thrown by that box on A-Main now. You don't have that necessarily. Gecko's not really going to be able to spot it out. You don't have a Viper Wall that can push players away from that spot. Especially with Formulation having the chamber, putting the chamber there and having the TP to go into secret to TP out would be amazing for them to work with. Instead, Formulation not buying up anything. Chamber's going to peak mid and everybody else is going to fight for C. Where are oh, dear. Well, ultra aggressive Formulation on the one side of smoke was good enough to stop them from Ooh. pushing any further. Riyadh, come on! That is ridiculous! But it's not quite good enough as uh, Hukas can now reset completely. But they want to go right back into the same fight. Our drone spots out both of them. What do Formulation do? They try and back away. And Hukas, knowing exactly where the defenders are, are going to rotate towards this A side. Jeff wants to be somebody that's going to be in a pain in the ass position to hold. But yeah, who? All they've done is just reset for a second, cut noise, walking back to C and Formulation on the lower by. Just gamble stacking, hoping for the best it's going to be A. It's a good call for Hukas to just fake a bit of noise in that direction and head on back to C. I mean, it's a good change from splitting sights every so often, you know? Hukar's solid on the idea that they want to hit C. And even though they fake out their movement towards other sides of the map, they hit C three times consecutively. I wonder what the plan is, whether they're going to try and go for fights to do a bit more damage, or just try and oh. carefully die to the spike. I think the latter in this situation. Because they've run out of time, they know they're not going to be picking up any kills easily given the weaponry that Hukars have got to their exposal. So yeah, they're just going to wait around a bit and um, perform the sacred sacrifice tool to spike the old mighty or to lethal, I guess. All right, bonus is up now for Hukars. Winning this, and you're very much back in the series. Formulation Gaming, no. Half armor in a lot of cases. Semburn's going to have the Odin with the Viper. Playing over towards A, and I think, yeah, Formulation Gaming going for the play that I mentioned. Having a chamber tucked into this corner right by Secret. Having a TP on the other side of it. It's just going to be really difficult, I think, for Hukars to clear. Yeah, it just might be. But with the recon and Dizzy, they've already figured out the positioning of Riyadh. It's a matter of being able to pick him out. Instead, Riyadh is the one to get the first pick. And is able to rendezvous out of trouble. He's got eight bullets. Has to back off a little bit. And it does separate Simbone from the rest. Scary gun, but no help. And that will be his demise. With no help, there's no trading capability. And the fact that Formulation are a bit split out, they're getting, getting caught out. Hukas definitely want to come up with a huge comeback here. Getting a seventh round, closing up the gap to one. A brilliant buy round from them. So much like pressure, like formulation gaming similar to the pistol. Start off with that first kill, start off with a good setup, but just the pressure that it builds up just evaporates over time. Hukas, it was literally just lethal running into sight alone with a guardian and the spike. He loses that fight against Ember and it feels like it's a done round. But he wins that duel, and just everything else from Formulation falls apart like a house of cards. No kill joy just means that you don't really have as much utility to work around. It's just all based on like how the chamber does individually, which is good, but Riyadh gets taken out early too. Yeah, unfortunately, there seems to be some sort of tech force to uh, take it over the server. We'll figure out what the issue is. Seems to me that maybe Jaff was stuck in spawn. Maybe a bit of a disconnect. 
Uh, but um, we should be getting back into it, no problem whatsoever. I, I heard if it, it was a network issue, so should be something that uh, could be fixed up fairly shortly, we hope. But yeah, this has been an interesting one. This has been uh, a little bit of a back and forth where who cares? Once they've gotten on the attack, it feels like the fact that they control the pacing of the game and can get rid of formulations, chaotic moving, um, it's, uh, it's looking a little bit stronger for them. Yeah, honestly, worst time to be getting the technical powers after a day like today. It's just switching out some equipment, formulation, hoping to get something working for them now. Because they were leading and leading heavily throughout their attack. But once they get onto their defense, Ukars have been able to sort of string some rounds together and it's been reliant on clutch moments, I suppose, for formulation to build that morale back. Yeah, there has been quite a bit of morale uh, boosting and morale throwing. <laughs> it's been a bit of both, hasn't it? Uh, from both sides. Yeah, incredibly up and down. I think safe to say for the Hukar side, some, you know, two players that stand out throughout the entire series have been Mishu and Nilla. Like, um, you've got to say that they've got some class to them and some consistency there. It's just a matter of yeah. being able to close out these matches. They've just had a very tremendously hard time in doing so. I mean, this team has really come together for Hukars. Just it's the rest of the region is also improving at a considerable rate too. The formulation. Yeah, a little bit too quick. They're back and ready to go, but the buy isn't great. So, so much pressure goes on to Riyadh with six bullets on the headhunter. He's already taken a lot of damage. Game one would be good, but this is an awful time to try and back out. Aldrin clears him out. Destroyed. It's been tied, so his end destination is also revealed. Oh, Nilla, this is really bad timing to walk away from this. The alarm bot will make Semba's presence known. Look at Hukas, how they're reacting to it. Every single one of them wants to face up against this marshal. Force Semba right back the other way. The rotation though from formulation isn't gone anywhere. Especially now with his second peak, Sembert's 1 HP, that should be enough. The Hukars have not only tried to clear this flank, but taking all that space to haunt as well is perfect for the information, but they lose Sembert. That's fine. The native was good enough to just shut him down. Jaff, powering on your throne, does a bit of delaying, and make sure that the Nounce one won't be keeping him or his team back. The smoke might, though. And the paint shells do oh, seem to hurt the ball inside as well! It's a blanket of paint to put Hukas to sleep. And Farden is responsible of all of it. Sunshine is left alone. Up against three. And it might be within his grasp. Not enough time to get the spot. Oh down for mine. I've got in a second kill. That was chaotic, but FMG have got Farden to thank for that round. Ah, Puggy's a bit of an unsung hero there too. The Horn getting all that information, but it was the seize nade combo that did so much damage. Thad and two great shots in between and raised players all around the world dream of moments like that. And I said it relied on like clutch moments, individual things to bring the momentum back in favor of for formulation. That's the kind of moments I'm talking about. That was nuts. <laughs> that was kind of nutty, not going to lie. There's another one. Good, it didn't do really hardly enough impact as the previous fight did. But this very quickly torn out. Did it find any tags? I don't think so. I think Only it... one on Semba. Yeah, and Fadon just in all of the chaos gets taken out at least two. But it's a four versus four. Both races out of the picture for now. Smoke out. Defender smoke, right? No, that wasn't the attacker smoke. That's a weird one for the attackers to do. I noise. guess it's kind of the idea to make them think that they're heading towards the B site or going a, a, a full fallback. Yeah, secret. Onto the other side of the map. Which is why that paranoia came out and had a little bit of a fight for that space. So it's a good adjustment for formulation. Trying to take B main two. Frash. Going to clear out the site. Is it going to clear out this position that Jaffa's in though? 
No. I don't think so. They're not aware of it at all. <laughs> no! They really aren't. And he gets one, gets the hell out of dodge. Paranoia, they're going right after him. The TP is good, finds himself oh, behind him. The center finds Riyad! Jaff turns around and wonders how the hell did that transaction just happen? The spike is down and all Hukas players are spread out across. You know, like late, late lurk. Jaff's position, he's pretty much made it his own right now. He goes for the peak and looks like he was ready for the fight, but Nele has it all to do. Great flick. But the spray isn't as just. And Formulation Gaming will be the first team to get themselves two double digits on this map. The last time they did that, they won Ascent. Can they do the same thing here and deny Hukas of a match victory in the, play, in, in the Polaris Stage 1 regular season? What's the money like for Hukas now? Two rounds lost. Three rounds won right at the start. So the money is eking out forward. And what with Ultimate Stavage, Showstopper opting in for the half armor just to save some cash somewhere else. And that's really all it feels like there is available. Meanwhile for Riyadh, he's still buying up, doesn't have much money, but the total force is available. We want to pick it up at some point in the future. Right now, just to hold it onto the off. Had to be positioning for him. Could potentially have uh, the possibility of opening up that door as well and creating another flank for the Hukar side. But the cross does come in and just respect that the door does open. Riyad looking for the shot, he gets it and juggles his way out of there. Up into a fountain. Waterfall, rather. Ultra aggressive by Hukas. Instantly punished by Semba. Odin is probably one of the best weapons in this situation. Father pushes Great through push. off the back of the paranoia. And uh, it's looking greater and greater for formulations. Time goes by. Sunshine is low on health. Little by little, he's been burnt to death with the toxin. Semba's Odin just keeps hitting heads. And uh, with the final shot through Nilla's heart, formulation are increasing the lead even further. Great retake for formulation. Hukar's really trying to be scrappy with how they're taking these fights, but Simba does quite a lot with the Odin spray. Just holding it down as much as they possibly can. And still, it's the same story like Hukas now, pretty much running now onto the last bits of money that they have. Formulation, make it 12, make it series point. Hukar's really not going to have much, and these ultimate step, holding up slowly, showstopper, going away from David, lockdown, and Thrash not too far away either. But do you fight for the ult to try and get them early? Riyadh's going to be fighting for C, and he does get that kill onto oh. David again. So many rounds Riyadh has found early impact in these rounds and got on a way scot free. We thought Chamber Meadow is out. Riyadh is making us think that all over again. Not all done though for Hukas because they have been turning these four versus fives around not only on this map but across the series. We've seen Formulation maybe just overcommit, overheat. Riyadh has to be careful here, but no, there's no punish here. He's going to go for more. He just needs to hold his angles, because eventually Hukars are going to fidget and try to peek him all over again. But he switches up his position time and time again. A quadra for Riyadh. Four operator shots, four kills, and Formulation on map and series point for the final game of the regular season of Polaris. For either of these two teams, it could be the last round that we ever see from them in Polaris, to be honest. Both they are really on that cool Morello. Ukaz, just a series win would have been nice to leave with. Formulation, just making sure that you're not the worst team in the region is effectively what they're playing for. Winners of the close qualifiers going back into that promo relo position, but at least Formulation Gaming could leave with a win. I wonder how hard Ukaz are going to fight for this. It's all down to their pride, that's it. That's the only thing that's hurting right now for them. Oh, no, has any difference shine. to the grand scheme of things. Farden is great with that timing. Oh, oh no, shows up and misses a mark, but it doesn't even matter because it allows him to readjust the rifle just on time to collect another two. And this would be quite the explosive fashion in which Formulation close out this game. There's only two remaining for the Hukar side. Split across the map on their own little venture, their own little journey. Jaff's notified of one of them. No one seems to be aware of Lethal's position, though. They're pinging C, they're pinging Waterfall, but yeah, they're not expecting him to wrap all the way around. 
But there's what so many we players. Realistically do here? There should be enough of a reaction that if he does get one kill, somebody should be able to play across. But 45 seconds? It's going to take a while. And now Puggy's aware that he could have looked all the way around from A. And that's exactly what happens. Lethal's able to find one, but that isn't to spare any other of its health. All of a sudden, it's no 2 versus 2, and the Thrash is going after the chase. There's a lockdown available as well to try and give them the hope that they can get the spike down. Semba is trying to warbang, and he's successful in doing so. Now it's Mille on the hot seat. But Varden has had a tremendous round, getting himself a quadra, and also the final win of the season. Yeah, for Hukar's 0 and 7 in the groups, they're going down to Eclipse without being able to get a series win. Some close ones, a good attempt, all things considered, like Pavlos would say. But man, for formulation, there's a lot to like pick up for this team. Lots of good moments. And it literally felt like that Farden like season 8 4K that he got was the turning point. Because up until then, Hukar's were starting to claw their way back into this map and potentially take the series away. But formulation just holding on, only just. Yeah, I feel a little bit bad for Hukas because they did put a lot of fight into that one. Uh, they seem to be able to find some answers to what formulation was good at on Ascent as well. Icebox seemed like it could have ended a lot quicker with a 13-8 potentially, but never really happened. It is what it is. Apex had a perfect score this season. Hukas had a perfect bad score, if that makes sense. Yeah. Clean, whichever way you want to look at it, but yeah. It's just... Clean, but in the wrong way, on the wrong spectrum. All right, that's it from us, folks. There is the post-match analysis, of course, and an interview. You don't want to miss it. Be right there. Be square. We'll be back in a bit.
Welcome back everybody as we wind down from the regular season. I can't really think of a better way to end things off than with a game like that between Hookars and Formulation Gaming, despite the fact that, you know, there were no real stakes on the line. They both put on an amazing performance and gave us a show. Uh, to finish things off, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm blown away by the, uh, the quality of play between these two. There were some beautiful rounds in this, which uh, I'm sure will be immortalized on Twitter by the social media manager uh, after today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Beautiful performance from both of these teams. Obviously, Formulation Gaming taking it in the end. 13-7. Amazing performance by Riyadh Farder. And even that highlight that we see there. Beautiful setup. We're going to see that a little bit later. I think this was a perfect way to end that regular season. Yeah. Formulation Gaming getting that third win. It's unfortunate that who cars couldn't quite get that first win on, under their belt, but they showed that they can absolutely fight for form, uh, against Formulation Gaming. They have a, have a month uh, for Eclipse, so they can work yep. around for a lot of these things, and I think cool cars, they will come back stronger than ever, even though this wasn't quite the form that we like to uh, see them in. I think the Gecko was already a good improvement. For sure, yeah, I think, you know, when you're making uh, changes towards the end of the season, obviously, I think, it, uh, look, you mentioned earlier on when we were just talking during Icebox that if, if, uh, if they had made these changes earlier on with the Gecko, I think that given a couple of weeks to you know, get used to them, formulate some plays around it, they would be in a really good place right now and actually be able to maybe have got a win against NXT as well as uh, a win here against Formulation Gaming. So, uh, you know, I, like, I think over the course of a month, they're definitely going to have something good going, but we'll get back to Hukar's in a second. We have a uh, interview with Riyadh here from Formulation Gaming. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, never uh, mind, hold on, that's Jack! That's Jack! Hey, hold hey. on a second! I read the document It got, it got changed, no. it got changed. Ah, oh, there you go, sorry. I, I actually was told in my ear by production, it's just I wasn't listening because I was talking. How are you doing, brother? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good, how are you? I'm um, good, so, I mean, look, I, I'm gonna start with something heavy hitting here. Uh, I, I, you're gonna have to, <laughs> this is gonna be a tough one, sorry. In the end, you know, you've only missed out on safety through a tiebreaker, which I'm sure must be a little bit heart-wrenching for you guys, but, you know, you've showed such good quality throughout the season. Was there a specific game that you've lost that you think you could or should have won this season? OnlyFans. OnlyFans was... Right. Oh, well, I hated losing to OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> that that game we should we we didn't do enough like we should have won but I mean that was the game where it's like the one I really wanted to win after the game I was just full of sad about it. I was like I can't believe we lost like I lost to Limpe my friend like it was terrible like, I really wanted <laughs> oh. to win that game. Oh, I love it, uh, especially as a Finn Finn myself. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm sorry, but thank you. <laughs> but uh, talking about the Who Cars game, you played them uh, four times you specifically and now yeah. it, it was the first win out of those five games that you have played now how do you feel finally beat I, broke the curse. The, I broke the first curse okay <laughs> so now and that's the first curse second curses i've got to get back up and not relegate so you know one at a time you know like it's too much to do all of them yeah absolutely i mean we are waiting for that i for me i think I want to go back in that who cars game as well. That gecko pick. Let's let's analyze a little bit. They they broke gecko for all of those maps. How yeah. do you feel about? It? Was it hard to counter? Or it's did not you hard to know counter. Exactly they... But I would say more the problem is it's just annoying. Like on ice, which is annoying. <laughs> like when you, especially when you combine it with Sova, because Viper Mop Util can't break the wingman, so we you have to play around that differently. And then on a Sen, it's like, in my opinion, no KO is kind of trolling. Like. It, it, I feel like when we were playing, like we had certain things in our head, like, oh, they don't have KO, we can just do this. And then on Lotus, it's like, it's a good pick, but I think by that point, uh, it, was too, it was too late for them, it was too late. <laughs> right, well, I mean, you have a whole month now to prepare for Eclipse, I'm assuming and I'm yeah. hoping that you are confident going into that one that you'll be able to, you know, pub stomp yeah. these Beacon and Premier teams, you know, you are yeah. the ones with the quality, you'll you'll get it done, no problem whatsoever. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, uh, any final words on that before yeah, I mean, we, uh, before the we thing is, away? I think we will win, but like, I think, what's the point, like, I think the season overall, like, it was okay, like, it wasn't terrible, like, if you look mm. at the leaderboard, it's like, the difference in second place and yeah. seventh is one win. 
and what we lost to only fencing like quadruple yeah. overtime. So realistically, the difference between the playoff team is two rounds. So it's like yeah. for us, we're not like lost confidence in our ability. It's just like we just didn't do enough to get over the line. And it's like we'll commit, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. You know, I don't think we're not. It's not like really bad what happened. Great. Well, it's really, really good to hear. I'm glad you're so confident uh, moving on forward. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that you can take some positives away from the season because there definitely were a lot to take away. So thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, good luck over yeah, the next month you. preparing for Eclipse and obviously good luck in Eclipse as well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, I, I, I almost teared up a second there, but uh, talking about that, obviously, you know, I, I do think Formulation Gaming and probably Who Cars as well will, will do just fine. Uh, yeah. in Eclipse. I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of teams of quality coming up from Beacons and coming up from Premier, but these guys, you know, they have a, such a wealth of, of uh, experience here in Polaris that I, I really wouldn't be surprised if they just managed to get their way through it. Yeah, uh, I need Jaff back, because the interviews yeah. that he gives yeah. uh, are the best. <laughs> He's such a character, I love it. Yeah. Uh, amazing, amazing uh, performance on the server as well today, especially in the icebox. He was yeah. basically carrying the team. He was like, I gotta mm. win. In the end, they couldn't quite <laughs> get the icebox, but amazing. One verse, one verse four, couple 4Ks, one 5K as well there. Amazing performance from him. Right, let's take a look at some replays before we uh, close out the uh, broadcast for today. Uh, in fact, I think there was really one that I, that I wanted to take a look at. I looked away for half a second and then I saw the <laughs> kill feed light up here. Um, as I remember, it was Farden's uh, 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 nade that yeah, got three of nade. them. So, yeah, no, the sees immediately as they come in towards site. I mean, this is just a great way to play an eco. Obviously, a trap play is one of the few ways you're going to get something out of an eco and just... I mean, that's ridiculous. Plus the headshot wow. through the wall there to close out that kill. That's... I mean, he would have died anyway. Sunshine is the only one who survives because he's up on the high ground. That is... Yeah. I, 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 the fact that Sunshine almost clutches this as well is, yeah. is just another... This is just good Valorant, you know? There's no situation where you look at this and you're not on the edge of your seat. There were so many highlights in this match uh, throughout yeah. the whole series right there. That I think that was top of the cake. Oh, the Seize Nade was perfect. That's one of the best rounds, eco rounds, that I have seen in terms of the utility and trap play. Obviously, who cars may be stacking a little bit too closely there, but <laughs> Formulation Gaming able to capitalize off of that, and that's what they did throughout these maps. Obviously, Icebox, really, really tough OT. Mm. There was a chance for Formulation Gaming to take that, who cars was giving that yeah. there, but damn. What a series, what a first match as well, uh, Apex versus Metisport, and I mean, I think we, yeah. we're, we set our sides pretty much towards playoffs after pretty this. Much. Yeah, it's weird, it's, it's genuinely weird, after a season like that, which was filled with so much of a roller coaster of so many things going on with, you know, the end of the season, obviously last time we were here, uh, last year, it was basically just Apex stomping, and there was nothing really going on in the mid table. Everyone was split apart. There wasn't really anything. It just happened, and then it was over. This one has just been such a roller coaster from get go to finish that it's it's difficult thinking now. Oh, four of those teams are gone. We're not seeing them again for uh, uh, until split two, and then two of them are still going to be playing in Eclipse and all of this. So playoffs are coming up next. That's basically it for us on this one. What a series! What a day! to end things out with here are the games that we played today oh well all the all this weekend we didn't play all of those today that would have been ridiculous uh <laughs> we started things out obviously with the roller coaster of urbino orchestra versus nxt and then even more insane the only fins versus sweet and sour game and today has just been a nice way to uh not even bring ourselves down i mean let, let, let's be honest that final map uh, definitely got us straight back into the spirit of those uh, uh, amazing plays. Here are the final standings for you to take a look at from the season. Apex end things out with a 113 uh, round differential and a 7 and nil scoreline. Uh, and your four playoffs teams will be Apex, OnlyFin, Sweet and Sour, and Metisport. Uh, unfortunately, we will say goodbye to Formulation Gaming and Who Cars for now, but hopefully we will be seeing them again. A look at our playoffs bracket to get things going here, and uh, that's changed from what I expected. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh yeah, wait, Apex is playing Medisport? I, I thought that was Apex versus OnlyFans. I thought we calculated <laughs> the head-to-head 
I, I, my whole thing in the background, my whiteboard, <laughs> it's for nothing. Oh, uh, no, well, no. but even that, that makes it more exciting. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, don't forget, 13th of April, it's already next weekend, so the playoffs are right here. Yeah. I, it's gonna get interesting. Is Apex yeah. gonna dominate this once again? I mean, I you, you've, you've really got to sit here and go, there hasn't really been a situation where I've looked at Apex and gone, you know, they're losing this map. Eh, they're, yeah. they're, they're not going to win this map. You know, at the start of that game that we had uh, today, it was it was 1-5 and it was like, damn, they had to take a timeout. Yeah. That's the that's the most we've ever had for, from Apex this time. That's the most we've forced out of them is a timeout where they've had to actually think about what they're doing. So, I don't know. Uh, look, it's uh, it's been a great regular season. We've got the playoffs coming up right away. And after that, a uh, very tiny break before Eclipse. So, so much stuff to go on. Keep yourself updated. Twitter, use the hashtag. Get on YouTube to watch for VODs if you missed any of today's action, yesterday's action, the whole season's action. It's all there. You can take a quick look and uh, keep yourself up to date before we get into the playoffs, see what led to this. But for us, that is goodbye. Do you have any final words, MP? Thank you for the regular season. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Maybe I don't need you to tell me you were wrong. Swear my mind erased you the moment we were done. All out of me, you're all out of me. I'm finally free, it's all good. I'll be fine, and you'll keep on breaking on the phone. I don't want to see you.
Yeah. 